Mosiah chapters 8 through 11 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 8 through 11. Mosiah chapter 8. And it came to pass that after King Limhi had made an end of speaking to his people, for he spake many things unto them, and only a few of them have I written in this book, he told his people all the things concerning their brethren who were in the land of Zarahemla. And he caused that Ammon should stand up before the multitude and rehearse unto them all that had happened unto their brethren, from the time that Zenith went up out of the land, even until the time that he himself came up out of the land. And he also rehearsed unto them the last words which King Benjamin had taught them, and explained them to the people of King Limhi, so that they might understand all the words which he spake. And it came to pass that after he had done all this, that King Limhi dismissed the multitude, and caused that they should return every one unto his own house. And it came to pass that he caused that the plates which contained the record of his people, from the time that they left the land of Zarahemla, should be brought before Ammon, that he might read them. Now as soon as Ammon had read the record, the king inquired of him to know if he could interpret languages, and Ammon told him that he could not. And the king said unto him, Being grieved for the afflictions of my people, I caused that forty and three of my people should take a journey into the wilderness, that thereby they might find the land of Zarahemla, that we might appeal unto our brethren to deliver us out of bondage. And they were lost in the wilderness for the space of many days, yet they were diligent and found not the land of Zarahemla, but returned to this land, having travelled in a land among many waters, having discovered a land which was covered with bones of men and of beasts, and was also covered with ruins of buildings of every kind, having discovered a land which had been peopled with a people who were as numerous as the hosts of Israel. And for a testimony that the things that they had said are true, they have brought twenty-four plates which are filled with engravings, and they are of pure gold. And behold, also they have brought breastplates, which are large, and are of brass and of copper, and are perfectly sound. And again they have brought swords, the hilts thereof have perished, and the blades thereof were cankered with rust. And there is no one in the land that is able to interpret the language or the engravings that are on the plates. Therefore I said unto thee, Canst thou translate? And I say unto thee again, Knowest thou of any one that can translate? For I am desirous that these records should be translated into our language, for perhaps they will give us a knowledge of a remnant of the people who have been destroyed, from whence these records came, or perhaps they will give us a knowledge of this very people who have been destroyed. And I am desirous to know the cause of their destruction. Now Ammon said unto him, I can assuredly tell thee, O king, of a man that can translate the records, for he has wherewith that he can look, and translate all records that are of ancient date, and it is a gift from God, and the things are called interpreters, and no man can look in them except he be commanded, lest he should look, for that he ought not, and he should perish. And whosoever is commanded to look in them, the same is called the seer. And behold, the king of the people who are in the land of Zarahemla is the man that is commanded to do these things, and who has this high gift from God. And the king said, That a seer is greater than a prophet. And Ammon said, That a seer is a revelator, and a prophet also, and a gift which is greater can no man have, except he should possess the power of God, which no man can, yet a man may have great power given him from God. But a seer can know of things which are past, and also of things which are to come, and by them shall all things be revealed, or rather shall secret things be made manifest, and hidden things shall come to light, and things which are not known shall be made known by them, and also things shall be made known by them which otherwise could not be known. Thus God has provided a means that man, through faith, might work mighty miracles, Therefore he becometh a great benefit to his fellow beings. And now, when Ammon had made an end of speaking these words, the king rejoiced exceedingly, and gave thanks to God, saying, Doubtless a great mystery is contained within these plates. 
and these interpreters were doubtless prepared for the purpose of unfolding all such mysteries to the children of men oh how marvellous are the works of the lord and how long doth he suffer with his people yea and how blind and impenetrable are the understandings of the children of men for they will not seek wisdom neither do they desire that she should rule over them yea they are as a wild flock which fleeth from the shepherd and scattereth and are driven and are devoured by the beasts of the forest mosiah chapter nine i zenith having been taught in all the language of the nephites and having had a knowledge of the land of nephi or of the land of our father's first inheritance and having been sent as a spy among the lamanites that i might spy out their forces that our army might come upon them and destroy them but when i saw that which was good among them i was desirous that they should not be destroyed therefore i contended with my brethren in the wilderness for i would that our ruler should make a treaty with them but he being an austere and a bloodthirsty man commanded that i should be slain but i was rescued by the shedding of much blood for father fought against father and brother against brother until the greater number of our army was destroyed in the wilderness and we returned those of us that were spared to the land of zarahemla to relate that tale to their wives and their children and yet i being overzealous to inherit the land of our fathers collected as many as were desirous to go up to possess the land and started again on our journey into the wilderness to go up to the land but we were smitten with famine and sore afflictions for we were slow to remember the lord our god nevertheless after many days wandering in the wilderness we pitched our tents in the place where our brethren were slain which was near to the land of our fathers and it came to pass that i went again with four of my men into the city in unto the king that i might know of the disposition of the king and that i might know if i might go in with my people and possess the land in peace and i went in unto the king and he covenanted with me that i might possess the land of lehi nephi and the land of shilom and he also commanded that his people should depart out of the land and i and my people went into the land that we might possess it and we began to build buildings and to repair the walls of the city yea even the walls of the city of lehi nephi and the city of shilom and we began to till the ground yea even with all manner of seeds with seeds of corn and of wheat and of barley and with neas and with shium and with seeds of all manner of fruits and we did begin to multiply and prosper in the land now it was the cunning and the craftiness of king laman to bring my people into bondage that he yielded up the land that we might possess it therefore it came to pass that after we had dwelt in the land for the space of twelve years that king laman began to grow uneasy lest by any means my people should wax strong in the land and that they could not overpower them and bring them into bondage now they were a lazy and an idolatrous people therefore they were desirous to bring us into bondage that they might glut themselves with the labors of our hands yea that they might feast themselves upon the flocks of our fields therefore it came to pass that king laman began to stir up his people that they should contend with my people therefore there began to be wars and contentions in the land for in the thirteenth year of my reign in the land of nephi away on the south of the land of shilom when my people were watering and feeding their flocks and tilling their lands a numerous host of lamanites came upon them and began to slay them and to take off their flocks and the corn of their fields yea and it came to pass that they fled all that were not overtaken even into the city of nephi and they did call upon me for protection and it came to pass that i did arm them with bows and with arrows with swords and with scimitars and with clubs and with slings and with all manner of weapons which we could invent and i and my people did go forth against the lamanites to battle yea in the strength of the lord did we go forth to battle against the lamanites for i and my people did cry mightily to the lord that he would deliver us out of the hands of our enemies for we were awakened to a remembrance of the deliverance of our fathers and god did hear our cries and did answer our prayers and we did go forth in his might yea we did go forth against the lamanites and in one day and a night we did slay three thousand and forty-three 
we did slay them even until we had driven them out of our land. And I myself with mine own hands did help to bury their dead. And behold, to our great sorrow and lamentation, two hundred and seventy-nine of our brethren were slain. Mosiah chapter 10 And it came to pass that we again began to establish the kingdom, and we again began to possess the land in peace. And I caused that there should be weapons of war made of every kind, that thereby I might have weapons for my people against the time the Lamanites should come up again to war against my people. And I set guards round about the land, that the Lamanites might not come upon us again unawares and destroy us. And thus I did guard my people and my flocks, and keep them from falling into the hands of our enemies. And it came to pass that we did inherit the land of our fathers, for many years, yea, for the space of twenty and two years. And I did cause that the men should till the ground, and raise all manner of grain, and all manner of fruit of every kind. And I did cause that the women should spin, and toil, and work, and work all manner of fine linen, yea, and cloth of every kind, that we might clothe our nakedness. And thus we did prosper in the land, Thus we did have continual peace in the land for the space of twenty and two years. And it came to pass that King Laman died, and his son began to reign in his stead. And he began to stir his people up in rebellion against my people. Therefore they began to prepare for war, and to come up to battle against my people. But I had sent my spies out round about the land of Shemlon, that I might discover their preparations, that I might guard against them that they might not come upon my people and destroy them. And it came to pass that they came up upon the north of the land of Shilom, with their numerous hosts, men armed with bows, and with arrows, and with swords, and with scimitars, and with stones, and with slings, and they had their heads shaved that they were naked, and they were girded with a leathern girdle about their loins. And it came to pass that I caused that the women and children of my people should be hid in the wilderness, and I also caused that all my old men that could bear arms, and also all my young men that were able to bear arms, should gather themselves together to go to battle against the Lamanites, and I did place them in their ranks, every man according to his age. And it came to pass that we did go up to battle against the Lamanites, and I, even I in my old age, did go up to battle against the Lamanites, and it came to pass that we did go up in the strength of the Lord to battle. Now the Lamanites knew nothing concerning the Lord, nor the strength of the Lord. Therefore they depended upon their own strength. Yet they were a strong people, as to the strength of men. They were a wild and ferocious and a bloodthirsty people, believing in the tradition of their fathers, which is this, believing that they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem because of the iniquities of their fathers, and that they were wronged in the wilderness by their brethren. And they were also wronged while crossing the sea, and again that they were wronged while in the land of their first inheritance after they had crossed the sea, and all this because that Nephi was more faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord. Therefore he was favored of the Lord, for the Lord heard his prayers and answered them, and he took the lead of their journey in the wilderness. And his brethren were wroth with him, because they understood not the dealings of the Lord. They were also wroth with him upon the waters, because they hardened their hearts against the Lord. And again they were wroth with him when they had arrived in the promised land, because they said that he had taken the ruling of the people out of their hands, and they sought to kill him. And again they were wroth with him, because he departed into the wilderness, as the Lord had commanded him, and took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass for they said that he had robbed them. And thus they have taught their children that they should hate them, and that they should murder them, and that they should rob and plunder them, and do all they could to destroy them. Therefore they have an eternal hatred towards the children of Nephi. For this very cause has King Laman by his cunning and lying craftiness and his fair promises deceived me, that I have brought this my people up into this land, that they may destroy them, Yea, and we have suffered these many years in the land. And now I, Zenith, after having told all these things unto my people concerning the Lamanites, I did stimulate them to go to battle with their might, putting their trust in the Lord. Therefore we did contend with them face to face. And it came to pass that we did drive them again out of our land, and we slew them with a great slaughter, even so many that we did not number them. 
and it came to pass that we returned again to our own land and my people again began to tend their flocks and to till their ground and now i being old did confer the kingdom upon one of my sons therefore i say no more and may the lord bless my people amen Mosiah chapter 11 And now it came to pass that Zenith conferred the kingdom upon Noah, one of his sons. Therefore Noah began to reign in his stead, and he did not walk in the ways of his father. For behold, he did not keep the commandments of God, but he did walk after the desires of his own heart. And he had many wives and concubines, and he did cause his people to commit sin and do that which was abominable in the sight of the Lord. Yea, and they did commit whoredoms, and all manner of wickedness. And he laid a tax of one-fifth part of all they possessed, a fifth part of their gold, and of their silver, and a fifth part of their ziph, and of their copper, and of their brass, and their iron, and a fifth part of their fatlings, and also a fifth part of all their grain. And all this did he take to support himself and his wives and his concubines and also his priests, and their wives and their concubines. Thus he had changed the affairs of the kingdom. For he put down all the priests that had been consecrated by his father, and consecrated new ones in their stead, such as were lifted up in the pride of their hearts. Yea, and thus they were supported in their laziness, and in their idolatry, and in their whoredoms by the taxes which King Noah had put upon his people. Thus did the people labor exceedingly to support iniquity. Yea, and they also became idolatrous, because they were deceived by the vain and flattering words of the king and priests. For they did speak flattering things unto them, and it came to pass that King Noah built many elegant and spacious buildings, and he ornamented them with fine work of wood, and of all manner of precious things, of gold, and of silver, and of iron, and of brass, and of ziph, and of copper. And he also built him a spacious palace, and a throne in the midst thereof, all of which was of fine wood, and was ornamented with gold and silver and with precious things. And he also caused that his workmen should work all manner of fine work within the walls of the temple, of fine wood, and of copper, and of brass. And the seats which were set apart for the high priests, which were above all the other seats, he did ornament with pure gold, and he caused a breastwork to be built before them, that they might rest their bodies and their arms upon, while they should speak lying and vain words to his people. And it came to pass that he built a tower near the temple, yea, a very high tower, even so high that he could stand upon the top thereof, and overlook the land of Shilom, and also the land of Shemlon which was possessed by the Lamanites, and he could even look over all the land round about. And it came to pass that he caused many buildings to be built in the land of Shilom, and he caused a great tower to be built on the hill north of the land Shilom, which had been a resort for the children of Nephi at the time they fled out of the land. And thus he did do with the riches which he obtained by the taxation of his people. And it came to pass that he placed his heart upon his riches, and he spent his time in riotous living with his wives and his concubines, and so did also his priests spend their time with harlots. And it came to pass that he planted vineyards round about in the land, and he built wine presses, and made wine in abundance, and therefore he became a wine bibber, and also his people. And it came to pass that the Lamanites began to come in upon his people, upon small numbers, and to slay them in their fields, and while they were tending their flocks. And King Noah sent guards round about the land to keep them off, but he did not send a sufficient number, and the Lamanites came upon them and killed them, and drove many of their flocks out of the land. Thus the Lamanites began to destroy them, and to exercise their hatred upon them. And it came to pass that King Noah sent his armies against them, and they were driven back, or they drove them back for a time. Therefore they returned rejoicing in their spoil, and now because of this great victory they were lifted up in the pride of their hearts. They did boast in their own strength, saying that their fifty could stand against thousands of the Lamanites, and thus they did boast, and did delight in blood, and the shedding of the blood of their brethren, and this because of the wickedness of their king and priests. And it came to pass 
that there was a man among them whose name was Abinadi. And he went forth among them and began to prophesy, saying, Behold, thus saith the Lord, and thus hath he commanded me, saying, Go forth, and say unto this people, Thus saith the Lord, Woe be unto this people, for I have seen their abominations, and their wickedness, and their whoredoms, and except they repent I will visit them in mine anger, and except they repent, and turn to the Lord their God, behold, I will deliver them into the hands of their enemies, yea, and they shall be brought into bondage, and they shall be afflicted by the hand of their enemies. And it shall come to pass that they shall know that I am the Lord their God, and am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of my people. And it shall come to pass that except this people repent, and turn unto the Lord their God, they shall be brought into bondage, and none shall deliver them, except it be the Lord the Almighty God. Yea, and it shall come to pass that when they shall cry unto me, I will be slow to hear their cries. Yea, and I will suffer them, that they be smitten by their enemies. And except they repent in sackcloth and ashes, and cry mightily to the Lord their God, I will not hear their prayers, neither will I deliver them out of their afflictions. And thus saith the Lord, and thus hath he commanded me. Now it came to pass that when Abinadi had spoken these words unto them, they were wroth with him, and sought to take away his life. But the Lord delivered him out of their hands. Now when King Noah had heard of the words which Abinadi had spoken unto the people, he was also wroth, and he said, Who is Abinadi, that I and my people should be judged of him? Or who is the Lord that shall bring upon my people such great affliction? I command you to bring Abinadi hither, that I may slay him, for he has said these things, that he might stir up my people to anger one with another, and to raise contentions among my people. Therefore I will slay him. Now the eyes of the people were blinded, therefore they hardened their hearts against the words of Abinadi, and they sought from that time forward to take him. And King Noah hardened his heart against the word of the Lord, and he did not repent of his evil doings. End of Mosiah chapters 8 through 11. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah chapters 12 through 15 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 12 through 15. Mosiah chapter 12. And it came to pass that after the space of two years, that Abinadi came among them in disguise, that they knew him not, and began to prophesy among them, saying, Thus hath the Lord commanded me, saying, Abinadi, go and prophesy unto this my people, for they have hardened their hearts against my words. They have repented not of their evil doings, therefore I will visit them in my anger. Yea, in my fierce anger will I visit them in their iniquities and abominations. Yea, woe be unto this generation. And the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thy hand, and prophesy, saying, Thus saith the Lord, It shall come to pass that this generation, because of their iniquities, shall be brought into bondage, and shall be smitten on the cheek. Yea, and shall be driven by men, and shall be slain. And the vultures of the air, and the dogs, yea, and the wild beasts, shall devour their flesh. And it shall come to pass that the life of King Noah shall be valued even as a garment in a hot furnace, for he shall know that I am the Lord. And it shall come to pass that I will smite this my people with sore afflictions, yea, with famine and with pestilence, and I will cause that they shall howl all the day long. Yea, and I will cause that they shall have burdens lashed upon their backs, and they shall be driven before like a dumb ass. And it shall come to pass that I will send forth hail among them, and it shall smite them, and they shall also be smitten with the east wind, and insects shall pester their land also, and devour their grain. And they shall be smitten with a great pestilence, and all this will I do because of their iniquities and abominations. And it shall come to pass that except they repent, I will utterly destroy them from off the face of the earth. Yet they shall leave a record behind them, 
and I will preserve them for other nations which shall possess the land. Yea, even this will I do, that I may discover the abominations of this people to other nations. And many things did Abinadi prophesy against this people. And it came to pass that they were angry with him, and they took him, and carried him bound before the king, and said unto the king, Behold, we have brought a man before thee who has prophesied evil concerning thy people, and saith that God will destroy them. And he also prophesieth evil concerning thy life, and saith that thy life shall be as a garment in a furnace of fire. And again he saith that thou shalt be as a stalk, even as a dry stalk of the field, which is run over by the beasts and trodden under foot. And again he saith that thou shalt be as the blossoms of a thistle, which, when it is fully ripe, if the wind bloweth, it is driven forth upon the face of the land. And he pretendeth the Lord hath spoken it, and he saith, All this shall come upon thee, except thou repent, and this because of thine iniquities. And now, O king, what great evil hast thou done, or what great sins have thy people committed, that we should be condemned of God, or judged of this man? And now, O king, behold, we are guiltless, and thou, O king, hast not sinned. Therefore this man has lied concerning you, and he has prophesied in vain. And behold, we are strong. We shall not come into bondage, or be taken captive by our enemies. Yea, and thou hast prospered in the land, and thou shalt also prosper. Behold, here is the man. We deliver him into thy hands. Thou mayest do with him as seemeth thee good. And it came to pass that King Noah caused that Abinadi should be cast into prison. And he commanded that the priests should gather themselves together, that he might hold a council with them what he should do with him. And it came to pass that they said unto the king, Bring him hither, that we may question him. And the king commanded that he should be brought before them. And they began to question him, that they might cross him, that thereby they might have wherewith to accuse him. But he answered them boldly, and withstood all their questions, yea, to their astonishment. For he did withstand them in all their questions, and did confound them in all their words. And it came to pass that one of them said unto him, What meaneth the words which are written, and which have been taught by our fathers, saying, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And now Abinadi said unto them, are you priests, and pretend to teach this people, and to understand the spirit of prophesying, and yet desire to know of me what these things mean? I say unto you, Woe be unto you for perverting the ways of the Lord, for if ye understood these things, ye have not taught them. Therefore ye have perverted the ways of the Lord. Ye have not applied your hearts to understanding. Therefore ye have not been wise. Therefore what teach ye this people? And they said, We teach the law of Moses. And again he said unto them, If ye teach the law of Moses, why do ye not keep it? Why do ye set your hearts upon riches? Why do ye commit whoredoms, and spend your strength with harlots? Yea, and cause this people to commit sin, that the Lord has caused to send me to prophesy against this people, yea, even a great evil against this people. Know ye not that I speak the truth? Yea, ye know that I speak the truth, and ye ought to tremble before God. And it shall come to pass that ye shall be smitten for your iniquities. For ye have said that ye teach the law of Moses. And what know ye concerning the law of Moses? Doth salvation come by the law of Moses? What say ye? And they answered and said that salvation did come by the law of Moses. But now Abinadi said unto them, I know if ye keep the commandments of God, ye shall be saved. Yea, if ye keep the commandments which the Lord delivered unto Moses in the mount of Sinai, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything in heaven above, 
or things which are in the earth beneath. Now Abinadi said unto them, Have ye done all this? I say unto you, Nay, ye have not. And have ye taught this people that they should do all these things? I say unto you, Nay, ye have not. Mosiah chapter 13 And now, when the king had heard these words, he said unto his priests, Away with this fellow, and slay him, for what have we to do with him, for he is mad? And they stood forth, and attempted to lay their hands on him, but he withstood them, and said unto them, Touch me not, for God shall smite you, if ye lay your hands upon me. For I have not delivered the message which the Lord sent me to deliver, neither have I told you that which ye requested that I should tell. Therefore God will not suffer that I shall be destroyed at this time. But I must fulfill the commandments wherewith God has commanded me. And because I have told you the truth, ye are angry with me. And again, because I have spoken the word of God, ye have judged me that I am mad. Now it came to pass, after Abinadi had spoken these words, that the people of King Noah durst not lay their hands on him. For the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and his face shone with exceeding luster, even as Moses's did, while in the mount of Sinai, while speaking with the Lord. And he spake with power and authority from God, and he continued his words, saying, Ye see that ye have not power to slay me, therefore I finish my message. Yea, and I perceive that it cuts you to your hearts, because I tell you the truth concerning your iniquities. Yea, and my words fill you with wonder and amazement and with anger. But I finish my message, and then it matters not whither I go, if it so be that I am saved. But this much I tell you, what you do with me after this shall be a type and a shadow of things which are to come. And now I read unto you the remainder of the commandments of God, for I perceive that they are not written in your hearts. I perceive that ye have studied and taught iniquity the most part of your lives. And now ye remember that I said unto you, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of things which are in heaven above, or which are in the earth beneath, or which are in the water under the earth. And again thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And it came to pass that after Abinadi had made an end of these sayings, that he said unto them, Have ye taught this people that they should observe to do all these things, for to keep these commandments? I say unto you, Nay. For if ye had, the Lord would not have caused me to come forth, and to prophesy evil concerning this people. And now ye have said that salvation cometh by the law of Moses. I say unto you, that it is expedient that ye should keep the law of Moses as yet. But I say unto you that the time shall come when it shall no more be expedient to keep the law of Moses. And moreover, I say unto you that salvation doth not come by the law alone. And were it not for the atonement which God himself shall make for the sins and iniquities of his people, that they must unavoidably perish, notwithstanding the law of Moses. And now I say unto you that it was expedient that there should be a law given to the children of Israel, yea, even a very strict law, for they were a stiff-necked people, quick to do iniquity, and slow to remember the Lord their God. Therefore, 
there was a law given them yea a law of performances and of ordinances a law which they were to observe strictly from day to day to keep them in remembrance of god and their duty towards him but behold i say unto you that all these things were types of things to come and now did they understand the law i say unto you nay they did not all understand the law and this because of the hardness of their hearts for they understood not that there could not any man be saved except it were through the redemption of god for behold did not moses prophesy unto them concerning the coming of the messiah and that god should redeem his people yea and even all the prophets who have prophesied ever since the world began have they not spoken more or less concerning these things have they not said that god himself should come down among the children of men and take upon him the form of man and go forth in mighty power upon the face of the earth yea and have they not said also that he should bring to pass the resurrection of the dead and that he himself should be oppressed and afflicted mosiah chapter fourteen yea even doth not isaiah say who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no evil neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors mosiah chapter fifteen and now abinadi said unto them I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the Son of God. And having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son, the Father because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and Son, and they are one God, yea the very eternal father of heaven and of earth and thus the flesh becoming subject to the spirit or the son to the father being one god suffereth temptation and yieldeth not to the temptation but suffereth himself to be mocked and scourged and cast out and disowned by his people and after all this after working many mighty miracles among the children of men he shall be led yea even as isaiah said as a sheep before the shearer is dumb so he opened not his mouth yea even so he shall be led crucified and slain the flesh becoming subject even unto death the will of the son being swallowed up in the will of the father and thus god breaketh the bands of death having gained the victory over death 
giving the Son power to make intercession for the children of men, having ascended into heaven, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death, taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice. And now I say unto you, Who shall declare his generation? Behold, I say unto you, that when his soul has been made an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And now what say ye, and who shall be his seed? Behold, I say unto you, that whosoever has heard the words of the prophets, yea, all the holy prophets who have prophesied concerning the coming of the Lord, I say unto you, that all those who have hearkened unto their words, and believed that the Lord would redeem his people, and have looked forward to that day for a remission of their sins, I say unto you that these are his seed, for they are heirs of the kingdom of God. For these are they whose sins he has borne, these are they for whom he has died, to redeem them from their transgressions. And now are they not his seed? Yea, and are not the prophets, every one that has opened his mouth to prophesy, that has not fallen into transgression? I mean all the holy prophets ever since the world began? I say unto you that they are his seed. And these are they who have published peace, who have brought good tidings of good, who have published salvation, and said unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. And, oh, how beautiful upon the mountains were their feet! And again, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those that are still publishing peace! And again, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those who shall hereafter publish peace, yea, from this time henceforth and forever. And behold, I say unto you, this is not all. For, oh, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that is, the founder of peace. Yea, even the Lord, who has redeemed his people, yea, him who has granted salvation unto his people. For were it not for the redemption which he hath made for his people, which was prepared from the foundation of the world, I say unto you, were it not for this, all mankind must have perished. But behold, the bands of death shall be broken, and the sun reigneth, and hath power over the death. Therefore he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. And there cometh a resurrection, even a first resurrection, yea, even a resurrection of those that have been, and who are, and who shall be, even until the resurrection of Christ, for so shall he be called. And now the resurrection of all the prophets and all those that have believed in their words, or all those that have kept the commandments of God, shall come forth in the first resurrection. Therefore they are the first resurrection. They are raised to dwell with God who has redeemed them. Thus they have eternal life through Christ, who has broken the bands of death. And these are those who have part in the first resurrection. And these are they that have died before Christ came in their ignorance, not having salvation declared unto them. And thus the Lord bringeth about the restoration of these, and they have a part in the first resurrection, or have eternal life, being redeemed by the Lord. And little children also have eternal life. But behold, and fear, and tremble before God, for ye ought to tremble. For the Lord redeemeth none such that rebel against him, and die in their sins. Yea, even all those that have perished in their sins ever since the world began, that have willfully rebelled against God, that have known the commandments of God, and would not keep them. These are they that have no part in the first resurrection. Therefore ought ye not to tremble, for salvation cometh to none such. For the Lord hath redeemed none such. Yea, neither can the Lord redeem such, for he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny justice when it has its claim. And now I say unto you, that the time shall come that the salvation of the Lord shall be declared to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Yea, Lord, thy watchmen shall lift up their voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. End of Mosiah chapters 12 through 15 recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah.
please visit at hesmas.blogspot.com. Mosiah chapters 16 through 19 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 16 through 19. Mosiah chapter 16. And now it came to pass that after Abinadi had spoken these words, he stretched forth his hand and said, The time shall come when all shall see the salvation of the Lord, when every nation, kindred, tongue, and people shall see eye to eye, and shall confess before God that his judgments are just. And then shall the wicked be cast out, and they shall have cause to howl, and weep, and wail, and gnash their teeth, and this because they would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Therefore the Lord redeemeth them not. For they are carnal and devilish, and the devil has power over them. Yea, even that old serpent that did beguile our first parents, which was the cause of their fall, which was the cause of all mankind, becoming carnal, sensual, devilish, knowing evil from good, subjecting themselves to the devil. Thus all mankind were lost, and behold, they would have been endlessly lost, were it not that God redeemed his people from their lost and fallen state. But remember that he that persists in his own carnal nature, and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion against God, remaineth in his fallen state, and the devil hath all power over him. Therefore he is as though there was no redemption made, being an enemy to God, and also is the devil an enemy to God. And now if Christ had not come into the world, speaking of things to come as though they had already come, there could have been no redemption. And if Christ had not risen from the dead, or have broken the bands of death, that the grave should have no victory, and that death should have no sting, there could have been no resurrection. But there is a resurrection, therefore the grave hath no victory, and the sting of death is swallowed up in Christ. He is the light and the life of the world, yea, a light that is endless, that can never be darkened, yea, and also a life which is endless, that there can be no more death. Even this mortal shall put on immortality, and this corruption shall put on incorruption, and shall be brought to stand before the bar of God, to be judged of him according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. If they be good, to the resurrection of endless life and happiness, and if they be evil, to the resurrection of endless damnation, being delivered up to the devil, who hath subjected them, which is damnation. Having gone according to their own carnal wills and desires, having never called upon the Lord while the arms of mercy were extended towards them, for the arms of mercy were extended towards them, and they would not, they being warned of their iniquities, and yet they would not depart from them, and they were commanded to repent, and yet they would not repent. And now ought ye not to tremble, and repent of your sins, and remember that only in and through Christ ye can be saved? Therefore, if ye teach the law of Moses, also teach that it is a shadow of those things which are to come. Teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the very eternal Father. Amen. Mosiah chapter 17 and now it came to pass that when Abinadi had finished these sayings, that the king commanded that the priest should take him, and cause that he should be put to death. But there was one among them, whose name was Alma, he also being a descendant of Nephi. And he was a young man, and he believed the words which Abinadi had spoken, for he knew concerning the iniquity which Abinadi has testified against them. Therefore he began to plead with the king that he would not be angry with Abinadi, but suffer that he might depart in peace. But the king was more wroth, and caused that Alma should be cast out from among them, and sent his servants after him that they might slay him. But he fled from before them, and hid himself that they found him not. And he, being concealed for many days, did write all the words which Abinadi had spoken. 
and it came to pass that the king caused that his guards should surround Abinadi and take him, and they bound him and cast him into prison. And after three days, having counseled with his priests, he caused that he should again be brought before him. And he said unto him, Abinadi, we have found an accusation against thee, and thou art worthy of death. For thou hast said that God himself should come down among the children of men, and now for this cause thou shalt be put to death, unless thou wilt recall all the words which thou hast spoken evil concerning me and my people. Now Abinadi said unto him, I say unto you, I will not recall the words which I have spoken unto you concerning this people, for they are true, and that ye may know of their surety I have suffered myself that I have fallen into your hands. Yea, and I will suffer even until death, and I will not recall my words, and they shall stand as a testimony against you. And if ye slay me, ye will shed innocent blood, and this shall also stand as a testimony against you at the last day. And now King Noah was about to release him, for he feared his word, for he feared that the judgments of God would come upon him. But the priests lifted up their voices against him, and began to accuse him, saying, He has reviled the king. Therefore the king was stirred up in anger against him, and he delivered him up, that he might be slain. And it came to pass that they took him, and bound him, and scourged his skin with faggots, yea, even unto death. And now when the flames began to scorch him, he cried unto them, saying, Behold! Even as ye have done unto me, so shall it come to pass that thy seed shall cause that many shall suffer the pains that I do suffer, even the pains of death by fire, and this because they believe in the salvation of the Lord their God. And it will come to pass that ye shall be afflicted with all manner of diseases because of your iniquities. Yea, and ye shall be smitten on every hand, and shall be driven, and scattered to and fro even as a wild flock is driven by wild and ferocious beasts. And in that day ye shall be hunted, and ye shall be taken by the hand of your enemies, and then ye shall suffer, as I suffer, the pains of death by fire. Thus God executeth vengeance upon those that destroy his people. O God, receive my soul. And now when Abinadi had said these words, he fell, having suffered death by fire yea, having been put to death because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. Mosiah chapter 18 And now it came to pass that Alma, who had fled from the servants of King Noah, repented of his sins and iniquities, and went about privately among the people, and began to teach the words of Abinadi, yea, concerning that which was to come, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead and the redemption of the people, which was to be brought to pass through the power and sufferings and death of Christ, and his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as many as would hear his word he did teach, and he taught them privately that it might not come to the knowledge of the king, and many did believe his words. And it came to pass that as many as did believe him did go forth to a place which was called Mormon, having received its name from the king, being in the borders of the land, having been infested by times or at seasons by wild beasts. Now there was in Mormon a fountain of pure water, and Alma resorted thither, there being near the water a thicket of small trees, where he did hide himself in the daytime from the searches of the king. And it came to pass that as many as believed him went thither to hear his words, and it came to pass, after many days there were a goodly number gathered together at the place of Mormon to hear the words of Alma. Yea, all were gathered together that believed on his word to hear him. And he did teach them, and did preach unto them repentance and redemption and faith on the Lord. And it came to pass that he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon. For thus were they called. And now as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens, that they may be light, yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, 
yea, and to comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places that ye may be in, even until death, that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord, as a witness before him, that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his Spirit more abundantly upon you? And now, when the people had heard these words, they clapped their hands for joy, and exclaimed, This is the desire of our hearts. And now it came to pass that Alma took Helam, he being one of the first, and went and stood forth in the water, and cried, saying, O Lord, pour out thy spirit upon thy servant, that he may do this work with holiness of heart. And when he had said these words, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he said, Helam, I baptize thee, having authority from the Almighty God, as a testimony that ye have entered into a covenant to serve him, until you are dead as to the mortal body. And may the Spirit of the Lord be poured out upon you, and may he grant unto you eternal life through the redemption of Christ, whom he has prepared from the foundation of the world. And after Alma had said these words, both Alma and Helam were buried in the water, and they arose and came forth out of the water rejoicing, being filled with the Spirit. And again Alma took another, and went forth a second time into the water, and baptized him according to the first. Only he did not bury himself again in the water. And after this manner he did baptize every one that went forth to the place of Mormon. And they were in number about two hundred and four souls. Yea, and they were baptized in the waters of Mormon, and were filled with the grace of God. And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. And it came to pass that Alma, having authority from God, ordained priests, even one priest to every fifty of their number, did he ordain to preach unto them, and to teach them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he commanded them that they should teach nothing, save it were the things which he had taught, and which had been spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. Yea, even he commanded them that they should preach nothing, save it were repentance and faith on the Lord who had redeemed his people. And he commanded them that there should be no contention, one with another, but that they should look forward with one eye, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love one towards another. And thus he commanded them to preach, and thus they became the children of God. And he commanded them that they should observe the Sabbath day, and keep it holy and also every day they should give thanks to the Lord their God. And he also commanded them that the priests whom he had ordained should labor with their own hands for their support. And there was one day in every week that was set apart that they should gather themselves together to teach the people, and to worship the Lord their God, and also, as often as it was in their power, to assemble themselves together. And the priests were not to depend upon the people for their support, but for their labor, they were to receive the grace of God, that they might wax strong in the Spirit, having the knowledge of God, that they might teach with power and authority from God. And again Alma commanded that the people of the church should impart of their substance, every one according to that which he had. If he have more abundantly, he should impart more abundantly, and of him that had but little, but little should be required, and to him that had not should be given and thus they should impart of their substance of their own free will, and good desires towards God, and to those priests that stood in need, yea, and to every needy naked soul. And this he said unto them, having been commanded of God. And they did walk uprightly before God, imparting to one another both temporally and spiritually according to their needs and their wants. And now it came to pass that all this was done in Mormon, yea, by the waters of Mormon, in the forest that was near the waters of Mormon, yea, the place of Mormon, the waters of Mormon, the forest of Mormon, 
how beautiful are they to the eyes of them who there came to the knowledge of their redeemer yea and how blessed are they for they shall sing to his praise for ever and these things were done in the borders of the land that they might not come to the knowledge of the king but behold it came to pass that the king having discovered a movement among the people sent his servants to watch them therefore on the day that they were assembling themselves together to hear the word of the lord they were discovered unto the king and now the king said that alma was stirring up the people to rebellion against him therefore he sent his army to destroy them and it came to pass that alma and the people of the lord were apprised of the coming of the king's army therefore they took their tents and their families and departed into the wilderness and they were in number about four hundred and fifty souls mosiah chapter nineteen and it came to pass that the army of the king returned having searched in vain for the people of the lord and now behold the forces of the king were small having been reduced and there began to be a division among the remainder of the people and the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king and there began to be a great contention among them and now there was a man among them whose name was gideon and he being a strong man and an enemy to the king therefore he drew his sword and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king and it came to pass that he fought with the king and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him he fled and ran and got upon the tower which was near the temple and gideon pursued after him and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king and the king cast his eyes round about towards the land of shemlon and behold the army of the lamanites was within the borders of the land and now the king cried out in the anguish of his soul saying gideon spare me for the lamanites are upon us and they will destroy us yea they will destroy my people and now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life nevertheless gideon did spare his life and the king commanded the people that they should flee before the lamanites and he himself did go before them and they did flee into the wilderness with their women and their children and it came to pass that the lamanites did pursue them and did overtake them and began to slay them now it came to pass that the king commanded them that all the men should leave their wives and their children and flee before the lamanites now there were many that would not leave them but had rather stay and perish with them and the rest left their wives and their children and fled and it came to pass that those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the lamanites that they would not slay them and it came to pass that the lamanites had compassion on them for they were charmed with the beauty of their women therefore the lamanites did spare their lives and took them captives and carried them back to the land of nephi and granted unto them that they might possess the land under the conditions that they would deliver up king noah into the hands of the lamanites and deliver up their property even one half of all they possessed one half of their gold and their silver and all their precious things and thus they should pay tribute to the king of the lamanites from year to year and now there was one of the sons of the king among those that were taken captive whose name was limhi and now limhi was desirous that his father should not be destroyed nevertheless limhi was not ignorant of the iniquities of his father he himself being a just man and it came to pass that gideon sent men into the wilderness secretly to search for the king and those that were with him and it came to pass that they met the people in the wilderness all save the king and his priests now they had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of nephi and if their wives and their children were slain and also those that had tarried with them that they would seek revenge and also perish with them and the king commanded them that they should not return and they were angry with the king and caused that he should suffer even unto death by fire and they were about to take the priests also and put them to death and they fled before them and it came to pass that they were about to return to the land of nephi and they met the men of gideon and the men of gideon told them of all that had happened to their wives and their children and that the lamanites had granted unto them that they might possess the land by paying a tribute to the lamanites of one half of all they possessed and the people told the men of gideon that they had slain the king and his priests had fled from them farther into the wilderness and it came to pass that after they had ended the ceremony 
that they returned to the land of Nephi, rejoicing, because their wives and their children were not slain. And they told Gideon what they had done to the king. And it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites made an oath unto them, that his people should not slay them. And also Limhi, being the son of the king, having the kingdom conferred upon him by the people, made oath unto the king of the Lamanites that his people should pay tribute unto him, even one half of all they possessed. And it came to pass that Limhi began to establish the kingdom, and to establish peace among his people. And the king of the Lamanites set guards round about the land, that he might keep the people of Limhi in the land, that they might not depart into the wilderness. And he did support his guards out of the tribute which he did receive from the Nephites. And now king Limhi did have continual peace in his kingdom for the space of two years, that the Lamanites did not molest them, nor seek to destroy them. End of Mosiah, chapters 16 through 19. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah, chapters 20 through 23 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah, chapters 20 through 23. Mosiah, chapter 20. Now there was a place in Shemlon, where the daughters of the Lamanites did gather themselves together to sing, and to dance, and to make themselves merry. And it came to pass that there was one day a small number of them gathered together to sing and to dance. And now the priests of King Noah, being ashamed to return to the city of Nephi, yea, and also fearing that the people would slay them, therefore they durst not return to their wives and their children. And having tarried in the wilderness, and having discovered the daughters of the Lamanites, they laid and watched them. And when there were but few of them gathered together to dance, they came forth out of their secret places, and took them, and carried them into the wilderness. Yea, twenty and four of the daughters of the Lamanites they carried into the wilderness. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that their daughters had been missing, they were angry with the people of Limhi, for they thought it was the people of Limhi. Therefore they sent their armies forth, yea, even the king himself went before his people, and they went up to the land of Nephi to destroy the people of Limhi. And now Limhi had discovered them from the tower, even all their preparations for war did he discover. Therefore he gathered his people together and laid wait for them in the fields and in the forests. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had come up, that the people of Limhi began to fall upon them from their waiting places and began to slay them. And it came to pass that the battle became exceedingly sore, for they fought like lions for their prey. And it came to pass that the people of Limhi began to drive the Lamanites before them, yet they were not half so numerous as the Lamanites. But they fought for their lives, and for their wives, and for their children. Therefore they exerted themselves, and like dragons did they fight. And it came to pass that they found the king of the Lamanites among the number of their dead. Yet he was not dead having been wounded and left upon the ground, so speedy was the flight of his people. And they took him, and bound up his wounds, and brought him before Limhi, and said, Behold, here is the king of the Lamanites. He, having received a wound, has fallen among their dead, and they have left him. And behold, we have brought him before you, and now let us slay him. But Limhi said unto them, Ye shall not slay him, but bring him hither, that I may see him. And they brought him, and Limhi said unto him, What cause have ye to come up to war against my people? Behold, my people have not broken the oath that I made unto you. Therefore why should ye break the oath which ye made unto my people? And now the king said, I have broken the oath, because thy people did carry away the daughters of my people. Therefore in my anger I did cause my people to come up to war against thy people. And now Limhi had heard nothing concerning this matter. Therefore he said, I will search among my people, and whosoever has done this thing shall perish. Therefore he caused a search to be made among his people. Now when Gideon had heard these things, he being the king's captain, he went forth and said unto the king, 
I pray thee, forbear, and do not search this people, and lay not this thing to their charge. For do ye not remember the priests of thy father, whom this people sought to destroy? And are they not in the wilderness? And are not they the ones who have stolen the daughters of the Lamanites? And now, behold, and tell the king of these things, that he may tell his people that they may be pacified towards us. For behold, they are already preparing to come against us, and behold, also there are but few of us. And behold, they come with their numerous hosts, and except the king doth pacify them towards us, we must perish. For are not the words of Abinadi fulfilled, which he prophesied against us, and all this because we would not hearken unto the words of the Lord, and turn from our iniquities? And now let us pacify the king, and we fulfill the oath which we have made unto him. For it is better that we should be in bondage, than that we should lose our lives. Therefore let us put a stop to the shedding of so much blood. And now Limhi told the king all the things concerning his father, and the priests that had fled into the wilderness, and attributed the carrying away of their daughters to them. And it came to pass that the king was pacified towards his people. And he said unto them, Let us go forth to meet my people without arms, and I swear unto you with an oath that my people shall not slay thy people. And it came to pass that they followed the king, and went forth without arms to meet the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did meet the Lamanites, and the king of the Lamanites did bow himself down before them, and did plead in behalf of the people of Limhi. And when the Lamanites saw the people of Limhi, that they were without arms, they had compassion on them, and were pacified towards them, and returned with their king in peace to their own land. Mosiah chapter 21 and it came to pass that Limhi and his people returned to the city of Nephi, and began to dwell in the land again in peace. And it came to pass that after many days the Lamanites began again to be stirred up in anger against the Nephites, and they began to come into the borders of the land round about. Now they durst not slay them, because of the oath which their king had made unto Limhi. But they would smite them on their cheeks, and exercise authority over them, and began to put heavy burdens upon their backs and drive them as they would a dumb ass. Yea, all this was done that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled. And now the afflictions of the Nephites were great, and there was no way that they could deliver themselves out of their hands, for the Lamanites had surrounded them on every side. And it came to pass that the people began to murmur with the king because of their afflictions, and they began to be desirous to go against them to battle. And they did afflict the king sorely with their complaints, therefore he granted unto them that they should do according to their desires. And they gathered themselves together again, and put on their armor, and went forth against the Lamanites to drive them out of their land. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did beat them, and drove them back, and slew many of them. And now there was a great mourning and lamentation among the people of Limhi, the widow mourning for her husband, the son and the daughter mourning for their father, and the brothers for their brethren. Now there were a great many widows in the land, and they did cry mightily from day to day, for a great fear of the Lamanites had come upon them. And it came to pass that their continual cries did stir up the remainder of the people of Limhi to anger against the Lamanites. And they went again to battle, but they were driven back again, suffering much loss. Yea, they went again even the third time, and suffered in the like manner and those that were not slain returned again to the city of Nephi. And they did humble themselves even to the dust, subjecting themselves to the yoke of bondage, submitting themselves to be smitten, and to be driven to and fro, and burdened according to the desires of their enemies. And they did humble themselves even in the depths of humility, and they did cry mightily to God. Yea, even all the day long did they cry unto their God that he would deliver them out of their afflictions. And now the Lord was slow to hear their cry because of their iniquities. Nevertheless, the Lord did hear their cries, and began to soften the hearts of the Lamanites, that they began to ease their burdens. Yet the Lord did not see fit to deliver them out of bondage. And it came to pass that they began to prosper by degrees in the land, and began to raise grain more abundantly, and flocks and herds, that they did not suffer with hunger. Now there was a great number of women, more than there was of men. Therefore King Limhi commanded that every man should impart to the support of the widows and their children, that they might not perish with hunger. And this they did because of the greatness of their number that had been slain. 
now the people of limhi kept together in a body as much as it was possible and secured their grain and their flocks and the king himself did not trust his person without the walls of the city unless he took his guards with him fearing that he might by some means fall into the hands of the lamanites and he caused that his people should watch the land round about that by some means they might take those priests that fled into the wilderness who had stolen the daughters of the lamanites and that had caused such a great destruction to come upon them for they were desirous to take them that they might punish them for they had come into the land of nephi by night and carried off their grain and many of their precious things therefore they laid wait for them and it came to pass that there was no more disturbance between the lamanites and the people of limhi even until the time that ammon and his brethren came into the land and the king, having been without the gates of the city with his guard, discovered Ammon and his brethren, and supposing them to be priests of Noah, therefore he caused that they should be taken and bound and cast into prison. And had they been the priests of Noah, he would have caused that they should be put to death. But when he found that they were not, but that they were his brethren, and had come from the land of Zarahemla, he was filled with exceedingly great joy. Now King Limhi had sent, previous to the coming of Ammon, a small number of men to search for the land of Zarahemla, but they could not find it, and they were lost in the wilderness. Nevertheless they did find a land which had been peopled, yea, a land which was covered with dry bones, yea, a land which had been peopled, and which had been destroyed. And they, having supposed it to be the land of Zarahemla, returned to the land of Nephi, having arrived in the borders of the land not many days before the coming of Ammon. And they brought a record with them, even a record of the people whose bones they had found, and it was engraven on plates of ore. And now Limhi was again filled with joy in learning from the mouth of Ammon that King Mosiah had a gift from God, whereby he could interpret such engravings. Yea, and Ammon also did rejoice." Yet Ammon and his brethren were filled with sorrow, because so many of their brethren had been slain, and also that King Noah and his priests had caused the people to commit so many sins and iniquities against God. And they also did mourn for the death of Abinadi, and also for the departure of Alma and the people that went with him, who had formed a church of God through the strength and power of God, and faith on the words which had been spoken by Abinadi. Yea, they did mourn for their departure, for they knew not whither they had fled, now they would have gladly joined with them, for they themselves had entered into a covenant with God to serve him and keep his commandments. And now, since the coming of Ammon, King Limhi had also entered into a covenant with God, and also many of his people, to serve him and keep his commandments. And it came to pass that King Limhi and many of his people were desirous to be baptized. But there was none in the land that had authority from God, and Ammon declined doing this thing, considering himself an unworthy servant. Therefore they did not at that time form themselves into a church, waiting upon the Spirit of the Lord. Now they were desirous to become even as Alma and his brethren, who had fled into the wilderness. They were desirous to be baptized as a witness and a testimony that they were willing to serve God with all their hearts. Nevertheless they did prolong the time, and an account of their baptism shall be given hereafter. And now all the study of Ammon and his people, and King Limhi and his people, was to deliver themselves out of the hands of the Lamanites, and from bondage. Mosiah chapter 22 And now it came to pass that Ammon and King Limhi began to consult with the people how they should deliver themselves out of bondage, and even they did cause that all the people should gather themselves together, and this they did that they might have the voice of the people concerning the matter. And it came to pass that they could find no way to deliver themselves out of bondage, except it were to take their women and children, and their flocks, and their herds, and their tents, and depart into the wilderness. For the Lamanites being so numerous, it was impossible for the people of Limhi to contend with them, thinking to deliver themselves out of bondage by the sword. Now it came to pass that Gideon went forth, and stood before the king, and said unto him, now, O king, thou hast hitherto hearkened unto my words, many times when we have been contending with our brethren the Lamanites. And now, O king, if thou hast not found me to be an unprofitable servant, or if thou hast hitherto listened to my words in any degree, and they have been of service to thee, even so I desire that thou wouldst listen to my words at this time, and I will be thy servant, and deliver this people out of bondage. 
And the king granted unto him that he might speak. And Gideon said unto him, Behold, the back pass through the back wall on the back side of the city. The Lamanites, or the guards of the Lamanites, by night are drunken. Therefore let us send a proclamation among all this people that they gather together their flocks and herds, that they may drive them into the wilderness by night. And I will go according to thy command, and pay the last tribute of wine to the Lamanites, and they will be drunken. And we will pass through the secret pass on the left of their camp, when they are drunken and asleep. Thus we will depart with our women and our children, our flocks and our herds, into the wilderness, and we will travel around the land of Shilom. And it came to pass that the king hearkened unto the words of Gideon. And king Limhi caused that his people should gather their flocks together, and he sent the tribute of wine to the Lamanites, and he also sent more wine as a present unto them. And they did drink freely of the wine which king Limhi did send unto them. And it came to pass that the people of king Limhi did depart by night into the wilderness with their flocks and their herds, and they went round about the land of Shilom in the wilderness, and bent their course towards the land of Zarahemla, being led by Ammon and his brethren. And they had taken all their gold and silver and their precious things which they could carry, and also their provisions with them into the wilderness, and they pursued their journey. And after being many days in the wilderness, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla, and joined Mosiah's people, and became his subjects. And it came to pass that Mosiah received them with joy, and he also received their records, and also the records which had been found by the people of Limhi. And now it came to pass, when the Lamanites had found that the people of Limhi had departed out of the land by night, that they sent an army into the wilderness to pursue them. And after they had pursued them two days, they could no longer follow their tracks. Therefore they were lost in the wilderness. Mosiah chapter 23 Now Alma, having been warned of the Lord that the armies of King Noah would come upon them, and having made it known to his people, therefore they gathered together their flocks, and took of their grain, and departed into the wilderness before the armies of King Noah. And the Lord did strengthen them, that the people of King Noah could not overtake them to destroy them. And they fled eight days' journey into the wilderness, and they came to a land, yea, even a very beautiful and pleasant land, a land of pure water. And they pitched their tents, and began to till the ground, and began to build buildings. Yea, they were industrious, and did labor exceedingly. And the people were desirous that Alma should be their king, for he was beloved by his people. But he said unto them, Behold, it is not expedient that we should have a king. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not esteem one flesh above another, or one man shall not think himself above another. Therefore I say unto you, It is not expedient that ye should have a king. Nevertheless, if it were possible that ye could always have just men to be your kings, it would be well for you to have a king. But remember the iniquity of King Noah and his priests. And I myself was caught in a snare, and did many things which were abominable in the sight of the Lord, which caused me sore repentance. Nevertheless, after much tribulation, the Lord did hear my cries, and did answer my prayers, and has made me an instrument in his hands in bringing so many of you to a knowledge of his truth. Nevertheless, in this I do not glory, for I am unworthy to glory of myself. And now I say unto you, ye have been oppressed by King Noah, and have been in bondage to him and his priests, and have been brought into iniquity by them. Therefore ye were bound with the bands of iniquity. And now, as ye have been delivered by the power of God out of these bonds, yea, even out of the hands of King Noah and his people, and also from the bonds of iniquity, even so I desire that ye should stand fast in this liberty wherewith ye have been made free, and that ye trust no man to be a king over you. And also trust no one to be your teacher nor your minister, except he be a man of God, walking in his ways and keeping his commandments. Thus did Alma teach his people that every man should love his neighbor as himself, that there should be no contention among them. And now Alma was their high priest, he being the founder of their church. And it came to pass that none received authority to preach or to teach except it were by him from God. Therefore he consecrated all their priests and all their teachers, and none were consecrated except they were just men. Therefore they did watch over their people, and did nourish them with things pertaining to righteousness. And it came to pass that they began to prosper exceedingly in the land, and they called the land Helam. And it came to pass that they did multiply and prosper exceedingly in the land of Helam, and they built a city which they called the city of Helam. 
Nevertheless, the Lord seeth fit to chasten his people. Yea, he trieth their patience and their faith. Nevertheless, whosoever putteth his trust in him, the same shall be lifted up at the last day. Yea, and thus it was with this people. For behold, I will show unto you that they were brought into bondage, and none could deliver them but the Lord their God, yea, even the God of Abraham, and Isaac, and of Jacob. And it came to pass that he did deliver them, and he did show forth his mighty power unto them, and great were their rejoicings. For behold, it came to pass that while they were in the land of Helam, yea, in the city of Helam, while tilling the land round about, behold, an army of the Lamanites was in the borders of the land. And it came to pass that the brethren of Alma fled from their fields and gathered themselves together in the city of Helam, and they were much frightened because of the appearance of the Lamanites. But Alma went forth and stood among them and exhorted them that they should not be frightened, but that they should remember the Lord their God, and he would deliver them. Therefore they hushed their fears, and began to cry unto the Lord that he would soften the hearts of the Lamanites, that they would spare them and their wives and their children. And it came to pass that the Lord did soften the hearts of the Lamanites, and Alma and his brethren went forth and delivered themselves up into their hands, and the Lamanites took possession of the land of Helam. Now the armies of the Lamanites, which had followed after the people of King Limhi, had been lost in the wilderness for many days. And behold, they had found those priests of King Noah in a place which they called Amulon, and they had begun to possess the land of Amulon, and had begun to till the ground. Now the name of the leader of those priests was Amulon. And it came to pass that Amulon did plead with the Lamanites, and they also sent forth their wives, who were the daughters of the Lamanites, to plead with their brethren that they should not destroy their husbands. And the Lamanites had compassion on Amulon and his brethren, and did not destroy them because of their wives. And Amulon and his brethren did join the Lamanites. And they were traveling in the wilderness in search of the land of Nephi, when they discovered the land of Helam, which was possessed by Alma and his brethren. And it came to pass that the Lamanites promised unto Alma and his brethren, that if they would show them the way which led to the land of Nephi, that they would grant unto them their lives and their liberty. But after Alma had shown them the way that led to the land of Nephi, the Lamanites would not keep their promise, but they set guards round about the land of Helam over Alma and his brethren. And the remainder of them went to the land of Nephi, and a part of them returned to the land of Helam, and also brought with them the wives and the children of the guards who had been left in the land. And the king of the Lamanites had granted unto Amulon that he should be a king and a ruler over his people, who were in the land of Helam. Nevertheless, he should have no power to do anything contrary to the will of the king of the Lamanites. End of Mosiah, chapters 20 through 23. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah chapters 24 through 27 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 24 through 27. Mosiah chapter 24. And it came to pass that Amulon did gain favor in the eyes of the king of the Lamanites. Therefore the king of the Lamanites granted unto him and his brethren that they should be appointed teachers over his people, yea, even over the people who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the land of Shilom, and in the land of Amulon. For the Lamanites had taken possession of all these lands. Therefore the king of the Lamanites had appointed kings over all these lands. And now the name of the king of the Lamanites was Laman, being called after the name of his father, and therefore he was called King Laman, and he was king over a numerous people. And he appointed teachers of the brethren of Amulon in every land which was possessed by his people. And thus the language of Nephi began to be taught among all the people of the Lamanites, and they were a people friendly one with another. Nevertheless they knew not God. Neither did the brethren of Amulon teach them anything concerning the Lord their God, neither the law of Moses, nor did they teach them the words of Abinadi. But they taught them that they should keep their record, and that they might write one to another. 
and thus the lamanites began to increase in riches and began to trade one with another and wax great and began to be a cunning and a wise people as to the wisdom of the world yea a very cunning people delighting in all manner of wickedness and plunder except it were among their own brethren and now it came to pass that amulon began to exercise authority over alma and his brethren and began to persecute him and caused that his children should persecute their children for amulon knew alma that he had been one of the king's priests and that it was he that believed the words of abinadi and was driven out before the king and therefore he was wroth with him for he was subject to king laman yet he exercised authority over them and put tasks upon them and put taskmasters over them and it came to pass that so great were their afflictions that they began to cry mightily to god and amulon commanded them that they should stop their cries and he put guards over them to watch them that whosoever should be found calling upon god should be put to death and alma and his people did not raise their voices to the lord their god but did pour out their hearts to him and he did know the thoughts of their hearts and it came to pass that the voice of the lord came to them in their affliction saying lift up your heads and be of good comfort for i know of the covenant which ye have made unto me and i will covenant with my people and deliver them out of bondage and i will also ease the burdens which are put upon your shoulders that even you cannot feel them upon your backs even while you are in bondage and this will i do that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter and that ye may know of a surety that i the lord god do visit my people in their afflictions and now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon alma and his brethren were made light yea the lord did strengthen them that they could bear up their burdens with ease and they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the lord and it came to pass that so great was their faith and their patience that the voice of the lord came unto them again saying be of good comfort for on the morrow i will deliver you out of bondage and he said unto alma thou shalt go before this people and i will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage now it came to pass that alma and his people in the night time gathered their flocks together and also of their grain yea even all the night time were they gathering the flocks together and in the morning the lord caused a deep sleep to come upon the lamanites yea and all their taskmasters were in a profound sleep and alma and his people departed into the wilderness and when they had traveled all day they pitched their tents in a valley and they called the valley alma because he led their way in the wilderness and in the valley of alma they poured out their thanks to god because he had been merciful unto them and eased their burdens and had delivered them out of bondage for they were in bondage and none could deliver them except it were the lord their god and they gave thanks to god yea all their men and all their women and all their children that could speak lifted their voices in the praises of their god and now the lord said unto alma haste thee and get thou and this people out of this land for the lamanites have awakened and do pursue thee therefore get thee out of this land and i will stop the lamanites in this valley that they come no further in pursuit of this people and it came to pass that they departed out of the valley and took their journey into the wilderness and after they had been in the wilderness twelve days they arrived in the land of zarahemla and king mosiah did also receive them with joy mosiah chapter twenty five and now king mosiah caused that all the people should be gathered together now there were not so many of the children of nephi or so many of those who were descendants of nephi as there were of the people of zarahemla who was a descendant of mulek and those who came with him into the wilderness and there were not so many of the people of nephi and of the people of zarahemla as there were of the lamanites yea they were not half so numerous and now all the people of nephi were assembled together and also all the people of zarahemla and they were gathered together in two bodies and it came to pass that mosiah did read and caused to be read the records of zenith to his people yea he read the records of the people of zenith from the time that they left the land of zarahemla until they returned again and he also read the account of alma and his brethren and all their afflictions from the time that they left the land of zarahemla until the time they returned again and now when mosiah had made an end of reading the records his people who tarried in the land were struck with wonder and amazement for they knew not what to think for when they beheld those that had been delivered out of bondage they were filled with exceedingly great joy 
and again when they thought of their brethren who had been slain by the lamanites they were filled with sorrow and even shed many tears of sorrow and again when they thought of the immediate goodness of god and his power in delivering alma and his brethren out of the hands of the lamanites and of bondage they did raise their voices and give thanks to god and again when they thought upon the lamanites who were their brethren of their sinful and polluted state they were filled with pain and anguish for the welfare of their souls and it came to pass that those who were the children of amulon and his brethren who had taken to wife the daughters of the lamanites were displeased with the conduct of their fathers and they would no longer be called by the names of their fathers therefore they took upon themselves the name of nephi that they might be called the children of nephi and be numbered among those who were called nephites and now all the people of zarahemla were numbered with the nephites and this because the kingdom had been conferred upon none but those who were descendants of nephi and now it came to pass that when mosiah had made an end of speaking and reading to the people he desired that alma should also speak to the people and alma did speak unto them when they were assembled together in large bodies and he went from one body to another preaching unto the people repentance and faith on the lord and he did exhort the people of limhi and his brethren all those who had been delivered out of bondage that they should remember that it was the lord that did deliver them and it came to pass that after alma had taught the people many things and had made an end of speaking to them that king limhi was desirous that he might be baptized and all his people were desirous that they might be baptized also therefore alma did go forth into the water and did baptize them yea he did baptize them after the manner he did his brethren in the waters of mormon yea and as many as he did baptize did belong to the church of god and this because of their belief on the words of alma and it came to pass that king mosiah granted unto alma that he might establish churches throughout all the land of zarahemla and he gave him power to ordain priests and teachers over every church now this was done because there were so many people that they could not all be governed by one teacher neither could they all hear the word of god in one assembly therefore they did assemble themselves together in different bodies being called churches every church having their priests and their teachers and every priest preaching the word according as it was delivered to him by the mouth of alma and thus notwithstanding there being many churches they were all one church yea even the church of god for there was nothing preached in all the churches except it were repentance and faith in god and now there were seven churches in the land of zarahemla and it came to pass that whosoever were desirous to take upon them the name of christ or of god they did join the churches of god and they were called the people of god and the lord did pour out his spirit upon them and they were blessed and prospered in the land mosiah chapter twenty six now it came to pass that there were many of the rising generation that could not understand the words of king benjamin being little children at the time he spake unto his people and they did not believe the tradition of their fathers they did not believe what had been said concerning the resurrection of the dead neither did they believe concerning the coming of christ and now because of their unbelief they could not understand the word of god and their hearts were hardened and they would not be baptized neither would they join the church and they were a separate people as to their faith and remained so ever after even in their carnal and sinful state for they would not call upon the lord their god and now in the reign of mosiah they were not half so numerous as the people of god but because of the dissensions among the brethren they became more numerous for it came to pass that they did deceive many with their flattering words who were in the church and had caused them to commit many sins therefore it became expedient that those who committed sin that were in the church should be admonished by the church and it came to pass that they were brought before the priests and delivered up unto the priests by the teachers and the priests brought them before alma who was the high priest now king mosiah had given alma the authority over the church and it came to pass that alma did not know concerning them but there were many witnesses against them yea the people stood and testified of their iniquity in abundance now there had not any such thing happened before in the church therefore alma was troubled in his spirit and he caused that they should be brought before the king and he said unto the king behold here are many whom we have brought before thee who are accused of their brethren yea and they have been taken in diverse iniquities and they do not repent of their iniquities therefore we have brought them before thee that thou mayest judge them according to their crimes but king mosiah said unto alma behold i judge them not 
Therefore I deliver them into thy hands to be judged. And now the spirit of Alma was again troubled, and he went and inquired of the Lord what he should do concerning this matter, for he feared that he should do wrong in the sight of God. And it came to pass that after he had poured out his whole soul to God, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, Blessed art thou, Alma, and blessed are they who were baptized in the waters of Mormon. Thou art blessed because of thy exceeding faith in the words alone of my servant Abinadi. And blessed are they because of their exceeding faith in the words alone which thou hast spoken unto them. And blessed art thou because thou hast established a church among this people, and they shall be established, and they shall be my people. Yea, blessed is this people who are willing to bear my name, for in my name shall they be called, and they are mine. And because thou hast inquired of me concerning the transgressor, thou art blessed. Thou art my servant, and I covenant with thee that thou shalt have eternal life. And thou shalt serve me, and go forth in my name, and shalt gather together my sheep. And he that will hear my voice shall be my sheep, and him shall ye receive into the church, and him will I also receive. For behold, this is my church, Whosoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance, and whomsoever ye receive shall believe in my name, and him will I freely forgive. For it is I that taketh upon me the sins of the world, for it is I that hath created them. And it is I that granteth unto him that believeth unto the end a place at my right hand. For behold, in my name are they called, and if they know me, they shall come forth, and shall have a place eternally at my right hand. And it shall come to pass that when the second trump shall sound, then shall they that never knew me come forth and shall stand before me. And then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, that I am their Redeemer. But they would not be redeemed. And then I will confess unto them that I never knew them, and they shall depart into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Therefore I say unto you, that he that will not hear my voice, the same shall ye not receive into my church, for him I will not receive at the last day. Therefore I say unto you, Go, and whosoever transgresseth against me, him shall ye judge according to the sins which he has committed. And if he confess his sins before thee and me, and repenteth in the sincerity of his heart, him shall ye forgive, and I will forgive him also. Yea, and as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. And ye shall also forgive one another your trespasses. For verily I say unto you, He that forgiveth not his neighbor's trespasses, when he says that he repents, the same hath brought himself under condemnation. Now I say unto you, Go, and whosoever will not repent of his sins, the same shall not be numbered among my people, and this shall be observed from this time forward. And it came to pass, when Alma had heard these words, he wrote them down, that he might have them, and that he might judge the people of that church according to the commandments of God. And it came to pass that Alma went and judged those that had been taken in iniquity according to the word of the Lord. And whosoever repented of their sins and did confess them, he did number among the people of the church. And those that would not confess their sins and repent of their iniquity, the same were not numbered among the people of the church, and their names were blotted out. And it came to pass that Alma did regulate all the affairs of the church, and they began again to have peace and to prosper exceedingly in the affairs of the church, walking circumspectly before God, receiving many and baptizing many. And now all these things did Alma and his fellow laborers do, who were over the church, walking in all diligence, teaching the word of God in all things, suffering all manner of afflictions, being persecuted by those who did not belong to the church of God. And they did admonish their brethren, and they were also admonished every one by the word of God, according to his sins, or to the sins which he had committed, being commanded of God to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all things. Mosiah chapter 27 
And now it came to pass that the persecutions which were inflicted on the church by the unbelievers became so great that the church began to murmur and complain to their leaders concerning the matter. And they did complain to Alma, and Alma laid the case before their king Mosiah, and Mosiah consulted with his priests. And it came to pass that King Mosiah sent a proclamation throughout the land round about that there should not any unbeliever persecute any of those who belonged to the church of God. And there was a strict command throughout all the churches that there should be no persecutions among them, that there should be an equality among all men, that they should let no pride nor haughtiness disturb their peace, that every man should esteem his neighbor as himself, laboring with their own hands for their support. Yea, and all their priests and teachers should labor with their own hands for their support, in all cases, save it were in sickness or in much want. And doing these things they did abound in the grace of God. And there began to be much peace again in the land, and the people began to be very numerous, and began to scatter abroad upon the face of the earth, yea, on the north and on the south, on the east and on the west, building large cities and villages in all quarters of the land. And the Lord did visit them, and prosper them, and they became a large and wealthy people. Now the sons of Mosiah were numbered among the unbelievers, and also one of the sons of Alma was numbered among them, he being called Alma after his father. Nevertheless he became a very wicked and an idolatrous man, and he was a man of many words, and did speak much flattery to the people. Therefore he led many of the people to do after the manner of his iniquities and he became a great hinderment to the prosperity of the church of God, stealing away the hearts of the people, causing much dissension among the people, giving a chance for the enemy of God to exercise his power over them. And now it came to pass that while he was going about to destroy the church of God, for he did go about secretly with the sons of Mosiah seeking to destroy the church and to lead astray the people of the Lord, contrary to the commandments of God, or even the king, and as I said unto you, as they were going about rebelling against God, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and he descended as it were in a cloud, and he spake as it were with a voice of thunder, which caused the earth to shake upon which they stood. And so great was their astonishment, that they fell to the earth, and understood not the words which he spake unto them. Nevertheless he cried again, saying, Alma, Arise and stand forth, for why persecutest thou the church of God? For the Lord hath said, This is my church, and I will establish it, and nothing shall overthrow it, save it is the transgression of my people. And again the angel said, Behold, the Lord hath heard the prayers of his people, and also the prayers of his servant Alma, who is thy father, for he has prayed with much faith concerning thee that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore for this purpose have I come to convince thee of the power and authority of God, that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. And now, behold, can ye dispute the power of God? For behold, doth not my voice shake the earth? And can ye not also behold me before you? And I am sent from God." Now I say unto thee, Go, and remember the captivity of thy fathers in the land of Helam, and in the land of Nephi, and remember how great things he has done for them, for they were in bondage, and he has delivered them. And now I say unto thee, Alma, go thy way, and seek to destroy the church no more, that their prayers may be answered, and this, even if thou wilt of thyself, be cast off. And now it came to pass that these were the last words which the angel spake unto Alma, and he departed. And now Alma and those that were with him fell again to the earth, for great was their astonishment, for with their own eyes they had beheld an angel of the Lord, and his voice was as thunder, which shook the earth, and they knew that there was nothing save the power of God that could shake the earth and cause it to tremble as though it would part asunder. And now the astonishment of Alma was so great that he became dumb, that he could not open his mouth, yea, and he became weak, even that he could not move his hands. Therefore he was taken by those that were with him, and carried helpless even until he was laid before his father. 
and they rehearsed unto his father all that had happened unto them. And his father rejoiced, for he knew that it was the power of God. And he caused that a multitude should be gathered together, that they might witness what the Lord had done for his son, and also for those that were with him. And he caused that the priests should assemble themselves together. And they began to fast and to pray to the Lord their God, that he would open the mouth of Alma, that he might speak, and also that his limbs might receive their strength, that the eyes of the people might be opened to see and know of the goodness and glory of God. And it came to pass, after they had fasted and prayed for the space of two days and two nights, the limbs of Alma received their strength. And he stood up and began to speak unto them, bidding them to be of good comfort. For, said he, I have repented of my sins, and have been redeemed of the Lord. Behold, I am born of the Spirit. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. And thus they become new creatures, and unless they do this, they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. I say unto you, unless this be the case, they must be cast off. And this I know, because I was like to be cast off. Nevertheless, after waiting through much tribulations, repenting nigh unto death, the Lord in mercy hath seen fit to snatch me out of an everlasting burning, and I am born of God. My soul hath been redeemed from the gall of bitterness and bonds of iniquity. I was in the darkest abyss, but now I behold the marvelous light of God. My soul was racked with eternal torment, but I am snatched, and my soul is pained no more. I rejected my Redeemer, and denied that which had been spoken of by our fathers. But now that they may foresee that he will come, and that he remembereth every creature of his creating, he will make himself manifest unto all. Yea, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess before him, yea, even at the last day, when all men shall stand to be judged of him, then shall they confess that he is God, then shall they confess who live without God in the world, that the judgment of an everlasting punishment is just upon them, and they shall quake, and tremble, and shrink beneath the glance of his all-searching eye. And now it came to pass that Alma began from this time forward to teach the people, and those who were with Alma at the time the angel appeared unto them, traveling round about through all the land, publishing to all the people the things which they had heard and seen, and preaching the word of God in much tribulation, being greatly persecuted by those who were unbelievers, being smitten by many of them. But notwithstanding all this, they did impart much consolation to the church, confirming their faith and exhorting them with long suffering and much travail to keep the commandments of God. And four of them were the sons of Mosiah, and their names were Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Himni. These were the names of the sons of Mosiah. And they traveled throughout all the lands of Zarahemla, and among all the people who were under the reign of King Mosiah, zealously striving to repair all the injuries which they had done to the church, confessing all their sins, and publishing all the things which they had seen, and explaining the prophecies and the scriptures to all who desired to hear them. And thus they were instruments in the hands of God in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth, yea, to the knowledge of their Redeemer. And how blessed are they, for they did publish peace, they did publish good tidings of good, and they did declare unto the people that the Lord reigneth. End of Mosiah chapters 24 through 27 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com Mosiah chapters 28 through 29 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. 
Mosiah chapters 28 through 29. Mosiah chapter 28. Now it came to pass that after the sons of Mosiah had done all these things, they took a small number with them and returned to their father the king, and desired of him that he would grant unto them that they might, with those whom they had selected, go up to the land of Nephi, that they might preach the things which they had heard, and that they might impart the word of God to their brethren the Lamanites, that perhaps they might bring them to the knowledge of the Lord their God, and convince them of the iniquity of their fathers, and that perhaps they might cure them of their hatred towards the Nephites, that they might also be brought to rejoice in the Lord their God, that they might become friendly to one another, and that there should be no more contentions in all the land which the Lord their God had given them. Now they were desirous that salvation should be declared to every creature, for they could not bear that any human soul should perish. Yea, even the very thoughts that any soul should endure endless torment did cause them to quake and tremble. And thus did the Spirit of the Lord work upon them, for they were the very vilest of sinners, and the Lord saw fit in his infinite mercy to spare them. Nevertheless they suffered much anguish of soul because of their iniquities, suffering much and fearing that they should be cast off forever. And it came to pass that they did plead with their father many days that they might go up to the land of Nephi. And King Mosiah went and inquired of the Lord if he should let his sons go up among the Lamanites to preach the word. And the Lord said unto Mosiah, Let them go up, for many shall believe on their words, and they shall have eternal life and I will deliver thy sons out of the hands of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Mosiah granted that they might go and do according to their request. And they took their journey into the wilderness to go up to preach the word among the Lamanites, and I shall give an account of their proceedings hereafter. Now King Mosiah had no one to confer the kingdom upon, for there was not any of his sons who would accept of the kingdom. Therefore he took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass, and also the plates of Nephi, and all the things which he had kept and preserved according to the commandments of God, after having translated and caused to be written the records which were on the plates of gold, which had been found by the people of Limhi, which were delivered to him by the hand of Limhi. And this he did because of the great anxiety of his people, for they were desirous beyond measure to know concerning those people who had been destroyed. And now he translated them by the means of those two stones which were fastened into the two rims of a bow. Now these things were prepared from the beginning, and were handed down from generation to generation for the purpose of interpreting languages, and they have been kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he should discover to every creature who should possess the land the iniquities and abominations of his people. And whosoever has these things is called a seer, after the manner of old times. Now after Mosiah had finished translating these records, behold, it gave an account of the people who were destroyed from the time that they were destroyed back to the building of the great tower at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people, and they were scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth, yea, and even from that time back until the creation of Adam. Now this account did cause the people of Mosiah to mourn exceedingly, yea, they were filled with sorrow, nevertheless it gave them much knowledge in the which they did rejoice. And this account shall be written hereafter, for behold, it is expedient that all people should know the things which are written in this account. And now, as I said unto you, that after King Mosiah had done these things, he took the plates of brass, and all the things which he had kept, and conferred them upon Alma, who was the son of Alma, yea, all the records, and also the interpreters, and conferred them upon him, and commanded him that he should keep and preserve them, and also keep a record of the people, handing them down from one generation to another, even as they had been handed down from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. Mosiah chapter 29 Now when Mosiah had done this, he sent out throughout all the land among all the people, desiring to know their will concerning who should be their king. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came, saying, we are desirous that Aaron thy son should be our king and our ruler. Now Aaron had gone up to the land of Nephi, therefore the king could not confer the kingdom upon him. Neither would Aaron take upon him the kingdom, neither were any of the sons of Mosiah willing to take upon them the kingdom. Therefore king Mosiah sent again among the people, yea, even a written word sent he among the people. And these were the words that were written, saying, Behold, O ye my people, 
or my brethren, for I esteem you as such, I desire that ye should consider the cause which ye are called to consider. For ye are desirous to have a king. Now I declare unto you that he to whom the kingdom doth rightly belong has declined, and will not take upon him the kingdom. And now if there should be another appointed in his stead, behold, I fear there would rise contentions among you. And who knoweth but what my son, to whom the kingdom doth belong, should turn to be angry and draw away a part of this people after him, which would cause wars and contentions among you, which would be the cause of shedding much blood and perverting the way of the Lord, yea, and destroy the souls of many people. Now I say unto you, let us be wise and consider these things, for we have no right to destroy my son, neither should we have any right to destroy another if he should be appointed in his stead. And if my son should turn again to his pride and vain things, he would recall the things which he had said, and claim his right to the kingdom, which would cause him and also this people to commit much sin. And now let us be wise and look forward to these things, and do that which will make for the peace of this people. Therefore I will be your king the remainder of my days. Nevertheless let us appoint judges to judge this people according to our law and we will newly arrange the affairs of this people. For we will appoint wise men to be judges, that will judge this people according to the commandments of God. Now it is better that a man should be judged of God than of man, for the judgments of God are always just, but the judgments of man are not always just. Therefore, if it were possible that you could have just men to be your kings, who would establish the laws of God and judge this people according to his commandments, Yea, if ye could have men for your kings, who would do even as my father Benjamin did for this people, I say unto you, if this could always be the case, then it would be expedient that ye should always have kings to rule over you. And even I myself have labored with all the power and faculties which I have possessed, to teach you the commandments of God, and to establish peace throughout the land, that there should be no wars, nor contentions, no stealing, nor plundering, nor murdering, nor any manner of iniquity. And whosoever has committed iniquity, him have I punished according to the crime which he has committed, according to the law which has been given to us by our fathers. Now I say unto you, that because all men are not just, it is not expedient that ye should have a king or kings to rule over you. For behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed! Yea, and what great destruction! Yea, remember King Noah, his wickedness and his abominations, and also the wickedness and abominations of his people. Behold, what great destruction did come upon them, and also because of their iniquities they were brought into bondage. And were it not for the interposition of their all-wise Creator, and this because of their sincere repentance, they must unavoidably remain in bondage until now. But behold, he did deliver them, because they did humble themselves before him. And because they cried mightily unto him, he did deliver them out of bondage. And thus doth the Lord work with his power in all cases among the children of men, extending the arm of mercy towards them that put their trust in him. And behold, now I say unto you, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention and the shedding of much blood. For behold, he has his friends in iniquity, and he keepeth his guards about him, and he teareth up the laws of those who have reigned in righteousness before him, and he trampleth under his feet the commandments of God, and he enacteth laws and sendeth them forth among his people, yea, laws after the manner of his own wickedness, and whosoever doth not obey his laws he causeth to be destroyed, and whosoever doth rebel against him he will send his armies against them to war, and if he can he will destroy them, and thus an unrighteous king doth pervert the ways of all righteousness. And now, behold, I say unto you, it is not expedient that such abominations should come upon you. Therefore, choose you by the voice of this people, judges, that ye may be judged according to the laws which have been given by our fathers, which are correct, and which were given them by the hand of the Lord. Now it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right. But it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore this shall ye observe, and make it your law, to do your business by the voice of the people. And if the time comes that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, 
then is the time that the judgments of god will come upon you yea then is the time he will visit you with great destruction even as he has hitherto visited this land and now if ye have judges and they do not judge you according to the law which has been given ye can cause that they may be judged of a higher judge if your higher judges do not judge righteous judgments ye shall cause that a small number of your lower judges should be gathered together and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people and i command you to do these things in the fear of the lord and i command you to do these things and that ye have no king that if these people commit sins and iniquities they shall be answered upon their own heads for behold i say unto you the sins of many people have been caused by the iniquities of their kings therefore their iniquities are answered upon the heads of their kings and now i desire that this inequality should be no more in this land especially among this my people but i desire that this land be a land of liberty and every man may enjoy his rights and privileges alike so long as the lord sees fit that we may live and inherit the land yea even as long as any of our posterity remains upon the face of the land and many more things did king mosiah write unto them unfolding unto them all the trials and troubles of a righteous king yea all the travails of soul for their people and also all the murmurings of the people to their king and he explained it all unto them and he told them that these things ought not to be but that the burden should come upon all the people that every man might bear his part and he also unfolded unto them all the disadvantages they labored under by having an unrighteous king to rule over them yea all his iniquities and abominations and all the wars and contentions and bloodshed and the stealing and the plundering and the committing of whoredoms and all manner of iniquities which cannot be enumerated telling them that these things ought not to be that they were expressly repugnant to the commandments of god and now it came to pass after king mosiah had sent these things forth among the people they were convinced of the truth of his words therefore they relinquished their desires for a king and it became exceedingly anxious that every man should have an equal chance throughout all the land yea and every man expressed a willingness to answer for his own sins therefore it came to pass that they assembled themselves together in bodies throughout the land to cast in their voices concerning who should be their judges to judge them according to the law which had been given them and they were exceedingly rejoiced because of the liberty which had been granted unto them and they did wax strong in love towards mosiah yea they did esteem him more than any other man for they did not look upon him as a tyrant who was seeking for gain yea for that lucre which doth corrupt the soul for he had not exacted riches of them neither had he delighted in the shedding of blood but he had established peace in the land and he had granted unto his people that they should be delivered from all manner of bondage therefore they did esteem him yea exceedingly beyond measure and it came to pass that they did appoint judges to rule over them or to judge them according to the law and this they did throughout all the land and it came to pass that alma was appointed to be the first chief judge he being also the high priest his father having conferred the office upon him and having given him the charge concerning all the affairs of the church and now it came to pass that alma did walk in the ways of the lord and he did keep his commandments and he did judge righteous judgments and there was continual peace through the land and thus commenced the reign of the judges throughout all the land of zarahemla among all the people who were called the nephites and alma was the first and chief judge and now it came to pass that his father died being eighty and two years old having lived to fulfill the commandments of god and it came to pass that mosiah died also in the thirty and third year of his reign being sixty and three years old making in the whole five hundred and nine years from the time lehi left jerusalem and thus ended the reign of the kings over the people of nephi and thus ended the days of alma who was the founder of their church End of Mosiah chapters 28 through 29. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Alma chapters 1 through 3 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Stevenson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, Chapter 1. Now it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, from this time forward, King Mosiah having gone the way of all the earth, having warred a good warfare, walking uprightly before God, leaving none to reign in his stead, nevertheless he had established laws, and they were acknowledged by the people. Therefore they were obliged to abide by the laws which he had made. And it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of Alma in the judgment seat, there was a man brought before him to be judged, a man who was large, and was noted for his much strength. And he had gone about among the people, preaching to them that which he termed to be the word of God, bearing down against the church, declaring unto the people that every priest and teacher ought to become popular, and they ought not to labor with their hands, but that they ought to be supported by the people. And he also testified unto the people that all mankind should be saved at the last day, and that they need not fear nor tremble, but that they might lift up their heads and rejoice. For the Lord had created all men, and he had also redeemed all men, and, in the end, all men should have eternal life. And it came to pass that he did teach these things so much that many did believe on his words, even so many that they began to support him and give him money. And he began to be lifted up in the pride of his heart, and to wear very costly apparel yea, and even begin to establish a church after the manner of his preaching. And it came to pass, as he was going to preach to those who believed on his word, he met a man who belonged to the church of God, yea, even one of their teachers, and he began to contend with him sharply, that he might lead away the people of the church. But the man withstood him, admonishing him with the words of God. Now the name of the man was Gideon, and it was he who was an instrument in the hands of God in delivering the people of Lemhi out of bondage. Now because Gideon withstood him with the words of God, he was wroth with Gideon, and drew his sword and began to smite him. Now Gideon being stricken with many years, therefore he was not able to withstand his blows, therefore he was slain by the sword. And the man who slew him was taken by the people of the church, and was brought before Alma to be judged according to the crimes which he had committed. And it came to pass that he stood before Alma and pleaded for himself with much boldness. But Alma said unto him, Behold, this is the first time that priestcraft has been introduced among this people. And behold, thou art not only guilty of priestcraft, but hast endeavored to enforce it by the sword. And were priestcraft to be enforced among this people, it would prove their entire destruction. And thou hast shed blood of a righteous man, yea, a man who has done much good among this people. And were we to spare thee, his blood would come upon us for vengeance. Therefore thou art condemned to die, according to the law which has been given us by Mosiah, our last king, and it has been acknowledged by this people. Therefore this people must abide by the law. And it came to pass that they took him, and his name was Nahor, and they carried him upon the top of the hill Manti, and there he was caused, or rather did acknowledge, between the heavens and the earth, that what he had taught to the people was contrary to the word of God, and there he suffered an ignominious death. Nevertheless, this did not put an end to the spreading of priestcraft throughout the land, for there were many who loved the vain things of the world, and they went forth preaching false doctrines, and this they did for the sake of riches and honor. Nevertheless, they durst not lie, if it were known, for fear of the law, for liars were punished. Therefore they pretended to preach according to their belief, and now the law could have no power on any man for his belief. And they durst not steal, for fear of the law, for such were punished. Neither durst they rob nor murder, for he that murdered was punished unto death. But it came to pass that whoever did not belong to the church of God began to persecute those that did belong to the church of God, and had taken upon them the name of Christ. Yea, they did persecute them, and afflict them with all manner of words, and this because of their humility, because they were not proud in their own eyes, and because they did impart the word of God one with another without money and without price. Now there was a strict law among the people of the church that there should not any man belonging to the church arise and persecute those that did not belong to the church, and that there should be no persecution amongst themselves. Nevertheless, there were many among them who began to be proud, and began to contend warmly with their adversaries, even unto blows, 
yea, they would smite one another with their fists. Now this was in the second year of the reign of Alma, and it was a cause of much affliction to the church, yea, it was a cause of much trial with the church. For the hearts of many were hardened, and their names were blotted out, that they were remembered no more among the people of God, and also many withdrew themselves from among them. Now this was a great trial to those that did stand fast in the faith. Nevertheless, they were steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of God, and they bore with patience the persecution which was heaped upon them. And when the priests left their labor to impart the word of God unto the people, the people also left their labors to hear the word of God. And when the priest had imparted unto them the word of God, they all returned again diligently unto their labors. And the priest, not esteeming himself above his hearers, for the preacher was no better than the hearer, neither was the teacher any better than the learner, and thus they were all equal, and they did all labor, every man according to his strength. And they did impart of their substance, every man according to that which he had, to the poor, and the needy, and the sick, and the afflicted, and they did not wear costly apparel, yet they were neat and comely. And thus they did establish the affairs of the church, and thus they began to have continual peace again, notwithstanding all their persecutions. And now, because of the steadiness of the church, they began to be exceedingly rich, having abundance of all things whatsoever they stood in need, an abundance of flocks and herds, and fatlings of every kind, and also an abundance of grain, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and abundance of silk and fine twine linen, and all manner of good homely cloth. And thus, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not send away any who were naked, or that were hungry, or that were athirst, or that were sick, or that had not been nourished. And they did not set their hearts upon riches. Therefore, they were liberal to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in the church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. And thus they did prosper and become far more wealthy than those who did not belong to their church. For those who did not belong to their church did indulge themselves in sorceries, and in idolatry or idleness, and in babblings, and in envyings and strife, wearing costly apparel, being lifted up in the pride of their own eyes, persecuting, lying, thieving, robbing, committing whoredoms, and murdering, and all manner of wickedness. Nevertheless, the law was put in force upon all those who did transgress it, inasmuch as it was possible. And it came to pass that by thus exercising the law upon them, every man suffering according to that which he had done, they became more still, and durst not commit any wickedness if it were known. Therefore, there was much peace among the people of Nephi until the fifth year of the reign of the judges. End of chapter 1. Chapter 2. And it came to pass in the commencement of the fifth year of their reign there began to be a contention among the people. For a certain man, being called Amlici, he being a very cunning man, yea, a wise man as to the wisdom of the world, he being after the order of the man that slew Gideon by the sword, who was executed according to the law, now this Amlici had, by his cunning, drawn away much people after him, even so much that they began to be very powerful, and they began to endeavor to establish Amlici to be king over the people. Now this was alarming to the people of the church, and also to all those who had not been drawn away after the persuasions of Amlici. For they knew that according to their law that such things must be established by the voice of the people. Therefore, if it were possible that Amlici should gain the voice of the people, he, being a wicked man, would deprive them of their rights and privileges of the church, for it was his intent to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that the people assembled themselves together throughout all the land, every man according to his mind, whether or for or against Amlethi, in separate bodies, having much dispute and wonderful contentions one with another. And thus they did assemble themselves together to cast their voices concerning the matter and they were laid before the judges. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came against Amlici, that he was not made king over the people. Now this did cause much joy in the hearts of those who were against him. But Amlici did stir up those who were in his favor to anger against those who were not in his favor. And it came to pass that they gathered themselves together, and did consecrate Amlici to be their king. Now when Amlici was made king over them, he commanded them that they should take up arms against their brethren, 
And this he did that he might subject them to him. Now the people of Amlici were distinguished by the name of Amlici, being called Amlicites, and the remainder were called Nephites, or the people of God. Therefore the people of the Nephites were aware of the intent of the Amlicites, and therefore they did prepare to meet them. Yea, they did arm themselves with swords, and with scimitars, and with bows, and with arrows, and with stones, and with slings, and with all manner of weapons of war, of every kind. And thus they were prepared to meet the Amlicites at the time of their coming. And there were appointed captains, and higher captains, and chief captains, according to their numbers. And it came to pass that Amlici did arm his men with all manner of weapons of war of every kind. And he also appointed rulers and leaders over his people, to lead them to war against their brethren. And it came to pass that the Amlicites came upon the hill Amnihu, which was east of the river Sidon, which ran by the land of Zarahemla, and there they began to make war with the Nephites. Now Alma, being the chief judge and the governor of the people of Nephi, therefore he went up with his people, yea, with his captains, and chief captains, yea, at the head of his armies, against the Amlicites to battle. And they began to slay the Amlicites upon the hill east of Sidon. And the Amlicites did contend with the Nephites with great strength, insomuch that many of the Nephites did fall before the Amlicites. Nevertheless, the Lord did strengthen the hand of the Nephites, that they slew the Amlicites with great slaughter, that they began to flee before them. And it came to pass that the Nephites did pursue the Amlicites all that day, and did slay them with much slaughter, insomuch that there were slain of the Amlicites twelve thousand five hundred sixty and two souls. And there were slain of the Nephites six thousand five hundred sixty and two souls. And it came to pass that when Alma could pursue the Amlicites no longer, he caused that his people should pitch their tents in the valley of Gideon, the valley being called after that Gideon who was slain by the hand of Nahor with the sword. And in this valley the Nephites did pitch their tents for the night. And Alma sent spies to follow the remnant of the Amlicites, that he might know of their plans and their plots, whereby he might guard himself against them that he might preserve his people from being destroyed. Now those whom he had sent out to watch the camp of the Amlicites were called Zeram, and Amnor, and Manti, and Limher. These were they who went out with their men to watch the camp of the Amlicites. And it came to pass that on the morrow they returned into the camp of the Nephites in great haste, being greatly astonished, and struck with much fear, saying, Behold, we followed the camp of the Amlicites, and to our great astonishment, in the land of Minon, above the land of Zarahemla, in the course of the land of Nephi, we saw a numerous host of the Lamanites, and behold, the Amlicites have joined them. And they are upon our brethren in that land, and they are fleeing before them with their flocks and their wives and their children towards our city. And except we make haste, they obtain possession of our city, and our fathers and our wives and our children be slain. And it came to pass that the people of Nephi took their tents and departed out of the valley of Gideon towards their city, which was the city of Zarahemla. And behold, as they were crossing the river Sidon, the Lamanites and the Amlicites, being as numerous almost as it were as the sands of the sea, came upon them to destroy them. Nevertheless, the Nephites, being strengthened by the hand of the Lord, having prayed mightily to him that he would deliver them out of the hands of their enemies, therefore the Lord did hear their cries, and did strengthen them. And the Lamanites and the Amlicites did fall before them. And it came to pass that Alma fought with Amlici with the sword, face to face, and they did contend mightily, one with another. And it came to pass that Alma, being a man of God, being exercised with much faith, cried, saying, O Lord, have mercy and spare my life, that I may be an instrument in thy hands to save and preserve this people. Now when Alma had said these words, he contended again with Amlici, and he was strengthened, insomuch that he slew Amlici with the sword. And he also contended with the king of the Lamanites. But the king of the Lamanites fled back from before Alma, and sent his guards to contend with Alma. But Alma, with his guards, contended with the guards of the king of the Lamanites, until he slew and drove them back. And thus he cleared the ground, or rather the bank, which was on the west of the river Sidon, throwing the bodies of the Lamanites who had been slain into the waters of the Sidon, that thereby his people might have room to cross and contend with the Lamanites and the Amlicites on the west side of the river Sidon. And it came to pass that when they had crossed the river Sidon, that the Lamanites and the Amlicites began to flee before them, notwithstanding they were so numerous that they could not be numbered. 
and they fled before the Nephites towards the wilderness which was west and north, away beyond the borders of the land. And the Nephites did pursue them with their might, and did slay them. Yea, they were met on every hand, and slain and driven, until they were scattered on the west and on the north, until they had reached the wilderness, which was called Hermounts. And it was that part of the wilderness which was infested by wild and ravenous beasts. And it came to pass that many died in the wilderness of their wounds, and were devoured by those beasts, and also the vultures of the air, and their bones have been found, and have been heaped upon the earth. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 And it came to pass that the Nephites who were not slain by the weapons of war, after having buried those who had been slain, now the number of the slain were not numbered, because of the greatness of their number. After they had finished burying their dead, they all returned to their lands, and to their houses, and their wives, and their children. Now many women and children had been slain with the sword, and also many of their flocks and their herds, and also many of their fields of grain were destroyed, for they were trodden down by the hosts of men. And now as many of the Lamanites and the Amlicites who had been slain upon the bank of the river Sidon were cast into the waters of Sidon, and behold, their bones are in the depths of the sea, and they are many. And the Amlicites were distinguished from the Nephites, for they had marked themselves with red in their foreheads after the manner of the Lamanites. Nevertheless, they had not shorn their heads like unto the Lamanites. Now the heads of the Lamanites were shorn, and they were naked, save it were the skin which was girded about their loins, and also their armor which was girded about them, and their bows, and their arrows, and their stones, and their slings, and so forth. And the skins of the Lamanites were dark, according to the mark which was set upon their fathers, which was accursed upon them because of their transgression and their rebellion against their brethren, who consisted of Nephi, Jacob, and Joseph, and Sam, who were just and holy men. And their brethren sought to destroy them, therefore they were cursed. And the Lord God set a mark upon them, yea, upon Laman and Lemuel, and also the sons of Ishmael, and the Ishmaelitish women. And this was done that their seed might be distinguished from the seed of their brethren, that thereby the Lord God might preserve his people, that they might not mix and believe in the incorrect traditions which would prove their destruction. And it came to pass that whosoever did mingle his seed with that of the Lamanites did bring the same curse upon his seed. Therefore, whosoever suffered himself to be led away with the Lamanites was called under that head, and there was a mark set upon him. And it came to pass that whosoever would not believe in the tradition of the Lamanites, but believed those records which were brought out of the land of Jerusalem, and also in the tradition of their fathers, which were correct, who believed in the commandments of God and kept them, were called Nephites, or the people of Nephi, from that time forth. And it is they who have kept the records which are true of their people, and also of the Lamanites. Now we will return again to the Amlicites, for they also had a mark set upon them, Yea, they set the mark upon themselves, yea, even a mark of red upon their forehead. Thus the word of God is fulfilled. For these are the words which he said to Nephi, Behold, the Lamanites have I cursed, and I will set a mark on them that they and their seed may be separated from thee and thy seed, from this time henceforth and forever, except they repent of their wickedness and turn to me that I may have mercy upon them. And again, I will set a mark upon him that mingles his seed with thy brethren, that they may be cursed also. And again, I will set a mark upon him that fighteth against thee and thy seed. And again, I say that he that departeth from thee shall no more be called thy seed, and I will bless thee, and whomsoever shall be called thy seed, henceforth and forever. And these were the promises of the Lord unto Nephi and to his seed. Now the Amlicites knew not that they were fulfilling the words of God when they began to mark themselves in their foreheads. Nevertheless, they had come out in open rebellion against God. Therefore it was expedient that the curse should fall upon them. Now I would that ye should see that they brought upon themselves the curse. And even so doth every man that is cursed bring upon himself his own condemnation. Now it came to pass that not many days after the battle which was fought in the land of Zarahemla, by the Lamanites and the Amlicites, that there was another army of the Lamanites came in upon the people of Nephi, in the same place where the first army met the Amlicites. And it came to pass that there was an army sent to drive them out of their land. Now Alma himself, being afflicted with a wound, did not go up to battle at this time against the Lamanites. But he sent up a numerous army against them, and they went up and slew many of the Lamanites, and drove the remainder of them out of the borders of their land. And then they returned again and began to establish peace in the land, 
being troubled no more for a time with their enemies. Now all these things were done, yea, all these wars and contentions were commenced and ended in the fifth year of the reign of the judges. And in one year there were thousands and tens of thousands of souls sent to the eternal world, that they might reap their rewards according to their works, whether they were good or whether they were bad, to reap eternal happiness or eternal misery, according to the spirit which they listed to obey, whether it be a good spirit or a bad one. For every man receiveth wages of him who he listeth to obey, and this according to the words of the spirit of prophecy. Therefore let it be according to the truth. And thus endeth the fifth year of the reign of the judges. End of Alma, chapters 1 through 3. Recording by David Stevenson. Alma, chapters 4 through 7 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Stevenson. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 4 through 7. Now it came to pass in the sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were no contentions nor wars in the lands of Zarahemla. But the people were afflicted, yea, greatly afflicted, for the loss of their brethren, and also for the loss of their flocks and herds, and also for the loss of their fields of grain, which were trodden under foot and destroyed by the Lamanites. And so great were their afflictions that every soul had cause to mourn, and they believed that it was the judgments of God sent upon them because of their wickedness and their abominations. Therefore, they were awakened to a remembrance of their duty. And they began to establish the church more fully. Yea, and many were baptized in the waters of Sidon, and were joined to the church of God. Yea, they were baptized by the hands of Alma, who had been consecrated the high priest over the people of the church, by the hands of his father Alma. And it came to pass, in the seventh year of the reign of the judges, that there were about three thousand five hundred souls that united themselves to the church of God and were baptized. And thus endeth the seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, and there was continual peace in all that time. And it came to pass in the eighth year of the reign of the judges that the people of the church began to wax proud because of their exceeding riches, and their fine silks, and their fine twined linen, and because of their many flocks and herds, and their gold and their silver, and all manner of precious things which they had obtained by their industry. And in all these things were they lifted up in the pride of their eyes, for they began to wear very costly apparel. Now this was the cause of much affliction to Alma, yea, and to many of the people whom Alma had consecrated to be teachers and priests and elders over the church. Yea, many of them were sorely grieved for the wickedness which they saw had begun to be among their people. For they saw and beheld with great sorrow that the people of the church began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes and to set their hearts upon riches and upon the vain things of the world. And they began to be scornful one towards another, and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. And thus, in this eighth year of the reign of the judges, there began to be great contentions among the people of the church. Yea, there were envyings and strife and malice and persecutions and pride, even to exceed the pride of those who did not belong to the church of God. And thus ended the eighth year of the reign of the judges. And the wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church. And thus the church began to fail in its progress. And it came to pass in the commencement of the ninth year, Alma saw the wickedness of the church. And he saw also that the example of the church had begun to lead those who were unbelievers on from one piece of iniquity to another, thus bringing on the destruction of the people. Yea, he saw great inequality among the people, some lifting themselves up with their pride, despising others, turning their backs upon the needy and the naked and those who were hungry and those who were athirst and those who were sick and afflicted. Now this was a great cause for lamentations among the people, while others were abasing themselves, succoring those who stood in need of their succor, such as imparting their substance to the poor and the needy, feeding the hungry, and suffering all manner of afflictions for Christ's sake, who should come according to the spirit of prophecy, looking forward to that day 
thus retaining a remission of their sins, being filled with great joy because of the resurrection of the dead, according to the will and power and deliverance of Jesus Christ from the bands of death. Now it came to pass that Alma, having seen the afflictions of the humble followers of God, and the persecutions which were heaped upon them by the remainder of his people, and seeing all their inequality, began to be very sorrowful. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord did not fail him. And he selected a wise man who was among the elders of the church, and gave him power according to the voice of the people, that he might have power to enact laws according to the laws which had been given, and to put them in force according to the wickedness and the crimes of the people. Now this man's name was Nephiha, and he was appointed chief judge, and he sat in the judgment seat to judge and to govern the people. Now Alma did not grant unto him the office of being high priest over the church, but he retained the office of high priest unto himself, but he delivered the judgment seat unto Nephiha. And this he did, that he himself might go forth among his people, or among the people of Nephi, that he might preach the word of God unto them, to stir them up in remembrance of their duty, that he might pull down, by the word of God, all the pride and craftiness and all the contentions which were among his people, seeing no way that he might reclaim them save it were in bearing down in pure testimony against them. And thus, in the commencement of the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Alma delivered up the judgment seat unto Nephiha, and confined himself wholly to the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to the testimony of the word, according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 now it came to pass that Alma began to deliver the word of God unto the people, first in the land of Zarahemla, and from thence throughout all the land. And these are the words which he spake to the people in the church which was established in the city of Zarahemla, according to his own record, saying, I, Alma, have been consecrated by my father, Alma, to be a high priest over the church of God, he having power and authority from God to do these things. Behold, I say unto you that he began to establish a church in the land which was in the borders of Nephi, yea, the land which was called the land of Mormon, yea, and he did baptize his brethren into the waters of Mormon. And behold, I say unto you, they were delivered out of the hands of the people of King Noah by the mercy and power of God. And behold, after that, they were brought into bondage by the hands of the Lamanites in the wilderness. Yea, I say unto you, they were in captivity, and again the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. And we were brought into this land, and here we began to establish the church of God throughout this land also. And now, behold, I say unto you, my brethren, you that belong to this church, have you sufficiently retained in remembrance the captivity of your fathers? Yea, and have you sufficiently retained in remembrance his mercy and long suffering towards them? And moreover, have ye sufficiently retained in remembrance that he has delivered their souls from hell? Behold, he changed their hearts. Yea, he awakened them out of a deep sleep, and they awoke unto God. Behold, they were in the midst of darkness. Nevertheless, their souls were illuminated by the light of the everlasting word. Yea, they were encircled about by the bands of death and the chains of hell, and an everlasting destruction did await them. Now I ask of you, my brethren, were they destroyed? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, they were not. And again I ask, were the bands of death broken? And the chains of hell which encircled them about, were they loosed? I say unto you, Yea, they were loosed, and their souls did expand, and they did sing redeeming love. And I say unto you that they are saved. And now I ask of you, on what conditions are they saved? Yea, on what grounds had they to hope for salvation? What is the cause of their being loosed from the bands of death? Yea, and also the chains of hell. Behold, I can tell you, did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God, and my father Alma believe them? And according to his faith there was a mighty change wrought in his heart, Behold, I say unto you, that this is all true. And behold, he preached the word unto your fathers, 
and a mighty change was also wrought in their hearts. And they humbled themselves and put their trust in the true and living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end. Therefore they were saved. And now, behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith, and view this mortal body raised in immortality, and this corruption raised in incorruption, to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body? I say unto you, Can you imagine to yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord, saying unto you in that day, Come unto me, ye blessed, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Or do ye imagine to yourselves that ye can lie unto the Lord in that day, and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth, and that he will save you? Or otherwise, can ye imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt, yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness, yea, a remembrance that ye have set at defiance the commandments of God? I say unto you, can ye look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I say unto you, can you look up, having the image of God engraven upon your countenances? I say unto you, can ye think of being saved when you have yielded yourselves to become subjects to the devil? I say unto you, ye will know at that day that ye cannot be saved. For there can no man be saved except his garments are washed white. Yea, his garments must be purified until they are cleansed from all stain, through the blood of him of whom it has been spoken by our fathers, who should come to redeem his people from their sins. And now I ask of you, my brethren, how will any of you feel if ye shall stand before the bar of God, having your garments stained with blood and all manner of filthiness? Behold, what will these things testify against you? Behold, will they not testify that ye are murderers? Yea, and also that ye are guilty of all manner of wickedness? Behold, my brethren, do ye suppose that such an one can have a place to sit down in the kingdom of God, with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, and also all the holy prophets, whose garments are cleansed and are spotless, pure, and white? I say unto you, Nay, except ye make our Creator a liar from the beginning, or suppose that he is a liar from the beginning. Ye cannot suppose that such can have place in the kingdom of heaven, but they shall be cast out, for they are children of the kingdom of the devil. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, if ye have experienced a change of heart, and if ye have felt to sing the song of redeeming love, I would ask, can ye feel so now? Have ye walked, keeping yourselves blameless before God? Could ye say, if ye were called to die at this time, within yourselves, that ye have been sufficiently humble, that your garments have been cleansed and made white through the blood of Christ, who will come to redeem his people from their sins? Behold, are ye stripped of pride? I say unto you, if ye are not, ye are not prepared to meet God. Behold, ye must prepare quickly, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand, and such an one hath not eternal life. Behold, I say, is there one among you who is not stripped of envy? I say unto you that such an one is not prepared, and I would that he should prepare quickly, for the hour is close at hand, and he knoweth not when the time shall come, for such an one is not found guiltless. And I say unto you, Is there one among you that doth make a mock of his brother, or that heapeth upon him persecutions? Woe unto such an one! For he is not prepared, and the time is at hand that he must repent, or he cannot be saved. Yea, even woe unto all ye workers of iniquity! Repent, repent, for the Lord God has spoken it. Behold, he sendeth an invitation to all men, 
for the arms of mercy are extended towards them. And he saith, Repent, and I will receive you. Yea, he saith, Come unto me, and ye shall partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Yea, ye shall eat and drink of the bread and the waters of life freely. Yea, come unto me, and bring forth works of righteousness. And ye shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire. For behold, the time is at hand that whosoever bringeth forth not good fruit, or whosoever doeth not the works of righteousness, the same have cause to wail and mourn. O ye workers of iniquity, ye that are puffed up in the vain things of the world, ye that have professed to have known the ways of righteousness, nevertheless have gone astray, as sheep having no shepherd. Notwithstanding a shepherd hath called after you, and is still calling after you, but ye will not hearken unto his voice. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call you, yea, and in his own name he doth call you, which is the name of Christ. And if ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd, to the name by which ye are called, behold, ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd. And now if ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd, of what fold are ye? Behold, I say unto you, that the devil is your shepherd, and ye are of his fold. And now, who can deny this? Behold, I say unto you, whosoever denieth this is a liar and a child of the devil. For I say unto you that whatsoever is good cometh from God, and whatsoever is evil cometh from the devil. Therefore, if a man bringeth forth good works, he hearkeneth unto the voice of the good shepherd, and he doth follow him. But whosoever bringeth forth evil works, the same becometh the child of the devil, for he hearkeneth unto his voice, and doth follow him. And whosoever doeth this must receive his wages of him. Therefore, for his wages he receiveth death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness, being dead unto all good works. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should hear me, for I speak in the energy of my soul. For behold, I have spoken unto you plainly that ye cannot err, or have spoken according to the commandments of God. For I am called to speak after this manner, according to the holy order of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Yea, I am commanded to stand and testify unto this people the things which have been spoken by our fathers concerning the things which are to come. And this is not all. Do ye not suppose that I know of these things myself? Behold, I testify unto you that I do know these things whereof I have spoken of are true. And how do you suppose that I know of their surety? Behold, I say unto you that they are made known unto me by the Holy Spirit of God. Behold, I have fasted and prayed many days that I might know these things of myself. And now I do know of myself that they are true. For the Lord God hath made them manifest unto me by his Holy Spirit. And this is the spirit of revelation which is in me. And moreover, I say unto you that it has been revealed unto me that the words which have been spoken by our fathers are true, even so according to the spirit of prophecy which is in me, which is also by the manifestation of the Spirit of God. I say unto you, that I know of myself that whatsoever I shall say unto you concerning that which is to come is true. And I say unto you, that I know that Jesus Christ shall come, yea, the Son, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and mercy and truth. And behold, it is he that cometh to take away the sins of the world, yea, the sins of every man who steadfastly believeth on his name. And now I say unto you that this is the order after which I am called, yea, to preach unto my beloved brethren, yea, and every one that dwelleth in the land, yea, to preach unto all, both old and young, both bond and free, yea, I say unto you the aged and also the middle aged and the writhing generation, yea, to cry unto them that they must repent and be born again. Yea, thus saith the Spirit, Repent, all ye ends of the earth, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand. Yea, the Son of God cometh in his glory, in his might, majesty, 
power, and dominion. Yea, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, that the Spirit saith, Behold, the glory of the King of all the earth, and also the King of heaven, shall very soon shine forth among all the children of men. And also the Spirit saith unto me, Yea, crieth unto me with a mighty voice, saying, Go forth, and say unto this people, Repent, for except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, The Spirit saith, Behold, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, yea, a fire which cannot be consumed, even an unquenchable fire. Behold, and remember, the Holy One hath spoken it. And now, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, Can ye withstand these sayings? Yea, can ye lay aside these things, and trample the Holy One under your feet? Yea, can ye be puffed up in the pride of your hearts? Yea, will ye still persist in the wearing of costly apparel, and setting your hearts upon the vain things of the world, upon your riches? Yea, will ye persist in supposing that ye are better one than another? Yea, will ye persist in the persecution of your brethren, who humble themselves and do walk after the holy order of God, wherewith they have been brought into this church, having been sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and that they do bring forth works which are meet for repentance? Yea, and will you persist in turning your backs upon the poor and the needy, and in withholding your substance from them? And finally, all ye that will persist in your wickedness, I say unto you that these are they who shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, except they speedily repent. And now I say unto you, all that are desirous to follow the voice of the good shepherd, come ye out from the wicked, and be ye separate, and touch not their unclean things. And behold, their names shall be blotted out, that the names of the wicked shall not be numbered among the names of the righteous, that the word of God may be fulfilled, which saith, The names of the wicked shall not be mingled with the names of my people. For the names of the righteous shall be written in the book of life, and unto them will I grant an inheritance at my right hand. And now, my brethren, what have ye to say against this? I say unto you, if ye speak against it, it matters not, for the word of God must be fulfilled. For what shepherd is there among you, having many sheep, doth not watch over them, that the wolves enter not and devour his flock? And behold, if a wolf enter his flock, does he not drive them out? And yea, at the last, if he can, he will destroy him. And now I say unto you that the good shepherd doth call after you, and if you will hearken unto his voice, he will bring you into his fold, and ye are his sheep. And he commandeth you that ye suffer no ravenous wolf to enter among you, that ye may not be destroyed. And now I, Alma, do command you in the language of him who hath commanded me, that ye observe to do the words which I have spoken unto you. I speak by way of command unto you that belong to the church. And unto those who do not belong to the church, I speak by way of invitation, saying, Come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may also be partakers of the fruit of the tree of life. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 And now it came to pass that after Alma had made an end of speaking unto the people of the church, which was established in the city of Zarahemla, he ordained priests and elders, by laying on his hands according to the order of God, to preside and watch over the church. And it came to pass that whosoever did not belong to the church who repented of their sins were baptized unto repentance, and were received into the church. And it also came to pass that whosoever did belong to the church that did not repent of their wickedness and humble themselves before God, I mean those who were lifted up in the pride of their hearts, the same were rejected, and their names were blotted out, that their names were not numbered among those of the righteous. And thus they began to establish the order of the church in the city of Zarahemla. Now I would that ye should understand that the word of God was liberal unto all, 
that none were deprived of the privilege of assembling themselves together to hear the word of God. Nevertheless, the children of God were commanded that they should gather themselves together oft, and join in fasting and mighty prayer in behalf of the welfare of the souls of those who knew not God. And it came to pass that when Alma had made these regulations, he departed from them, yea, from the church which was in the city of Zarahemla, and he went over upon the east of the river Sidon, into the valley of Gideon, there having been a city built, which was called the city of Gideon, which was in the valley that was called Gideon, being called after the man who was slain by the hand of Nahor with the sword. And Alma went and began to declare the word of God unto the church which was established in the valley of Gideon, according to the revelation of the truth of the word which had been spoken by his fathers, and according to the spirit of prophecy which was in him, according to the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who should come to redeem his people from their sins, and the holy order by which he was called. And thus it is written, Amen. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 Behold, my beloved brethren, seeing that I have been permitted to come unto you, therefore I attempt to dress you in my language, yea, by my own mouth, seeing that it is the first time that I have spoken unto you by the words of my mouth, I having been wholly confined to the judgment seat, having had much business that I could not come unto you, and even I could not have come now at this time were it not that the judgment seat hath been given to another, to reign in my stead, and that the Lord in much mercy hath granted that I should come unto you. And behold, I have come having great hopes and much desire that I should find that ye had humbled yourselves before God, and that ye had continued in the supplicating of his grace, and that I should find that ye were blameless before him, that I should find that ye were not in the awful dilemma that our brethren were in at Zarahemla. But blessed be the name of God, that he has given me to know ye, having given unto me the exceedingly great joy of knowing that they are established again in the way of his righteousness. And I trust, according to the Spirit of God which is in me, that I shall also have joy over you. Nevertheless, I do not desire that my joy over you should come by the cause of so much afflictions and sorrow which I have had for the brethren at Zarahemla. For behold, my joy cometh over them after wading through much affliction and sorrow. But behold, I trust that ye are not in a state of so much unbelief as were your brethren. I trust that ye are not lifted up in the pride of your hearts. Yea, I trust that ye have not seen your hearts upon riches and the vain things of the world. Yea, I trust that ye do not worship idols, but that ye do worship the true and living God, and that ye look forward for the remission of your sins, with an everlasting faith which is to come. For behold, I say unto you that there be many things to come, and behold, there is one thing which is of more importance than they all. For behold, the time is not far distant that the Redeemer liveth and cometh among his people. Behold, I do not say that he will come among us at the time of his dwelling in his mortal tabernacle. For behold, the Spirit hath not said unto me that this should be the case. Now as to this thing I do not know, but this much I do know, that the Lord God hath power to do all things which are according to his word. But behold, the Spirit hath said this much to me, saying, Cry unto this people, saying, Repent ye, and prepare the way of the Lord, and walk in his paths, which are straight. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the Son of God cometh upon the faith of the earth. And behold, he shall be born of Mary, at Jerusalem, which is in the land of our forefathers, she being a virgin, a precious and chosen vessel, who shall be overshadowed and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, and bring forth a son, yea, even the Son of God. And he shall go forth, suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind, and this that the word might be fulfilled which saith that he will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people. And he will take upon him death, that he may lose the bands of death which bind his people. He will take upon him their infirmities, that his bowels may be filled with mercy, according to the flesh, that he may know according to the flesh how to succor his people according to their infirmities. Now the Spirit knoweth all things. Nevertheless, the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh, 
that he might take upon him the sins of his people, that he might blot out their transgressions according to the power of his deliverance. And now, behold, this is the testimony which is in me. And now I say unto you that ye must repent and be born again. For the Spirit saith, If ye are not born again, ye cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may be washed from your sins, that ye may have faith unto the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, who is mighty to save and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Yea, I say unto you, Come and fear not, and lay aside every sin, which easily doth beset you, which doth bind you down to destruction. Yea, come and go forth, and show unto your God that ye are willing to repent of your sins, and enter into a covenant with him to keep his commandments, and witness it unto him this day by going into the waters of baptism. And whosoever doeth this, and keepeth the commandments of God from thenceforth, the same will remember that I say unto him, yea, he will remember that I have said unto him, he shall have eternal life, according to the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which testifieth in me. And now, my beloved brethren, do you believe these things? Behold, I say unto you, yea, I know that ye believe them. And the way that I know that ye believe them is by the manifestation of the Spirit which is in me. And now, because your face is strong concerning that, yea, concerning the things which I have spoken, great is my joy. For as I said unto you from the beginning, that I had much desire ye were not in the state of dilemma like your brethren, even so I have found that my desires have been gratified. For I perceive that ye are in the paths of righteousness. I perceive that ye are in the paths which lead to the kingdom of God. Yea, I perceive that ye are making his paths straight. I perceive that it has been made known unto you, by the testimony of his word, that he cannot walk in crooked paths, neither doth he vary from that which he has said. Neither hath he a shadow of turning from the right to the left, or from that which is right to that which is wrong. Therefore his course is one eternal round. And he doth not dwell in unholy temples. Neither can filthiness or anything which is unclean be received into the kingdom of God. Therefore I say unto you, The time shall come, yea, and it shall be at the last day, that he who is filthy shall remain in his filthiness. And now, my beloved brethren, I have said these things unto you that I might awaken you to a sense of your duty to God, that ye may walk blameless before him, that ye may walk after the holy order of God, after which ye have been received. And now I would that ye should be humble, and be submissive and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of patience and long suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God at all times asking for whatsoever things ye stand in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive. And see that ye have faith, hope, and charity, and then ye will always abound in good works. And may the Lord bless you, and keep your garments spotless, that ye may at last be brought to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the holy prophets who have been ever since the world began having your garments spotless even as their garments are spotless, in the kingdom of heaven to go no more out. And now, my beloved brethren, I have spoken these words unto you according to the Spirit which testifieth in me, and my soul does exceedingly rejoice, because of the exceeding diligence and heed which ye have given unto my word. And now, may the peace of God rest upon you, and upon your houses and lands, and upon your flocks and herds, and all that you possess, your women and your children, according to your faith and good works, from this time forth and forever. And thus I have spoken. Amen. End of chapter 7. End of Alma, chapters 4 through 7. Recording by David Stevenson. Alma chapters 8 through 10 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. 
The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 8 through 10. Alma, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that Alma returned from the land of Gideon, after having taught the people of Gideon many things which cannot be written, having established the order of the church according as he had before done in the land of Zarahemla. Yea, he returned to his own house at Zarahemla to rest himself from the labors which he had performed. And thus ended the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Alma departed from thence, and took his journey over into the land of Melech, on the west of the river Sidon, on the west by the borders of the wilderness. And he began to teach the people in the land of Melech according to the holy order of God by which he had been called. And he began to teach the people throughout all the land of Melech. And it came to pass that the people came to him throughout all the borders of the land which was by the wilderness side, and they were baptized throughout all the land, so that when he had finished his work at Melech, he departed thence, and travelled three days' journey on the north of the land of Melech, and he came to a city which was called Ammonihah. Now it was the custom of the people of Nephi to call their lands and their cities and their villages, yea, even all their small villages, after the name of him who first possessed them. And thus it was with the land of Ammonihah. And it came to pass that when Alma had come to the city of Ammonihah, he began to preach the word of God unto them. Now Satan had gotten great hold upon the hearts of the people of the city of Ammonihah, therefore they would not hearken unto the words of Alma. Nevertheless Alma labored much in the spirit, wrestling with God in mighty prayer, that he would pour out his spirit upon the people who were in the city that he would also grant that he might baptize them unto repentance. Nevertheless they hardened their hearts, saying unto him, Behold, we know that thou art Alma, and we know that thou art high priest over the church which thou hast established in many parts of the land according to your tradition, and we are not of thy church, and we do not believe in such foolish traditions. And now we know that because we are not of thy church, we know that thou hast no power over us, and thou hast delivered up the judgment seat unto Nephiha, therefore thou art not the chief judge over us. Now when the people had said this, and withstood all his words, and reviled him, and spit upon him, and caused that he should be cast out of their city, he departed thence, and took his journey towards the city which was called Aaron. And it came to pass that while he was journeying thither, being weighed down with sorrow, wading through much tribulation and anguish of soul, because of the wickedness of the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, it came to pass while Alma was thus weighed down with sorrow. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, saying, Blessed art thou, Alma, therefore lift up thy head and rejoice, for thou hast great cause to rejoice, for thou hast been faithful in keeping the commandments of God from the time which thou receivest thy first message from him, Behold, I am he that delivered it unto you. And behold, I am sent to command thee that thou return to the city of Ammonihah, and preach again unto the people of the city, yea, preach unto them, yea, say unto them, Except they repent, the Lord God will destroy them. For behold, they do study at this time that they may destroy the liberty of thy people, for thus saith the Lord, which is contrary to the statutes and judgments and commandments which he has given unto his people. Now it came to pass that after Alma had received his message from the angel of the Lord, he returned speedily to the land of Ammonihah, and he entered the city by another way, yea, by the way which is on the south of the city of Ammonihah. And as he entered the city, he was unhungered, and he said to a man, Will ye give to an humble servant of God something to eat? And the man said unto him, I am a Nephite, and I know that thou art a holy prophet of God. For thou art the man whom an angel said in a vision thou shalt receive. Therefore go with me into my house, and I will impart unto thee of my food, and I know that thou wilt be a blessing unto me and my house. And it came to pass that the man received him into his house, and the man was called Amulek. And he brought forth bread and meat, and set before Alma. And it came to pass that Alma ate bread and was filled. And he blessed Amulek and his house, and he gave thanks unto God. And after he had eaten and was filled, he said unto Amulek, I am Alma, 
and am the high priest over the church of God throughout the land. And behold, I have been called to preach the word of God among all this people, according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. And I was in this land, and they would not receive me, but they cast me out, and I was about to set my back towards this land forever. But behold, I have been commanded that I should turn again and prophesy unto this people, yea, and to testify against them concerning their iniquities. And now, Amulek, because thou hast fed me, and taken me in, thou art blessed. For I was an hungered, for I had fasted many days. And Alma tarried many days with Amulek, before he began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that the people did wax more gross in their iniquities. And the word came to Alma, saying, Go, and also say unto my servant Amulek, Go forth, and prophesy unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for thus saith the Lord, Except ye repent, I will visit this people in mine anger. Yea, and I will not turn my fierce anger away. And Alma went forth, and also Amulek, among the people, to declare the words of God unto them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they had power given unto them, insomuch that they could not be confined in dungeons. Neither was it possible that any man could slay them. Nevertheless, they did not exercise their power until they were bound in bands and cast into prison. Now this was done that the Lord might show forth his power in them. And it came to pass that they went forth and began to preach and to prophesy unto the people according to the spirit and power which the Lord had given them. Alma chapter 9 and again I, Alma, having been commanded of God that I should take Amulek and go forth and preach again unto this people, or the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, it came to pass, as I began to preach unto them, they began to contend with me, saying, Who art thou? Suppose ye that we shall believe the testimony of one man, although he should preach unto us that the earth should pass away? Now they understood not the words which they spake, for they knew not that the earth should pass away. And they said also, We will not believe thy words if thou shouldst prophesy that this great city should be destroyed in one day. Now they knew not that God could do such marvelous works, for they were a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people. And they said, Who is God that sendeth no more authority than one man among this people to declare unto them the truth of such great and marvelous things? And they stood forth to lay their hands on me, but behold, they did not. And I stood with boldness to declare unto them, yea, I did boldly testify unto them, saying, Behold, O ye wicked and perverse generation, how have ye forgotten the tradition of your fathers? Yea, how soon ye have forgotten the commandments of God. Do ye not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of God? Do ye not remember that they were all led by him through the wilderness? And have ye forgotten so soon how many times he delivered our fathers out of the hands of their enemies, and preserved them from being destroyed even by the hands of their own brethren? Yea, and if it had not been for his matchless power and his mercy and his long suffering towards us, we should unavoidably have been cut off from the face of the earth long before this period of time, and perhaps been consigned to a state of endless misery and woe. Behold, now I say unto you, that he commandeth you to repent, and except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. He has commanded you to repent, or he will utterly destroy you from off the face of the earth. Yea, he will visit you in his anger, and in his fierce anger he will not turn away. Behold, do you not remember the words which he spake unto Lehi, saying that, Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land? And again it is said that inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now I would that ye should remember that inasmuch as the Lamanites have not kept the commandments of God, they have been cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now we see that the word of the Lord has been verified in this thing, and the Lamanites have been cut off from his presence, from the beginning of their transgressions in the land. Nevertheless, I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than for you, if ye remain in your sins. Yea, and even more tolerable for them in this life than for you, except ye repent. For there are many promises which are extended to the Lamanites. For it is because of the traditions of their fathers that caused them to remain in their state of ignorance, 
Therefore the Lord will be merciful unto them and prolong their existence in the land. And at some period of time they will be brought to believe in his word, and to know of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers, and many of them will be saved. For the Lord will be merciful unto all who call on his name. But behold, I say unto you that if ye persist in your wickedness, that your days shall not be prolonged in the land, for the Lamanites shall be sent upon you. And if ye repent not, they shall come in a time when you know not, and ye shall be visited with utter destruction, and it shall be according to the fierce anger of the Lord. For he will not suffer you that ye shall live in your iniquities to destroy his people. I say unto you, Nay, he would rather suffer that the Lamanites might destroy all his people who are called the people of Nephi, if it were possible that they could fall into sins and transgressions, after having had so much light and so much knowledge given unto them of the Lord their God, yea, after having been such a highly favored people of the Lord, yea, after having been favored above every other nation, kindred, tongue, or people, after having had all things made known unto them according to their desires and their faith and prayers of that which has been and which is and which is to come, having been visited by the Spirit of God, having conversed with angels, and having been spoken unto by the voice of the Lord, and having the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation, and also many gifts, the gift of speaking with tongues, and the gift of preaching, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the gift of translation. Yea, and after having been delivered of God out of the land of Jerusalem by the hand of the Lord, having been saved from famine and from sickness, and all manner of diseases of every kind, and they having waxed strong in battle, that they might not be destroyed, having been brought out of bondage time after time, and having been kept and preserved until now. And they have been prospered until they are rich in all manner of things. And now behold, I say unto you, that if this people, who have received so many blessings from the hand of the Lord, should transgress contrary to the light and knowledge which they do have, I say unto you that if this be the case, that if they should fall into transgression, it would be far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. For behold, the promises of the Lord are extended to the Lamanites, but they are not unto you if ye transgress. For has not the Lord expressly promised and firmly decreed that if ye will rebel against him, that ye shall utterly be destroyed from off the face of the earth? And now, for this cause, that ye may not be destroyed, the Lord has sent his angel to visit many of his people declaring unto them that they must go forth and cry mightily unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. And not many days hence the Son of God shall come in his glory, and his glory shall be the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, equity, and truth, full of patience, mercy, and long-suffering, quick to hear the cries of his people and to answer their prayers. And behold, he cometh to redeem those who will be baptized unto repentance, through faith on his name. Therefore prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the time is at hand that all men shall reap a reward of their works, according to that which they have been. If they have been righteous, they shall reap the salvation of their souls, according to the power and deliverance of Jesus Christ. And if they have been evil, they shall reap the damnation of their souls, according to the power and captivation of the devil. Now behold, this is the voice of the angel crying unto the people. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye are my brethren, and ye ought to be beloved, and ye ought to bring forth works which are meet for repentance, seeing that your hearts have been grossly hardened against the word of God, and seeing that ye are a lost and a fallen people. Now it came to pass that when I, Alma, had spoken these words, behold, the people were wroth with me, because I said unto them that they were a hard-hearted, and a stiff-necked people, and also because I said unto them that they were a lost and a fallen people, they were angry with me, and sought to lay their hands upon me, that they might cast me into prison. But it came to pass that the Lord did not suffer them that they should take me at that time, and cast me into prison. And it came to pass that Amulek went and stood forth, and began to preach unto them also, and now the words of Amulek are not all written. Nevertheless, a part of his words are written in this book. Alma, chapter 10. Now these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, 
I am Amulek. I am the son of Gedona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Aminadi. And it was the same Aminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. And Aminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. And behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, and behold, I have many kindreds and friends, and I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. Nevertheless, after all this, I never have known much of the ways of the Lord, and his mysteries and marvelous power. I said I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his marvelous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. Nevertheless, I did harden my heart, for I was called many times, and I would not hear. Therefore I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore I went on rebelling against God and the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of this seventh month, which is in the tenth year of the reign of the judges. As I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord, yea, a holy man, who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people, and he is unhungered, and thou shalt receive him into thy house, and feed him, and he shall bless thee and thy house, and the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee and thy house. And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel, and returned towards my house. And as I was going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house, and behold, it was this same man who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. And the angel said unto me, he is a holy man. Wherefore I know he is a holy man, because it was said by an angel of God. And again I know that the things whereof he hath testified are true. For behold, I say unto you, that as the Lord liveth, even so has he sent his angel to make these things manifest unto me. And this he has done, while this Alma hath dwelt at my house. For behold, he hath blessed mine house, he hath blessed me and my women, and my children, and my father and my kinsfolk. Yea, even all my kindred hath he blessed, and the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. And now, when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing that there was more than one witness who testified of the things whereof they were accused, and also of the things which were to come according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. Nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them, that by their cunning devices they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison, according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against them. Now it was those men who sought to destroy them, who were lawyers, who were hired or appointed by the people to administer the law at their times of trials, or at the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. Now these lawyers were learned in all the arts and cunning of the people, and this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. And it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that thereby they might make him cross his words or contradict the words which he should speak. Now they knew not that Amulek could know of their designs, but it came to pass as they began to question him, he perceived their thoughts, and he said unto them, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying the foundation of the devil, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous, and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. Yea, well did Mosiah say, who was our last king, when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon, causing that this people should be governed by their own voices. Yea, well did he say that if the time should come, that the voice of this people should choose iniquity, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. And now I say unto you that well doth the Lord judge of your iniquities, 
well doth he cry unto this people by the voice of his angels repent ye repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand yea well doth he cry by the voice of his angels that i will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands yea and i say unto you that if it were not for the prayers of the righteous who are now in the land that ye would even now be visited with utter destruction yet it would not be by flood as were the people in the days of noah but it would be by famine and by pestilence and the sword but it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared now therefore if ye will cast out the righteous from among you then will not the lord stay his hand but in his fierce anger he will come out against you then ye shall be smitten by famine and by pestilence and by the sword and the time is soon at hand except ye repent and now it came to pass that the people were more angry with amulek and they cried out saying this man doth revile against our laws which are just and our wise lawyers whom we have selected but amulek stretched forth his hand and cried the mightier unto them saying o oh, ye wicked and perverse generation why hath satan got such great hold upon your hearts why will ye yield yourselves unto him that he may have power over you to blind your eyes that ye will not understand the words which are spoken according to their truth for behold have i testified against your law ye do not understand ye say that i have spoken against your law but i have not i have spoken in favor of your law to your condemnation and now behold i say unto you that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and your judges and now it came to pass that when amulek had spoken these words the people cried out against him saying now we know that this man is a child of the devil for he hath lied unto us for he hath spoken against our law and now he says that he has not spoken against it and again he has reviled against our lawyers and our judges and it came to pass that the lawyers put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him and there was one among them whose name was zezrom now he was the foremost to accuse amulek and alma he being one of the most expert among them having much business to do among the people now the object of these lawyers was to get gain and they got gain according to their employ end of alma chapters 8 through 10 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 11 to 13 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 11 to 13. Chapter 11. Now it was in the law of Mosiah that every man who was a judge of the law, or those who were appointed to be judges, should receive wages according to the time which they labored to judge those who were brought before them to be judged. Now if a man owed another, and he would not pay that which he did owe, he was complained of to the judge, and the judge executed authority, and sent forth officers that the man should be brought before him, and he judged the man according to the law and the evidences which were brought against him, and thus the man was compelled to pay that which he owed, or to be stripped, or be cast out from among the people, as a thief and a robber. And the judge received for his wages, according to his time, a senine of gold for a day, or a senum of silver, which is equal to a senine of gold, and this is according to the law which was given. Now these are the names of the different pieces of their gold and of their silver, according to their value, and the names are given by the Nephites, for they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem, neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews. But they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and circumstances of the people in every generation until the reign of the judges 
they having been established by King Mosiah. Now the reckoning is thus. A senine of gold, and a sian of gold, a shum of gold, and a limna of gold, a senum of silver, an amnor of silver, an ezrum of silver, and an anti of silver. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, and either for a measure of barley, and also for a measure of every kind of grain. Now the amount of a sian of gold was twice the value of a senine, and a shum of gold was twice the value of a sian, and a limna of gold was the value of them all, and an amnor of silver was as great as two senums, and an ezrum of silver was as great as four senums, and an anti was as great as them all. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. A shiblon is half of a senum, therefore a shiblon for half a measure of barley. And a shiblum is half of a shiblum, and a leah is the half of a shiblum. Now this is their number according to their reckoning. Now an antion of gold is equal to three shiblons. Now it was for the sole purpose to get gain, because they received their wages according to their employ. Therefore they did stir up the people to riotings, and all manner of disturbances and wickedness, that they might have more employ, that they might get money according to the suits which were brought before them. Therefore they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. And this Zeezrom began to question Amulek, saying, Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you? Now Zeezrom was a man who was expert in the devices of the devil, that he might destroy that which was good. Therefore he said unto Amulek, Will ye answer the questions which I shall put to you? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, if it be according to the Spirit of the Lord which is in me, for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. And Zeezrom said unto him, Behold, here are six antis of silver, and all these will I give thee if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. Now Amulek said, O thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? Believest thou that there is no God? I say unto you, Nay, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. And now thou hast lied before God unto me. Thou saidest unto me, Behold these six antis, which are of great worth, I will give unto thee when thou hadst in thy heart to retain them from me, and it was only thy desire that I should deny the true and living God that thou mightest have cause to destroy me. And now behold, for this great evil thou shalt have thy reward. And Zeezrom said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God? And Amulek said, Yea, there is a true and living God. Now Zeezrom said, Is there more than one God? And he answered, No. Now Zeezrom said unto him again, How knowest thou these things? And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. And Zeezrom said again, Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? And he said unto him, Yea. And Zeezrom said again, Shall he save his people in their sins? And Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you, He shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. Now Zeezrom said unto the people, See that ye remember these things, for he said there is but one God, yet he saith that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people as though he had authority to command God. 
Now Amulek saith again unto him, Behold, thou hast lied, for thou sayest that I spake as though I had authority to command God, because I said he shall not save his people in their sins. And I say unto you again, that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word, and he has said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore how can ye be saved, except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore ye cannot be saved in your sins. Now Zeezrom saith again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth, and all things which in them are. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. Therefore the wicked remain as though there had been no redemption made, except it be the loosing of the bands of death. For behold, the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead, and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Now there is a death which is called a temporal death, and the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. Now this restoration shall come to all both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not be so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but everything shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body, and shall be brought and be arraigned before the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God, to be judged according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immortal body, that is, from death even from the first death unto life, that they can die no more, their spirits uniting with their bodies, never to be divided. Thus the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. Now when Amulek had finished these words, the people began again to be astonished, and also Zeezrom began to tremble. And thus ended the words of Amulek, or this is all that I have written. Chapter 12 now Alma, seeing that the words of Amulek silenced Zeezrom, for he beheld that Amulek had caught him in his lying and deceiving to destroy him, and seeing that he began to tremble under a consciousness of his guilt, he opened his mouth and began to speak unto him, and to establish the words of Amulek, and to explain things beyond, or to unfold the scriptures beyond that which Amulek had done. Now the words that Alma spoke unto Zeezrom were heard by the people round about, for the multitude was great, and he spake on this wise. Now Zeezrom, seeing that thou hast been taken in thy lying and craftiness, for thou hast not lied unto men only, but thou hast lied unto God, for behold, he knows all thy thoughts, and thou seest that thy thoughts are made known unto us by his Spirit. And thou seest that we know that thy plan was a very subtle plan, as the subtlety of the devil, for to lie and to deceive this people, that thou mightest set them against us, to revile us and to cast us out. Now this was a plan of thine adversary, 
and he hath exercised his power in thee. Now I would say that ye should remember that what I say unto thee I say unto all. And behold, I say unto you all that this was a snare of the adversary, which he has laid to catch this people, that he might bring you into subjection unto him, that he might encircle you about with his chains, that he might chain you down to everlasting destruction, according to the power of his captivity. Now when Alma had spoken these words, Zeezrom began to tremble more exceedingly, for he was convinced more and more of the power of God, and he was convinced that Alma and Amulek had a knowledge of him, for he was convinced that they knew the thoughts and intents of his heart. For power was given unto them that they might know these things according to the spirit of prophecy. And Zeezrom began to inquire of them more diligently, that he might know more concerning the kingdom of God. And he said unto Alma, What does this mean which Amulek has spoken concerning the resurrection of the dead, that all shall rise from the dead, both the just and the unjust, and are brought to stand before God to be judged according to their works? And now Alma began to expound these things unto him, saying, It is given unto many to know the mysteries of God, Nevertheless they are laid under a strict command that they shall not impart only according to the portion of his word which he doth grant unto the children of men, according to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. And therefore he that will harden his heart, the same receiveth the lesser portion of the word. And he that will not harden his heart, to him is given the greater portion of the word until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God, until he know them in full. And they that will harden their hearts, to them is given the lesser portion of the word, until they know nothing concerning his mysteries, and then they are taken captive by the devil, and led by his will down to destruction. Now this is what is meant by the chains of hell. An Amulek, has spoken plainly concerning death, and being raised from this mortality to a state of immortality, and being brought before the bar of God, to be judged according to our works. Then if our hearts have been hardened, yea, if we have hardened our hearts against the word, insomuch that it has not been found in us, then will our state be awful, for then we shall be condemned. For our words will condemn us, yea, all our works will condemn us. We shall not be found spotless, and our thoughts will also condemn us. And in this awful state we shall not dare to look up to our God. And we would fain be glad if we could command the rocks and the mountains to fall upon us, to hide us from his presence. But this cannot be. We must come forth and stand before him in his glory and in his power and in his might majesty and dominion and acknowledge to our everlasting shame that all his judgments are just that he is just in all his works and that he is merciful unto the children of men and that he has all power to save every man that believeth on his name and bringeth forth fruit meet for repentance and now behold i say unto you then cometh a death, even a second death, which is a spiritual death. Then is a time that whosoever dieth in his sins, as to a temporal death, shall also die a spiritual death, yea, he shall die as to things pertaining unto righteousness. Then is the time when their torments shall be as a lake of fire and brimstone, whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever. And then is the time that they shall be chained down to an everlasting destruction, according to the power and captivity of Satan, he having subjected them according to his will. Then, I say unto you, they shall be as though they had been no redemption made, for they cannot be redeemed according to God's justice, and they cannot die, seeing there is no more corruption. 
Now it came to pass that when Alma had made an end of speaking these words, the people began to be more astonished. But there was one, Antiana, who was a chief ruler among them, came forth and said unto him, What is this that thou hast said, that man should rise from the dead and be changed from this mortal to an immortal state, that the soul can never die? What does the scripture mean, which saith that God placed cherubim and a flaming sword on the east of the garden of Eden, lest our first parents should enter and partake of the fruit of the tree of life and live for ever? And thus we see that there was no possible chance that they should live for ever. Now Alma said unto him, This is the thing which I was about to explain. Now we see that Adam did fall by the partaking of the forbidden fruit, according to the word of God, and thus we see that by his fall all mankind became a lost and fallen people. And now behold, I say unto you that if it had been possible for Adam to have partaken of the fruit of the tree of life at that time, there would have been no death, and the word would have been void, making God a liar, for he said, If thou eat, thou shalt surely die. And we see that death comes upon mankind, yea, the death which has been spoken of by Amulek, which is the temporal death. Nevertheless, there was a space granted unto man in which he might repent. Therefore this life became a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God, a time to prepare for that endless state which has been spoken of by us, which is after the resurrection of the dead. Now if it had not been for the plan of redemption, which was laid from the foundation of the world, there could have been no resurrection of the dead. But there was a plan of redemption laid, which shall bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, of which has been spoken. And now behold, if it were possible that our first parents could have gone forth and partaken of the tree of life, they would have been for ever miserable having no preparatory state, and thus the plan of redemption would have been frustrated, and the word of God would have been void, taking none effect. But, behold, it was not so, but it was appointed unto men that they must die, and after death they must come to judgment, even that same judgment of which we have spoken, which is the end. And after God had appointed that these things should come unto man, behold, then he saw that it was expedient that man should know concerning the things whereof he had appointed unto them. Therefore he sent angels to converse with them, who caused men to behold of his glory. And they began from that time forth to call on his name. Therefore God conversed with men, and made known unto them the plan of redemption which had been prepared from the foundation of the world, and this he made known unto them according to their faith and repentance and their holy works. Wherefore he gave commandments unto men, they having first transgressed the first commandments as to things which were temporal, and becoming as gods knowing good from evil, placing themselves in a state to act, or being placed in a state to act according to their wills and pleasures, whether to do evil or to do good. Therefore God gave unto them commandments, after having made known unto them the plan of redemption, that they should not do evil, the penalty thereof being a second death, which was an everlasting death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness. For on such the plan of redemption could have no power, for the works of justice could not be destroyed according to the supreme goodness of God. But God did call on men in the name of his Son, this being the plan of redemption which was laid, saying, If ye will repent, and harden not your hearts, then I will have mercy upon you through mine only begotten Son. Therefore whoever repenteth, and hardeneth not his heart, he shall have claim on mercy through mine only begotten Son, unto a remission of his sins, and these shall enter into my rest. And whosoever will harden his heart, and will do iniquity, behold, I swear in my wrath that he shall not enter into my rest. 
And now, my brethren, behold, I say unto you, that if ye will harden your hearts, ye shall not enter into the rest of the Lord. Therefore your iniquity provoketh him, that he sendeth down his wrath upon you, as in the first provocation. Yea, according to his word, in the last provocation, as well as the first, to the everlasting destruction of your souls. Therefore, according to his word, unto the last death, as well as the first. And now, my brethren, seeing ye know these things, and that they are true, let us repent, and harden not our hearts, that we provoke not the Lord our God to pull down his wrath upon us in these his second commandments, which he has given unto us. But let us enter into the rest of God, which is prepared according to his word. Chapter 13 and again, my brethren, I would cite your minds forward to the time when the Lord God gave these commandments unto his children. And I would that ye should remember that the Lord God ordained priests after his holy order, which was after the order of his Son, to teach these things unto people. And those priests were ordained after the order of his Son, in a manner that thereby the people might know in what manner to look forward to his son for redemption. And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world according to the foreknowledge of God, on account of their exceeding faith and good works. In the first place, being left to choose good or evil, therefore they having chosen good, and exercising exceedingly great faith, are called with a holy calling, yea, with that holy calling which was prepared with and according to a preparatory redemption for such. And thus they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and blindness of their minds, while if it had not been given for this they might have had as great privilege as their brethren. Or, in fine, in the first place, they were on the same standing with their brethren. Thus this holy calling, being prepared from the foundation of the world, for such as would not harden their hearts, being in and through the atonement of the only begotten Son who was prepared, and thus being called by this holy calling, and ordained unto the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to teach his commandments unto the children of men, that they also might enter into his rest. This high priesthood, being after the order of his Son, which order was from the foundation of the world, or in other words, being without beginning of days or end of years, being prepared from eternity to all eternity, according to his foreknowledge of all things. Now they were ordained after this manner, being called with a holy calling, and ordained with a holy ordinance, and taking upon them the high priesthood of the holy order, which calling and ordinance and high priesthood is without beginning or end. Thus they became high priests for ever, after the order of the Son, the only begotten of the Father, who is without beginning of days or end of years, who is full of grace, equity, and truth. And thus it is. Amen. Now, as I said concerning the holy order, or this high priesthood, there were many who were ordained and became high priests of God, and it was on account of their exceeding faith and repentance, and their righteousness before God, they choosing to repent and work righteousness, rather than to perish. Therefore they were called after this holy order, and were sanctified, and their garments were washed white through the blood of the Lamb. Now they, after being sanctified by the Holy Ghost, having their garments made white, being pure and spotless before God, they could not look upon sin, save it were with abhorrence. And there were many, exceedingly great many, who were made pure, and entered into the rest of the Lord their God. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should humble yourselves before God, and bring forth fruit meet for repentance, that ye may also enter into that rest. Yea, humble yourselves, even as the people in the days of Melchizedek, 
who was also a high priest after this same order which I have spoken, who also took upon him the high priesthood forever. And it was this same Melchizedek to whom Abraham paid tithes. Yea, even our father Abraham paid tithes of one-tenth part of all he possessed. Now these ordinances were given after this manner, that thereby the people might look forward on the Son of God, it being a type of his order, or it being his order, and this, that they might look forward to him for a remission of their sins, that they might enter into the rest of the Lord. Now this Melchizedek was a king over the land of Salem, and his people had waxed strong in iniquity and abomination, yea, they had all gone astray, they were full of all manner of wickedness. But Melchizedek, having exercised mighty faith, and received the office of the high priesthood according to the holy order of God, did preach repentance unto his people, and behold, they did repent, and Melchizedek did establish peace in the land in his days therefore he was called the prince of peace for he was the king of salem and he did reign under his father now there were many before him and also there were many afterwards but none were greater therefore of him they have more particularly made mention now i need to rehearse the matter what i have said may suffice behold the scriptures are before you if ye will rest them, it shall be to your own destruction. And now it came to pass, that when Alma had said these words unto them, he stretched forth his hand unto them, and cried with a mighty voice, saying, Now is the time to repent, for the day of salvation draweth nigh. Yea, and the voice of the Lord by the mouth of angels doth declare it unto all nations, yea doth declare it that they may have glad tidings of great joy yea and he doth sound these glad tidings among all his people yea even to them that are scattered abroad upon the face of the earth wherefore they have come unto us and they are made known unto us in plain terms that we may understand that we cannot err and this because of our being wanderers in a strange land Therefore we are thus highly favored, for we have these glad tidings declared unto us in all parts of our vineyard. For behold, angels are declaring it unto many at this time in our land, and this is for the purpose of preparing the hearts of the children of men to receive his word at the time of his coming in his glory. And now we only wait to hear the joyful news declared unto us by the mouth of angels of his coming. For the time cometh, and we know not how soon. Would to God that it might be in my day, but let it be sooner or later, in it I will rejoice. And it shall be made known unto just and holy men by the mouth of angels at the time of his coming, that the words of our fathers may be fulfilled, according to that which they have spoken concerning him, which was according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. And now, my brethren, I wish from the inmost part of my heart, yea, with great anxiety even unto pain, that ye would hearken unto my words, and cast off your sins, and not procrastinate the day of your repentance, but that ye would humble yourselves before the Lord, and call on his holy name, and watch and pray continually, that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear, and thus be led by the Holy Spirit, becoming humble, meek, submissive, patient, full of love, and all long-suffering. Having faith on the Lord, having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life, having the love of God always in your hearts, that ye may be lifted up at the last day, and enter into his rest. And may God grant unto you repentance, that ye may not bring down his wrath upon you, that ye may not be bound down by the chains of hell, that ye may not suffer the second death. And Alma spoke many more words unto the people, which are not written in this book. End of Alma, chapters 11 to 13. Recording by Kevin Davidson, www.blogordie.com.
Alma, chapters 14 through 17 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 14 through 17. Chapter 14. And it came to pass, after he had made an end of speaking unto the people, many of them did believe on his words, and began to repent, and to search the Scriptures. But the more part of them were desirous that they might destroy Alma and Amulek, for they were angry with Alma because of the plainness of his words unto Zeezrom. And they also said that Amulek had lied unto them, and had reviled against their law, and also against their lawyers and judges. And they were also angry with Alma and Amulek, and because they had testified so plainly against their wickedness, they sought to put them away privily. But it came to pass that they did not. But they took them, and bound them with strong cords, and took them before the chief judge of the land. And the people went forth and witnessed against them, testifying that they had reviled against the law, and their lawyers, and judges of the land, and also of all the people that were in the land, and also testified that there was but one God, and that he should send his Son among the people, but he should not save them. And many such things did the people testify against Alma and Amulek. Now this was done before the chief judge of the land. And it came to pass that Zeezrom was astonished at the words which had been spoken, and he also knew concerning the blindness of the minds which he had caused among the people by his lying words, and his soul began to be harrowed up under a consciousness of his own guilt, yea, he began to be encircled about by the pains of hell. And it came to pass that he began to cry unto the people, saying, Behold, I am guilty and these men are spotless before God. And he began to plead for them from that time forth. But they reviled him, saying, Art thou also possessed with the devil? And they spit upon him, and cast him out from among them, and also all those who believed in the words which had been spoken by Alma and Amulek. And they cast them out, and sent men to cast stones at them. And they brought their wives and children together, and whosoever believed or had been taught to believe in the word of God, they caused that they should be cast into the fire, and they also brought forth their records, which contained the holy scriptures, and cast them into the fire also, that they might be burned and destroyed by fire. And it came to pass that they took Alma and Amulek, and carried them forth to the place of martyrdom, that they might witness the destruction of those who were consumed by fire. And when Amulek saw the pains of the women and children who were consuming in the fire, he also was pained, and he said unto Alma, How can we witness this awful scene? Therefore let us stretch forth our hands, and exercise the power of God which is in us, and save them from the flames. But Alma said unto him, The Spirit constraineth me, that I must not stretch forth mine hand, for behold, the Lord receiveth them up unto himself in glory, and he doth suffer that they may do this thing, or that the people may do this thing unto them, according to the hardness of their hearts, that the judgments which he shall exercise upon them in his wrath may be just, and the blood of the innocent shall stand as a witness against them, yea, and cry mightily against them at the last day. Now Amulek said to Alma, Behold, perhaps they will burn us also. And Alma said, Be it according to the will of the Lord, but behold, our work is not finished, therefore they burn us not. Now it came to pass that when the bodies of those who had been cast into the fire were consumed, and also the records which were cast in with them, the chief judge of the land came and stood before Alma and Amulek. As they were bound, and he smote them with his hand upon their cheeks, and said unto them, After what ye have seen, ye will preach again unto this people, that they shall be cast into a lake of fire and brimstone? Behold, ye see, 
that she had not the power to save those who had been cast into the fire. Neither has God saved them because they were of thy faith. And the judge smote them again upon their cheeks, and asked, What say ye for yourselves? Now this judge was after the order and faith of Nehor, who slew Gideon. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek answered him nothing, and he smote them again, and delivered them to the officers to be cast into prison. And when they had been cast into prison three days, there came many lawyers and judges and priests and teachers, who were of the profession of Nehor, and they came into the prison to see them, and they questioned them about many words, but they answered them nothing. And it came to pass that the judge stood before them, and said, Why do ye not answer the words of this people? Know ye not that I have power to deliver you up unto the flames? And he commanded them to speak, but they answered nothing. And it came to pass that they departed and went their ways, but came again on the morrow, and the judge also smote them again on their cheeks. And many came forth also, and smote them, saying, Will ye stand again, and judge this people, and condemn our law? If ye have such great power, why do ye not deliver yourselves? And many such things did they say unto them, gnashing their teeth upon them, and spitting upon them, and saying, How shall we look when we are damned? And many such things, yea, all manner of such things, did they say unto them, and thus did they mock them for many days. And they did withhold food from them, that they might hunger, and water that they might thirst. And they also did take from them their clothes, that they were naked. And thus they were bound with strong cords, and confined in prison. And it came to pass, after they had suffered thus for many days, and it was on the twelfth day in the tenth month, in the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that the chief judge over the land of Ammonihah, and many of their teachers and their lawyers, went into the prison where Alma and Amulek were bound with cords. And the chief judge stood before them, and smote them again, and said unto them, If ye have the power of God, deliver yourselves from these bands, and then we will believe that the Lord will destroy this people according to your words. And it came to pass that they all went forth and smote them, saying the same words, even until the last. And when the last had spoken unto them, the power of God was upon Alma and Amulek, and they rose and stood upon their feet. And Alma cried, saying, How long shall we suffer these great afflictions, O Lord? O Lord, give us strength according to our faith, which is in Christ, even unto deliverance. And they broke the cords with which they were bound. And when the people saw this, they began to flee, for the fear of destruction had come upon them. And it came to pass that so great was their fear that they fell to the earth, and did not obtain the outer door of the prison. And the earth shook mightily, and the walls of the prison were rent in twain, so that they fell to the earth, and the chief judge, and the lawyers, and the priests, and teachers, who smote upon Alma and Amulek, were slain by the fall thereof. And Alma and Amulek came forth out of the prison, and they were not hurt. For the Lord had granted unto them power, according to their faith, which was in Christ. And they straightway came forth out of the prison, and they were loosed from their bands, and the prison had fallen to the earth, and every soul within the walls thereof, save it were Alma and Amulek, was slain, and they straightway came forth into the city. Now the people, having heard a great noise, came running together by multitudes to know the cause of it. And when they saw Alma and Amulek coming forth out of the prison, and all the walls thereof had fallen to the earth, they were struck with great fear, and fled from the presence of Alma and Amulek, even as a goat fleeth with her young from two lions. And thus they did flee from the presence of Alma and Amulek. Chapter 15 And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek were commanded to depart out of the city, and they departed and came out even into the land of Sidom. And behold, there they found all the people who had departed out of the land of Ammonihah, 
who had been cast out and stoned because they believed in the words of Alma. And they related unto them all that had happened unto their wives and children, and also concerning themselves, and of their power of deliverance. And also Zeezrom lay sick at Sidom, with a burning fever, which was caused by the great tribulations of his mind, on account of his wickedness, for he supposed that Alma and Amulek were no more, and he supposed that they had been slain because of his iniquity. And this great sin, and his many other sins, did harrow upon his mind, until it did become exceedingly sore, having no deliverance. Therefore he began to be scorched with a burning heat. Now when he heard that Alma and Amulek were in the land of Sidom, his heart began to take courage, and he sent a message immediately unto them, desiring them to come unto him. And it came to pass that they went immediately, obeying the message which he had sent unto them, and they went in under the house of Zeezrom, and they found him upon his bed, sick, being very low with a burning fever, and his mind also was exceedingly sore because of his iniquities. And when he saw them, he stretched forth his hand and besought them that they would heal him. And it came to pass that Alma said unto him, taking him by the hand, Believest thou in the power of Christ unto salvation? And he answered and said, Yea, I believe all the words that thou hast taught. And Alma said, If thou believest in the redemption of Christ, thou canst be healed. And he said, Yea, I believe according to thy words. And then Alma cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord our God, have mercy on this man, and heal him according to his faith which is in Christ. And when Alma had said these words, Zeezrom leaped upon his feet and began to walk, and this was done to the great astonishment of all the people, and the knowledge of this went forth throughout all the land of Sidom. And Alma baptized Zeezrom unto the Lord, and he began from that time forth to preach unto the people. And Alma established a church in the land of Sidom, and consecrated priests and teachers in the land to baptize unto the Lord whosoever were desirous to be baptized. And it came to pass that there were many, for they did flock in from all the region around about Sidom, and were baptized. But as to the people that were in the land of Ammonihah, they yet remained a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people, and they repented not of their sins, ascribing all the power of Alma and Amulek to the devil. For they were of the profession of Nehor, and did not believe in the repentance of their sins. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek, Amulek having forsaken all his gold and silver, and his precious things which were in the land of Ammonihah, for the word of God, he being rejected by those who were once his friends, and also by his father and his kindred, Therefore, after Alma, having established the church at Sidom, seeing a great check, yea, seeing that the people were checked as to the pride of their hearts, and began to humble themselves before God, and began to assemble themselves together at their sanctuaries to worship God before the altar, watching and praying continually that they might be delivered from Satan, and from death, and from destruction. Now, as I said, Alma, having seen all these things, therefore he took Amulek, and came over to the land of Zarahemla, and took him to his own house, and did administer to him in his tribulations, and strengthened him in the Lord. And thus ended the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 16 And it came to pass in the eleventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, on the fifth day of the second month, there having been much peace in the land of Zarahemla, there having been no wars or contentions for a certain number of years, even until the fifth day of the second month, in the eleventh year, there was a cry of war heard throughout the land. For behold, the armies of the Lamanites had come in upon the wilderness side, into the borders of the land, even into the city of Ammonihah, and began to slay the people, and destroy the cities. And now it came to pass, before the Nephites could raise a sufficient army to drive them out of the land, 
they had destroyed the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, and also some around the borders of Noah, and taken others captive into the wilderness. Now it came to pass that the Nephites were desirous to obtain those who had been carried away captive into the wilderness. Therefore he that had been appointed the chief captain over the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Zoram, and he had two sons, Lehi and Aha. Now Zoram and his two sons, knowing that Alma was high priest over the church, and having heard that he had the spirit of prophecy, therefore they went unto him, and desired of him to know whither the Lord would that they should go into the wilderness in search of their brethren, who had been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Alma inquired of the Lord concerning the matter, and Alma returned and said unto them, Behold, the Lamanites will cross the river Sidon in the south wilderness, away up beyond the borders of the land of Manti. And behold, there ye shall meet them on the east of the river Sidon, and there the Lord will deliver unto thee thy brethren who have been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Zoram and his sons crossed over the river Sidon with their armies and marched away beyond the borders of Manti into the south wilderness which was on the east side of the river Sidon. And they came upon the armies of the Lamanites, and the Lamanites were scattered and driven into the wilderness, and they took their brethren who had been taken captive by the Lamanites, and there was not a soul of them had been lost that were taken captive, and they were brought by their brethren to possess their own lands. And thus ended the eleventh year of the judges, the Lamanites, having been driven out of the land, and the people of Ammonihah, were destroyed, yea, every living soul of the Ammonihahites was destroyed, and also their great city, which they said God could not destroy because of its greatness. But, behold, in one day it was left desolate, and the carcasses were mangled by dogs and wild beasts of the wilderness. Nevertheless, after many days their dead bodies were heaped up upon the face of the earth, and they were covered with a shallow covering. And now so great was the scent thereof, that the people did not go in to possess the land of Ammonihah for many years. And it was called Desolation of Nehors, for they were of the profession of Nehor who were slain, and their lands remained desolate. And the Lamanites did not come again to war against the Nephites until the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus for three years did the people of Nephi have continual peace in all the land. And Alma and Amulek went forth preaching repentance to the people in their temples, and in their sanctuaries, and also in their synagogues, which were built after the manner of the Jews. And as many of them would hear their words, Unto them they did impart the word of God, without any respect of persons, continually. And thus did Alma and Amulek go forth, and also many more who had been chosen for the work, to preach the word throughout the land. And the establishment of the church became general throughout the land, in all the region round about, among all the peoples of the Nephites. And there was no inequity among them, the Lord did pour out His Spirit on all the face of the land to prepare the minds of the children of men, or to prepare their hearts to receive the word which should be taught among them at the time of His coming. That they might not be hardened against the word, that they might not be unbelieving and go on to destruction, but that they might receive the word with joy, and as a branch be grafted into the true vine, that they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. Now those priests who did go forth among the people did preach against all lyings and deceivings and envyings and strifes and malice and revilings and stealing, robbing, plundering, murdering, committing adultery, and all manner of lasciviousness, crying that these things ought not so to be, holding forth things which must shortly come yea, holding forth the coming of the Son of God, his sufferings and death, and also the resurrection of the dead. And many of the people did inquire concerning the place where the Son of God should come, and they were taught that he would appear unto them after his resurrection, 
and this the people did hear with great joy and gladness. And now, after the church had been established throughout all the land, having got the victory over the devil, and the word of God being preached in its purity in all the land, and the Lord pouring out his blessings upon the people, thus ended the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 17 And now it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward away to the land of Manti, behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah, journeying towards the land of Zarahemla. Now these sons of Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him. Therefore Alma did rejoice exceedingly to see his brethren. And what added more to his joy, they were still his brethren in the Lord. Yea, and they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth, for they were men of a sound understanding, and they had searched the Scriptures diligently, that they might know the word of God. But this is not all. They had given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore they had the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation. And when they taught, they taught with power and authority of God. And they had been teaching the word of God for the space of fourteen years among the Lamanites, having had much success in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, by the power of their words, many were brought before the altar of God, to call on his name and confess their sins before him. Now these are the circumstances which attended them in their journeyings, for they had many afflictions, they did suffer much, both in body and in mind, such as hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. Now these were their journeyings. Having taken leave of their father Mosiah, in the first year of the judges, having refused the kingdom which their father was desirous to confer upon them, and also this was the minds of the people. Nevertheless, they departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and took their swords, and their spears, and their bows, and their arrows, and their slings, and this they did, that they might provide food for themselves while in the wilderness. And thus they departed into the wilderness with their numbers, which they had selected, to go up to the land of Nephi, to preach the word of God unto the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they journeyed many days in the wilderness, and they fasted much and prayed much that the Lord would grant unto them a portion of his Spirit, to go with them and abide with them, that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, if it were possible, their brethren, the Lamanites, to the knowledge of the truth, to the knowledge of the baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. And it came to pass that the Lord did visit them with his Spirit, and said unto them, Be comforted. And they were comforted. And the Lord said unto them also, Go forth among the Lamanites, thy brethren, and establish my word. Yet ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions, that ye may show forth good examples unto them in me, and I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. And it came to pass that the hearts of the sons of Mosiah, and also those who were with them, took courage to go forth unto the Lamanites, and declare unto them the word of God. And it came to pass, when they had arrived in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, that they separated themselves, and departed from one another, trusting in the Lord that they should meet again at the close of their harvest, for they supposed that great was the work which they had undertaken. And assuredly it was great, for they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and a hardened and a ferocious people, a people who delighted in murdering the Nephites, and robbing and plundering them, and their hearts were set upon riches, upon gold and silver, and precious stones, yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering, that they might not labor for them with their own hands. Thus they were a very indolent people, many of whom did worship idols, and the curse of God had fallen upon them because of the traditions of their fathers, notwithstanding the promises of the Lord were extended unto them on the conditions of repentance. 
Therefore this was the cause for which the sons of Mosiah had undertaken the work, that perhaps they might bring them unto repentance, that perhaps they might bring them to know the plan of redemption. Therefore they separated themselves from one another, and went forth among them, every man alone, according to the word and power of God which was given unto him. Now Ammon, being the chief among them, or rather he did administer unto them, and he departed from them, after having blessed them according to their several stations, having imparted the word of God unto them, or administered unto them before his departure, and thus they took their several journeys throughout the land. And Ammon went to the land of Ishmael, the land being called after the sons of Ishmael, who also became Lamanites. And as Ammon entered the land of Ishmael, the Lamanites took him and bound him, as was their custom to bind all the Nephites who fell into their hands, and carry them before the king, and thus it was left to the pleasure of the king to slay them, or to retain them in captivity, or to cast them into prison, or to cast them out of his land, according to his will and pleasure. And thus Ammon was carried before the king, who was over the land of Ishmael, and his name was Lamoni, and he was a descendant of Ishmael. And the king inquired of Ammon if it were his desire to dwell in the land among the Lamanites, or among his people. And Ammon said unto him, Yea, I desire to dwell among this people for a time, yea, and perhaps until the day I die. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon, and caused that his band should be loosed, and he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. But Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. Therefore Ammon became the servant to King Lamoni. And it came to pass that he was set among other servants to watch the flocks of Lamoni, according to the custom of the Lamanites. And after he had been in the service of the king three days, as he was with the Lamanitish servants, going forth with their flocks to the place of water, which was called the water of Sebus, and all the Lamanites drive their flocks hither, that they may have water. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to his place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites, who had been with their flocks to water, stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king, and they scattered them insomuch that they fled many ways. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us, as he has our brethren, because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. Now they wept because of the fear of being slain. Now when Ammon saw this, his heart was swollen within him with joy, for said he, I will show forth my power unto these my fellow servants, or the power which is in me in restoring these flocks unto the king, that I may win the hearts of these my fellow servants, that I may lead them to believe in my words. And now these were the thoughts of Ammon, when he saw the afflictions of those whom he termed to be his brethren. And it came to pass that he flattered them by his words, saying, My brethren, be of good cheer, let us go in search of the flocks, and we will gather them together, and bring them back to the place of water, and thus we will preserve the flocks under the king, and he will not slay us. And it came to pass that they went in search of the flocks, and they did follow Ammon, And they rushed forth with much swiftness, and did head the flocks of the king, and did gather them together again to the place of water. And those men again stood to scatter their flocks. But Ammon said unto his brethren, Encircle the flocks round about, that they flee not. And I go and contend with these men who do scatter our flocks. Therefore they did as Ammon commanded them, and he went forth and stood to contend with those who stood by the waters of Sebus, and they were in number not few. Therefore they did not fear Ammon, for they supposed that one of their men could slay him according to their pleasure. For they knew not that the Lord had promised Mosiah that he would deliver his sons out of their hands. Neither did they know anything concerning the Lord. Therefore they delighted in the destruction of their brethren, and for this cause they stood to scatter the flocks of the king. But Ammon stood forth and began to cast stones at them with his sling. 
yea with mighty power did he sling stones amongst them and thus he slew a certain number of them insomuch that they began to be astonished at his power nevertheless they were angry because of the slain of their brethren and they were determined that he should fall therefore seeing that they could not hit him with their stones they came forth with their clubs to slay him but behold every man that lifted his club to smite ammon he smote off their arms with his sword for he did withstand their blows by smiting their arms with the edge of his sword insomuch that they began to be astonished and began to flee before him yea and they were not few in number and he caused them to flee by the strength of his arm now six of them had fallen by the sling but he slew none save it were their leader with his sword and he smote off as many of their arms as were lifted against him and they were not a few and when he had driven them afar off he returned and they watered their flocks and returned them to the pasture of the king and then went in unto the king bearing the arms which had been smitten off by the sword of ammon of those who sought to slay him and they were carried in unto the king for a testimony of the things which they had done end of alma chapters 14 through 17 recording by kevin davidson www.blogordie.com Alma chapters 18 through 20 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapters 18 through 20. Alma chapter 18. And it came to pass that King Lamoni caused that his servants should stand forth and testify to all the things which they had seen concerning the matter. And when they had all testified to the things which they had seen, and he had learned of the faithfulness of Ammon in preserving his flocks, and also of his great power in contending against those who sought to slay him, he was astonished exceedingly, and said, Surely this is more than a man. Behold, is not this the great spirit who doth send such great punishments upon this people because of their murders? And they answered the king and said, Whether he be the great spirit or a man we know not, but this much we do know, that he cannot be slain by the enemies of the king, neither can they scatter the king's flocks when he is with us because of his expertness and great strength. Therefore we know that he is a friend to the king. And now, O king, we do not believe that a man has such great power, for we know that he cannot be slain. And now when the king heard these words, he said unto them, Now I know that it is the great spirit, and he has come down at this time to preserve your lives, that I might not slay you as I did your brethren. Now this is the great spirit of whom our fathers have spoken. Now this was the tradition of Lamoni, which he had received from his father, that there was a great spirit notwithstanding they believed in a great spirit they supposed that whatsoever they did was right nevertheless lamoni began to fear exceedingly with fear lest he had done wrong in slaying his servants for he had slain many of them because their brethren had scattered their flocks at the place of water and thus because they had had their flocks scattered they were slain now it was the practice of these lamanites to stand by the waters of Sebus to scatter the flocks of the people, that thereby they might drive away many that were scattered into their own land, it being a practice of plunder among them. And it came to pass that King Lamoni inquired of his servants, saying, Where is this man that has such great power? And they said unto him, Behold, he is feeding thy horses. Now the king had commanded his servants, previous to the time of the watering of their flocks, that they should prepare his horses and chariots, and conduct him forth to the land of Nephi. For there had been a great feast appointed at the land of Nephi by the father of Lamoni, who was king over all the land. Now when King Lamoni heard that Ammon was preparing his horses and his chariots, he was more astonished because of the faithfulness of Ammon, saying, Surely there has not been any servant among all my servants that has been so faithful as this man for even he doth remember all my commandments to execute them. 
now i surely know that this is the great spirit and i would desire him that he come in unto me but i durst not and it came to pass that when ammon had made ready the horses and the chariots for the king and his servants he went in unto the king and he saw that the countenance of the king was changed therefore he was about to return out of his presence and one of the king's servants said unto him rabbana which is being interpreted powerful or great king considering their kings to be powerful and thus he said unto him rabbana the king desireth thee to stay therefore ammon turned himself unto the king and said unto him what wilt thou that i should do for thee o king and the king answered him not for the space of an hour according to their time for he knew not what he should say unto him and it came to pass that ammon said unto him again what desirest thou of me but the king answered him not and it came to pass that ammon being filled with the spirit of god therefore he perceived the thoughts of the king and he said unto him is it because thou hast heard that i defended thy servants and thy flocks and slew seven of their brethren with the sling and with the sword and smote off the arms of the others in order to defend thy flocks and thy servants behold is it this that causeth thy marvellings i say unto you what is it that thy marvellings are so great behold i am a man and am thy servant therefore whatsoever thou desirest which is right that will i do now when the king had heard these words he marvelled again for he beheld that ammon could discern his thoughts but notwithstanding this king lamoni did open his mouth and said unto him who art thou art thou that great spirit who knows all things ammon answered and said unto him i am not and the king said how knowest thou the thoughts of my heart thou mayest speak boldly and tell me concerning these things and also tell me by what power ye slew and smote off the arms of my brethren that scattered my flocks and now if thou wilt tell me concerning these things whatsoever thou desirest i will give unto thee and if it were needed i would guard thee with my armies but i know that thou art more powerful than all they nevertheless whatsoever thou desirest of me i will grant it unto thee now ammon being wise yet harmless he said unto lamoni wilt thou hearken unto my words if i tell thee by what power i do these things and this is the thing that i desire of thee and the king answered him and said yea i will believe all thy words and thus he was caught with guile and ammon began to speak unto him with boldness and said unto him believest thou that there is a god and he answered and said unto him i do not know what that meaneth and then ammon said believest thou that there is a great spirit and he said yea and ammon said this is god and ammon said unto him again believest thou that this great spirit who is god created all things which are in heaven and in the earth and he said yea i believe that he created all things which are in the earth but i do not know the heavens and ammon said unto him the heavens is a place where god dwells with all his holy angels and king lamoni said is it above the earth and ammon said yea and he looketh down upon all the children of men and he knows all the thoughts and intents of the heart for by his hand were they all created from the beginning and king lamoni said i believe all these things which thou hast spoken art thou sent from god ammon said unto him i am a man and man in the beginning was created after the image of god and i am called by his holy spirit to teach these things unto this people that they may be brought to a knowledge of that which is just and true and a portion of that spirit dwelleth in me which giveth me knowledge and also power according to my faith and desires which are in god now when ammon had said these words he began at the creation of the world and also the creation of adam and told him all the things concerning the fall of man and rehearsed and laid before him the records and the holy scriptures of the people which had been spoken by the prophets even down to the time that their father lehi left jerusalem for he also rehearsed unto them for it was unto the king and to his servants all the journeyings of their fathers in the wilderness and all their sufferings with hunger and thirst and their travail and so forth 
and he also rehearsed unto them concerning the rebellions of laman and lemuel and the sons of ishmael yea all their rebellions did he relate unto them and he expounded unto them all the records and scriptures from the time that lehi left jerusalem down to the present time but this is not all for he expounded unto them the plan of redemption which was prepared from the foundation of the world and he also made known unto them concerning the coming of christ and all the works of the lord did he make known unto them and it came to pass that after he had said all these things and expounded them to the king that the king believed all his words and he began to cry unto the lord saying o lord have mercy according to thy abundant mercy which thou hast had upon the people of nephi have upon me and my people and now when he had said this he fell unto the earth as if he were dead and it came to pass that his servants took him and carried him in unto his wife and laid him upon a bed and he lay as if he were dead for the space of two days and two nights and his wife and his sons and his daughters mourned over him after the manner of the lamanites greatly lamenting his loss alma chapter nineteen and it came to pass that after two days and two nights they were about to take his body and lay it in a sepulchre which they had made for the purpose of burying their dead now the queen having heard of the fame of ammon therefore she sent and desired that he should come in unto her and it came to pass that ammon did as he was commanded and went in unto the queen and desired to know what she would that he should do and she said unto him the servants of my husband have made it known unto me that thou art a prophet of a holy god and that thou hast power to do many mighty works in his name therefore if this be the case i would that ye should go in and see my husband for he has been laid upon his bed for the space of two days and two nights and some say that he is not dead but others say that he is dead and that he stinketh and that he ought to be placed in the sepulchre but as for myself to me he doth not stink now this was what ammon desired for he knew that king lamoni was under the power of god he knew that the dark veil of unbelief was being cast away from his mind and the light which did light up his mind which was the light of the glory of god which was a marvellous light of his goodness yea this light had infused such joy into his soul the cloud of darkness having been dispelled and that the light of everlasting life was lit up in his soul yea he knew that this had overcome his natural frame and he was carried away in god therefore what the queen desired of him was his only desire therefore he went in to see the king according as the queen had desired him and he saw the king and he knew that he was not dead and he said unto the queen he is not dead but he sleepeth in god and on the morrow he shall rise again therefore bury him not and ammon said unto her believest thou this and she said unto him i have had no witness save thy word and the word of our servants nevertheless i believe that it shall be according as thou hast said and ammon said unto her blessed art thou because of thy exceeding faith i say unto thee woman there has not been such great faith among all the people of the nephites and it came to pass that she watched over the bed of her husband from that time even until that time on the morrow which ammon had appointed that he should rise and it came to pass that he arose according to the words of ammon and as he arose he stretched forth his hand unto the woman and said blessed be the name of god and blessed art thou for as sure as thou livest behold i have seen my redeemer and he shall come forth and be born of a woman and he shall redeem all mankind who believe on his name now when he had said these words his heart was swollen within him and he sunk again with joy and the queen also sunk down being overpowered by the spirit now ammon seeing the spirit of the lord poured out according to his prayers upon the lamanites his brethren who had been the cause of so much mourning among the nephites or among all the people of god because of their iniquities and their traditions he fell upon his knees and began to pour out his soul in prayer and thanksgiving to god for what he had done for his brethren and he was also overpowered with joy and thus they all three had sunk to the earth now when the servants of the king had seen that they had fallen 
they also began to cry unto god for the fear of the lord had come upon them also for it was they who had stood before the king and testified unto him concerning the great power of ammon and it came to pass that they did call on the name of the lord in their might even until they had all fallen to the earth save it were one of the lamanitish women whose name was abish she having been converted unto the lord for many years on account of a remarkable vision of her father thus having been converted to the lord and never having made it known therefore when she saw that all the servants of lamoni had fallen to the earth and also her mistress the queen and the king and ammon lay prostrate upon the earth she knew that it was the power of god and supposing that this opportunity by making known unto the people what had happened among them that by beholding this scene it would cause them to believe in the power of god therefore she ran forth from house to house making it known unto the people and they began to assemble themselves together unto the house of the king and there came a multitude and to their astonishment they beheld the king and the queen and their servants prostrate upon the earth and they all lay there as though they were dead and they also saw ammon and behold he was a nephite and now the people began to murmur among themselves some saying that it was a great evil that had come upon them or upon the king and his house because he had suffered that the nephite should remain in the land but others rebuked them saying the king hath brought this evil upon his house because he slew his servants who had had their flocks scattered at the waters of sebus and they were also rebuked by those men who had stood at the waters of sebus and scattered the flocks which belonged to the king for they were angry with ammon because of the number which he had slain of their brethren at the waters of sebus while defending the flocks of the king now one of them whose brother had been slain with the sword of ammon being exceedingly angry with ammon drew his sword and went forth that he might let it fall upon ammon to slay him and as he lifted the sword to smite him behold he fell dead now we see that ammon could not be slain for the lord had said unto mosiah his father i will spare him and it shall be unto him according to thy faith therefore mosiah trusted him unto the lord and it came to pass that when the multitude beheld that the man had fallen dead who lifted the sword to slay ammon fear came upon them all and they durst not put forth their hands to touch him or any of those who had fallen and they began to marvel again among themselves what could be the cause of this great power or what all these things could mean and it came to pass that there were many among them who said that ammon was the great spirit and others said he was sent by the great spirit but others rebuked them all saying that he was a monster who had been sent from the nephites to torment them and there were some who said that ammon was sent by the great spirit to afflict them because of their iniquities and that it was the great spirit that had always attended the nephites who had ever delivered them out of their hands and they said that it was this great spirit who had destroyed so many of their brethren the lamanites and thus the contention began to be exceedingly sharp among them and while they were thus contending the woman servant who had caused the multitude to be gathered together came and when she saw the contention which was among the multitude she was exceedingly sorrowful even unto tears and it came to pass that she went and took the queen by the hand that perhaps she might raise her from the ground and as soon as she touched her hand she arose and stood upon her feet and cried with a loud voice saying o blessed jesus who has saved me from an awful hell o blessed god have mercy on this people and when she had said this she clasped her hands being filled with joy speaking many words which were not understood and when she had done this she took the king lamoni by the hand and behold he arose and stood upon his feet and he immediately seeing the contention among his people went forth and began to rebuke them and to teach them the words which he had heard from the mouth of ammon and as many as heard his words believed and were converted unto the lord but there were many among them who would not hear his words therefore they went their way and it came to pass that when ammon arose he also administered unto them and also did all the servants of lamoni and they did all declare unto the people the selfsame thing that their hearts had been changed that they had no more desire to do evil and behold many did declare unto the people that they had seen angels and had conversed with them 
and thus they had told them things of God and of his righteousness. And it came to pass that there were many that did believe in their words, and as many as did believe were baptized, and they became a righteous people, and they did establish a church among them. And thus the work of the Lord did commence among the Lamanites. Thus the Lord did begin to pour out his Spirit upon them. And we see that his arm is extended to all people who will repent and believe on his name. Alma chapter 20 And it came to pass that when they had established a church in that land, that King Lamoni desired that Ammon should go with him to the land of Nephi, that he might show him unto his father. And the voice of the Lord came to Ammon, saying, Thou shalt not go up to the land of Nephi, for behold, the king will seek thy life. But thou shalt go to the land of Madoni, for behold, thy brother Aaron, and also Mulekai, and Amma are in prison. Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he said unto Lamoni, Behold, my brother and brethren are in prison at Madoni, and I go that I may deliver them. Now Lamoni said unto Ammon, I know in the strength of the Lord that thou canst do all things. But behold, I will go with thee to the land of Madoni, for the king of the land of Madoni, whose name is Antiomno, is a friend unto me. Therefore I go to the land of Madoni, that I may flatter the king of the land, and he will cast thy brethren out of prison. Now Lamoni said unto him, Who told thee that thy brethren were in prison? And Ammon said unto him, No one hath told me, save it be God. And he said unto me, Go and deliver thy brethren, for they are in prison in the land of Madoni. Now when Lamoni had heard this, he caused that his servants should make ready his horses and his chariots. And he said to Ammon, Come, I will go with thee down to the land of Madoni, and there I will plead with the king that he will cast thy brethren out of prison. And it came to pass that as Ammon and Lamoni were journeying thither, they met the father of Lamoni, who was king over all the land. And behold, the father of Lamoni said unto him, Why did ye not come to the feast on that great day when I made a feast unto my sons and unto my people? And he also said, Whither art thou going with this Nephite, who is one of the children of a liar? And it came to pass that Lamoni rehearsed unto him whither he was going, for he feared to offend him. And he also told him all the cause of his tarrying in his own kingdom, that he did not go unto his father to the feast which he had prepared. And now when Lamoni had rehearsed unto him all these things, behold, to his astonishment, his father was angry with him, and said, Lamoni, thou art going to deliver these Nephites who are sons of a liar. Behold, he robbed our fathers, and now his children are also come amongst us, that they may, by their cunning and their lyings, deceive us, that they again may rob us of our property. Now the father of Lamoni commanded him that he should slay Ammon with the sword, and he also commanded him that he should not go to the land of Madoni, but that he should return with him to the land of Ishmael. But Lamoni said unto him, I will not slay Ammon, neither will I return to the land of Ishmael, but I go to the land of Madoni that I may release the brethren of Ammon, for I know that they are just men and holy prophets of the true God. Now when his father had heard these words, he was angry with him, and he drew his sword that he might smite him to the earth. But Ammon stood forth and said unto him, Behold, thou shalt not slay thy son. Nevertheless it were better that he should fall than thee, for behold, he has repented of his sins. But if thou shouldst fall at this time, in thine anger thy soul could not be saved. And again it is expedient that thou shouldst forbear. For if thou shouldst slay thy son, he being an innocent man, his blood would cry from the ground to the Lord his God for vengeance to come upon thee, and perhaps thou wouldst lose thy soul. Now when Ammon had said these words unto him, he answered him, saying, I know that if I should slay my son, that I should shed innocent blood, for it is thou that hast thought to destroy him. And he stretched forth his hand to slay Ammon. But Ammon withstood his blows, and also smote his arm that he could not use it. Now when the king saw that Ammon could slay him, he began to plead with Ammon that he would spare his life. But Ammon raised his sword, and said unto him, Behold, I will smite thee, except thou wilt grant unto me, that my brethren may be cast out of prison. 
Now the king, fearing he should lose his life, said, If thou wilt spare me, I will grant unto thee whatsoever thou wilt ask, even to half of the kingdom. Now when Ammon saw that he had wrought upon the old king according to his desire, he said unto him, If thou wilt grant that my brethren may be cast out of prison, and also that Lamoni may retain his kingdom, and that ye be not displeased with him, but grant that he may do according to his own desires in whatsoever thing he thinketh, then will I spare thee, otherwise I will smite thee to the earth. Now when Ammon had said these words, the king began to rejoice because of his life. And when he saw that Ammon had no desire to destroy him, and when he also saw the great love he had for his son Lamoni, he was astonished exceedingly, and said, Because this is all that thou hast desired, that I would release thy brethren, and suffer that my son Lamoni should retain his kingdom. Behold, I will grant unto you that my son may retain his kingdom from this time and for ever, and I will govern him no more. And I will also grant unto thee that thy brethren may be cast out of prison, and thou and thy brethren may come unto me in my kingdom, for I shall greatly desire to see thee. For the king was greatly astonished at the words which he had spoken, and also at the words which had been spoken by his son Lamoni. Therefore he was desirous to learn them. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni proceeded on their journey towards the land of Medoni, and Lamoni found favor in the eyes of the king of the land. Therefore the brethren of Ammon were brought forth out of prison. And when Ammon did meet them, he was exceedingly sorrowful. For behold, they were naked, and their skins were worn exceedingly, because of being bound with strong cords. And they also had suffered hunger, thirst, and all kinds of afflictions. Nevertheless, they were patient in all their sufferings. And as it happened, it was their lot to have fallen into the hands of a more hardened and a more stiff-necked people. Therefore they would not hearken unto their words. And they had cast them out, and had smitten them, and had driven them from house to house, and from place to place, even until they had arrived in the land of Madoni. And there they were taken, and cast into prison, and bound with strong cords, and kept in prison for many days, and were delivered by Lamoni and Ammon. End of Alma, chapters 18 through 20. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 21 through 24 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 21 through 24. Alma, chapter 21. Now when Ammon and his brethren separated themselves in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, behold, Aaron took his journey towards the land which was called by the Lamanites Jerusalem, calling it after the land of their father's nativity. And it was a way joining the borders of Mormon. Now the Lamanites and the Amalekites and the people of Amulon had built a great city, which was called Jerusalem. Now the Lamanites of themselves were sufficiently hardened, but the Amalekites and the Amulonites were still harder. Therefore they did cause the Lamanites that they should harden their hearts, that they should wax strong in wickedness and their abominations. And it came to pass that Aaron came to the city of Jerusalem, and first began to preach to the Amalekites, and he began to preach to them in their synagogues, for they had built synagogues after the order of the Nehors. For many of the Amalekites and the Amulonites were after the order of the Nehors. Therefore as Aaron entered into one of their synagogues to preach unto the people, and as he was speaking unto them, behold, there arose an Amalekite, and began to contend with him, saying, What is that thou hast testified? Hast thou seen an angel? Why do not angels appear unto us? Behold, are not this people as good as thy people? Thou also sayest, except we repent, we shall perish. How knowest thou the thoughts and intents of our hearts? How knowest thou that we have cause to repent? How knowest thou that we are not a righteous people? Behold, we have built sanctuaries, and we do assemble ourselves together to worship God. We do believe that God will save all men. Now Aaron said unto him, Believest thou that the Son of God shall come to redeem mankind from their sins? 
And the man said unto him, We do not believe that thou knowest any such thing. We do not believe in these foolish traditions. We do not believe that thou knowest of things to come. Neither do we believe that thy fathers, and also that our fathers, did know concerning the things which they spake, of that which is to come. Now Aaron began to open the scriptures unto them concerning the coming of Christ, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead, and that there could be no redemption for mankind, save it were through the death and sufferings of Christ, and the atonement of his blood. And it came to pass, as he began to expound these things unto them, they were angry with him, and began to mock him, and they would not hear the words which he spake. Therefore, when he saw that they would not hear his words, he departed out of their synagogue, and came over to a village which was called Anianti. And there he found Mulekai preaching the word unto them, and also Amma and his brethren. And they contended with many about the word. And it came to pass that they saw that the people would harden their hearts. Therefore they departed, and came over into the land of Madoni. And they did preach the word unto many, and few believed on the words which they taught. Nevertheless Aaron and a certain number of his brethren were taken and cast into prison, and the remainder of them fled out of the land of Madoni unto the regions round about. And those who were cast into prison suffered many things, and they were delivered by the hand of Lamoni and Ammon, and they were fed and clothed. And they went forth again to declare the word, and thus they were delivered for the first time out of prison, and thus they had suffered. And they went forth whithersoever they were led by the Spirit of the Lord, preaching the word of God in every synagogue of the Amalekites, or in every assembly of the Lamanites where they could be admitted. And it came to pass that the Lord began to bless them, insomuch that they brought many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, they did convince many of their sins, and of the traditions of their fathers which were not correct. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni returned from the land of Madoni to the land of Ishmael, which was the land of their inheritance. And King Lamoni would not suffer that Ammon should serve him, or be his servant. But he caused that there should be synagogues built in the land of Ishmael. And he caused that his people, or the people who were under his reign, should assemble themselves together. And he did rejoice over them, and he did teach them many things. And he did also declare unto them that they were a people who were under him, and that they were a free people, that they were free from the oppressions of the king his father for that his father had granted unto him that he might reign over the people who were in the land of ishmael and in all the land round about and he also declared unto them that they might have the liberty of worshipping the lord their god according to their desires in whatsoever place they were in if it were in the land which was under the reign of king lamoni and ammon did preach unto the people of king lamoni and it came to pass that he did teach them all things concerning things pertaining to righteousness and he did exhort them daily with all diligence, and they gave heed unto his word, and they were zealous for keeping the commandments of God. Alma, chapter 22 Now, as Ammon was thus teaching the people of Lamoni continually, we will return to the account of Aaron and his brethren. For after he returned from the land of Madoni, he was led by the Spirit to the land of Nephi, even to the house of the king which was over all the land, save it were the land of Ishmael and he was the father of Lamoni. And it came to pass that he went in unto him into the king's palace with his brethren, and bowed himself before the king, and said unto him, Behold, O king, we are the brethren of Ammon, whom thou hast delivered out of prison. And now, O king, if thou wilt spare our lives, we will be thy servants. And the king said unto them, Arise, for I will grant unto you your lives, and I will not suffer that ye shall be my servants. But I will insist that ye shall administer unto me, for I have been somewhat troubled in mind because of the generosity and the greatness of the words of thy brother Ammon, and I desire to know the cause why he has not come up out of Madoni with thee. And Aaron said unto the king, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord has called him another way. He has gone to the land of Ishmael to teach the people of Lamoni. Now the king said unto them, What is this that ye have said concerning the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, this is the thing which doth trouble me. And also what is this that Ammon said? If ye will repent, ye shall be saved. And if ye will not repent, ye shall be cast off at the last day. And Aaron answered him, and said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And the king said, I know that the Amalekites say that there is a God, and I have granted unto them that they should build sanctuaries, 
that they may assemble themselves together to worship him. And if now thou sayest there is a God, behold, I will believe. And now when Aaron heard this, his heart began to rejoice. And he said, Behold, assuredly, as thou livest, O king, there is a God. And the king said, Is God that great spirit that brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem? And Aaron said unto him, Yea, he is that great spirit, and he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believest thou this? And he said, Yea, I believe that the great spirit created all things, and I desire that ye should tell me concerning all these things, and I will believe thy words. And it came to pass that when Aaron saw that the king would believe his words, he began from the creation of Adam reading the scriptures unto the king, how God created man after his own image, and that God gave him commandments, and that, because of transgression, man had fallen. And Aaron did expound unto him the scriptures from the creation of Adam, laying the fall of man before him, and their carnal state, and also the plan of redemption, which was prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ, for all whosoever would believe on his name. And since man had fallen, he could not merit anything of himself, but the sufferings and death of Christ atone for their sins, through faith and repentance and so forth, and that he breaketh the bands of death, that the grave shall have no victory, and that the sting of death should be swallowed up in the hopes of glory. And Aaron did expound all these things unto the king. And it came to pass that after Aaron had expounded these things unto him, the king said, what shall I do that I may have this eternal life of which thou hast spoken? Yea, what shall I do that I may be born of God, having this wicked spirit rooted out of my breast, and receive his spirit, that I may be filled with joy, that I may not be cast off at the last day? Behold, said he, I will give up all that I possess, yea, I will forsake my kingdom, that I may receive this great joy. But Aaron said unto him, If thou desirest this thing, if thou wilt bow down before God, yea, if thou wilt repent of all thy sins, and wilt bow down before God and call on his name in faith, believing that ye shall receive, then shalt thou receive the hope which thou desirest. And it came to pass that when Aaron had said these words, the king did bow down before the Lord upon his knees, Yea, even he did prostrate himself upon the earth, and cried mightily, saying, O God, Aaron hath told me that there is a God. And if there is a God, and if thou art God, wilt thou make thyself known unto me? And I will give away all my sins to know thee, and that I may be raised from the dead, and be saved at the last day. And now when the king had said these words, he was struck as if he were dead. And it came to pass that his servants ran and told the queen all that had happened unto the king, and she came in unto the king, and when she saw him lay as if he were dead, and also Aaron and his brethren standing as though they had been the cause of his fall, she was angry with them, and commanded that her servants, or the servants of the king, should take them and slay them. Now the servants had seen the cause of the king's fall, therefore they durst not lay their hands on Aaron and his brethren. And they pled with the queen, saying, why commandest thou that we should slay these men, when, behold, one of them is mightier than us all, and therefore we shall fall before them? Now when the queen saw the fear of the servants, she also began to fear exceedingly, lest there should some evil come upon her. And she commanded her servants that they should go and call the people, that they might slay Aaron and his brethren. Now when Aaron saw the determination of the queen, he also, knowing the hardness of the hearts of the people, feared lest that a multitude should assemble themselves together, and there should be a great contention and disturbance among them. Therefore he put forth his hand, and raised the king from the earth, and said unto him, Stand. And he stood upon his feet, receiving his strength. Now this was done in the presence of the queen and many of the servants, and when they saw it they greatly marveled, and began to fear, and the king stood forth, and began to minister unto them. And he did minister unto them, insomuch that his whole household were converted unto the Lord. Now there was a multitude gathered together because of the commandment of the queen. 
and there began to be great murmurings among them because of Aaron and his brethren. But the king stood forth among them and administered unto them, and they were pacified towards Aaron and those who were with him. And it came to pass that when the king saw that the people were pacified, he caused that Aaron and his brethren should stand forth in the midst of the multitude, and that they should preach the word unto them. And it came to pass that the king sent a proclamation throughout all the land, amongst all his people who were in all his land, who were in all the regions round about, which was bordering even to the sea, on the east and on the west, and which was divided from the land of Zarahemla by a narrow strip of wilderness, which ran from the sea east even to the sea west, and round about on the borders of the seashore, and the borders of the wilderness, which was on the north by the land of Zarahemla, through the borders of Manti, by the head of the river Sidon, running from the east towards the west. And thus were the Lamanites and the Nephites divided. Now the more idle part of the Lamanites lived in the wilderness, and dwelt in tents, and they were spread through the wilderness on the west, in the land of Nephi, yea, and also on the west of the land of Zarahemla, in the borders by the seashore, and on the west in the land of Nephi, in the place of their father's first inheritance, and thus bordering along by the seashore. And also there were many Lamanites on the east by the seashore, whither the Nephites had driven them. And thus the Nephites were nearly surrounded by the Lamanites. Nevertheless, the Nephites had taken possession of all the northern parts of the land bordering on the wilderness, at the head of the river Sidon, from the east to the west, round about on the wilderness side, on the north, even until they came to the land which they called Bountiful. And it bordered upon the land which they called Desolation, it being so far northward that it came into the land which had been peopled and been destroyed, of whose bones we have spoken, which was discovered by the people of Zarahemla, it being the place of their first landing. And they came from there up into the south wilderness. Thus the land on the northward was called Desolation, and the land on the southward was called Bountiful, it being the wilderness which is filled with all manner of wild animals of every kind, a part of which had come from the land northward for food. And now it was only the distance of a day and a half's journey for a Nephite, on the line bountiful and the land desolation, from the east to the west sea. And thus the land of Nephi and the land of Zarahemla were nearly surrounded by water, there being a small neck of land between the land northward and the land southward. And it came to pass that the Nephites had inhabited the land bountiful, even from the east unto the west sea. And thus the Nephites, in their wisdom, with their guards and their armies, had hemmed in the Lamanites on the south, that thereby they should have no more possession on the north, that they might not overrun the land northward. Therefore the Lamanites could have no more possessions, only in the land of Nephi and the wilderness round about. Now this was wisdom in the Nephites, as the Lamanites were an enemy to them, they would not suffer their afflictions on every hand, and also that they might have a country whither they might flee according to their desires. And now I, after having said this, return again to the account of Ammon and Aaron, Omner and Himni, and their brethren. Alma chapter 23 Behold, now it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation among all his people, that they should not lay their hands on Ammon, or Aaron, or Omnor, or Himni, nor either of their brethren, who should go forth preaching the word of God, in whatsoever place they should be, in any part of their land. Yea, he sent a decree among them, that they should not lay their hands on them, to bind them, or to cast them into prison. Neither should they spit upon them, nor smite them, nor cast them out of their synagogues, nor scourge them, neither should they cast stones at them, but that they should have free access to their houses, and also their temples and their sanctuaries. And thus they might go forth and preach the word according to their desires. For the king had been converted unto the Lord, and all his household. Therefore he sent his proclamation throughout the land unto his people, that the word of God might have no obstruction, but that it might go forth throughout all the land, that his people might be convinced concerning the wicked traditions of their fathers, and that they might be convinced that they were all brethren, and that they ought not to murder, nor to plunder, nor to steal, nor to commit adultery, nor to commit any manner of wickedness. And now it came to pass that when the king had sent forth this proclamation, that Aaron and his brethren went forth from city to city, and from one house of worship to another, 
establishing churches and consecrating priests and teachers throughout the land among the Lamanites, to preach and to teach the word of God among them. And thus they began to have great success, and thousands were brought to the knowledge of the Lord. Yea, thousands were brought to believe in the traditions of the Nephites, and they were taught the records and prophecies which were handed down even to the present time. And as sure as the Lord liveth, so sure as many as believed, or as many as were brought to the knowledge of the truth, through the preaching of Ammon and his brethren, according to the spirit of revelation and of prophecy, and the power of God working miracles in them, yea, I say unto you, as the Lord liveth, as many of the Lamanites as believed in their preaching, and were converted unto the Lord, never did fall away. For they became a righteous people. They did lay down the weapons of their rebellion, that they did not fight against God any more, neither against any of their brethren. Now these are they who were converted unto the Lord, the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Ishmael, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Madoni, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the city of Nephi, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Shilom, and who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the city of Lemuel, and in the city of Shimnalom. And these are the names of the cities of the Lamanites, which were converted unto the Lord. And these are they that laid down the weapons of their rebellion, yea, all their weapons of war. And they were all Lamanites. And the Amalekites were not converted, save only one. Neither were any of the Amulonites, but they did harden their hearts, and also the hearts of the Lamanites in that part of the land wheresoever they dwelt yea, and all their villages, and all their cities. Therefore we have named all the cities of the Lamanites in which they did repent, and come to the knowledge of the truth, and were converted. And now it came to pass that the king and those who were converted were desirous that they might have a name, that thereby they might be distinguished from their brethren. Therefore the king consulted with Aaron and many of their priests concerning the name that they should take upon them that they might be distinguished. And it came to pass that they called their names Anti-Nephi-Lehi's. And they were called by this name, and were no more called Lamanites. And they began to be a very industrious people. Yea, and they were friendly with the Nephites. Therefore they did open a correspondence with them, and the curse of God did no more follow them. Alma chapter 24 and it came to pass that the Amalekites and the Amulonites and the Lamanites, who were in the land of Amulon, and also in the land of Helam, and who were in the land of Jerusalem, and in fine in all the land round about, who had not been converted and had not taken upon them the name of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, were stirred up by the Amalekites and by the Amulonites to anger against their brethren. And their hatred became exceedingly sore against them, even insomuch that they began to rebel against their king, insomuch that they would not that he should be their king. Therefore they took up arms against the people of Antinephi-Lehi. Now the king conferred the kingdom upon his son, and he called his name Antinephi-Lehi. And the king died in that selfsame year that the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of God. Now when Ammon and his brethren and all those who had come up with him saw the preparations of the Lamanites to destroy their brethren, they came forth to the land of Midian, and there Ammon met all his brethren, and from thence they came to the land of Ishmael, that they might hold a council with Lamoni and also with his brother Antinephi-Lehi, what they should do to defend themselves against the Lamanites. Now there was not one soul among all the people who had been converted unto the Lord that would take up arms against their brethren. Nay, they would not even make any preparations for war. Yea, and also their king commanded them that they should not. Now these are the words which he said unto the people concerning the matter. I thank my God, my beloved people, that our great God has in goodness sent these our brethren, the Nephites, unto us, to preach unto us, and to convince us of the traditions of our wicked fathers. And behold, I thank my great God that he has given us a portion of his spirit to soften our hearts, that we have opened a correspondence with these brethren, the Nephites, and behold, I also thank my God, that by opening this correspondence we have been convinced of our sins, and of the many murders which we have committed. And I also thank my God, yea, my great God, that he hath granted unto us, that we might repent of these things, and also that he hath forgiven us of those our many sins and murders which we have committed, 
and taken away the guilt from our hearts through the merits of his Son. And now behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do, as we were the most lost of all mankind, to repent of all our sins, and the many murders which we have committed, and to get God to take them away from our hearts, for it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before God that he would take away our stain. Now, my best beloved brethren, since God hath taken away our stains, and our swords have become bright, then let us stain our swords no more with the blood of our brethren. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, let us retain our swords, that they may not be stained with the blood of our brethren, for perhaps if we should stain our swords again, they can no more be washed bright through the blood of the Son of our great God, which shall be shed for the atonement of our sins. And the great God has had mercy on us, and made these things known unto us, that we might not perish. Yea, and he has made these things known unto us beforehand, because he loveth our souls, as well as he loveth our children. Therefore, in his mercy he doth visit us by his angels, that the plan of salvation might be made known unto us as well as unto future generations. Oh, how merciful is our God! And now, behold, since it has been as much as we could do to get our stains taken away from us, and our swords are made bright, let us hide them away, that they may be kept bright, as a testimony to our God at the last day, or at the day that we shall be brought to stand before him to be judged, that we have not stained our swords in the blood of our brethren, since he imparted his word unto us, and has made us clean thereby. And now, my brethren, if our brethren seek to destroy us, behold, we will hide away our swords, yea, even we will bury them deep in the earth, that they may be kept bright, as a testimony that we have never used them at the last day. And if our brethren destroy us, behold, we shall go to our God and shall be saved. And now it came to pass that when the king had made an end of these sayings, and all the people were assembled together, they took their swords, and all the weapons which were used for the shedding of man's blood, and they did bury them up deep in the earth. And this they did, it being in their view a testimony to God, and also to men, that they never would use weapons again for the shedding of man's blood. And this they did, vouching and covenanting with God, that rather than shed the blood of their brethren, they would give up their own lives, and rather than take away from a brother, they would give unto him, and rather than spend their days in idleness, they would labor abundantly with their hands. And thus we see that when these Lamanites were brought to believe and to know the truth, they were firm, and would suffer even unto death, rather than commit sin. And thus we see that they buried their weapons of peace, or they buried the weapons of war for peace. And it came to pass that their brethren, the Lamanites, made preparations for war, and came up to the land of Nephi for the purpose of destroying the king, and to place another in his stead, and also of destroying the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi out of the land. Now when the people saw that they were coming against them, they went out to meet them, and prostrated themselves before them to the earth, and began to call on the name of the Lord. And thus they were in this attitude, when the Lamanites began to fall upon them, and began to slay them with the sword. And thus, without meeting any resistance, they did slay a thousand and five of them. And we know that they are blessed for they have gone to dwell with their God. Now when the Lamanites saw that their brethren would not flee from the sword, neither would they turn aside to the right hand nor to the left, but that they would lie down and perish, and praised God even in the very act of perishing under the sword. Now when the Lamanites saw this, they did forbear from slaying them. And there were many whose hearts had swollen in them for those of their brethren who had fallen under the sword for they repented of the things which they had done. And it came to pass that they threw down their weapons of war, and they would not take them again, for they were stung for the murders which they had committed. And they came down, even as their brethren, relying upon the mercies of those whose arms were lifted to slay them. And it came to pass that the people of God were joined that day by more than the number who had been slain. And those who had been slain were righteous people, Therefore we have no reason to doubt but what they were saved. And there was not a wicked man slain among them. But there were more than a thousand brought to the knowledge of the truth. Thus we see that the Lord worketh in many ways to the salvation of his people. 
Now the greatest number of those of the Lamanites who slew so many of their brethren were Amalekites and Amulonites, the greatest number of whom were after the order of the Nehors. Now among those who joined the people of the Lord, there were none who were Amalekites or Amulonites or who were of the order of Nehor, but they were actual descendants of Laman and Lemuel. And thus we can plainly discern that after a people have been once enlightened by the Spirit of God, and have had great knowledge of things pertaining to righteousness, and then have fallen away into sin and transgression, they become more hardened, and thus their state becomes worse than though they had never known these things. End of Alma, chapters 21 through 24. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at Hessmess dot blogspot dot com alma chapters twenty five through twenty eight of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith Alma chapters twenty five through twenty eight. Alma chapter twenty five. And behold, now it came to pass that those Lamanites were more angry because they had slain their brethren. Therefore they swore vengeance upon the Nephites, and they did no more attempt to slay the people of Anti Nephi Lehi at that time. But they took their armies and went over into the borders of the land of Zarahemla, and fell upon the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, and destroyed them. And after that they had many battles with the Nephites, in the which they were driven and slain. And among the Lamanites who were slain were almost all the seed of Amulon and his brethren, who were the priests of Noah. And they were slain by the hands of the Nephites. And the remainder, having fled into the east wilderness, and having usurped the power and authority over the Lamanites, caused that many of the Lamanites should perish by fire because of their belief. For many of them after having suffered much loss and so many afflictions, began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached to them in their land. Therefore they began to disbelieve the traditions of their fathers, and to believe in the Lord, and that he gave great power unto the Nephites, and thus there were many of them converted in the wilderness. And it came to pass that those rulers, who were the remnant of the children of Amulon, caused that they should be put to death, yea, all those that believed in these things. Now this martyrdom caused that many of their brethren should be stirred up to anger, and there began to be contention in the wilderness, and the Lamanites began to hunt the seed of Amulon and his brethren, and began to slay them, and they fled into the east wilderness. And behold, they are hunted at this day by the Lamanites. Thus the words of Abinadi were brought to pass, which he said concerning the seed of the priests who caused that he should suffer death by fire. For he said unto them, What ye shall do unto me shall be a type of things to come. And now Abinadi was the first that suffered death by fire, because of his belief in God. Now this is what he meant, that many should suffer death by fire, according as he had suffered. And he said unto the priests of Noah that their seed should cause many to be put to death in the like manner as he was, and that they should be scattered abroad and slain, even as a sheep, having no shepherd, is driven and slain by wild beasts. And now, behold, these words were verified, for they were driven by the Lamanites, and they were hunted, and they were smitten. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that they could not overpower the Nephites, they returned again to their own land, and many of them came over to dwell in the land of Ishmael and the land of Nephi, and did join themselves to the people of God, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And they did also bury their weapons of war according as their brethren had, and they began to be a righteous people, and they did walk in the ways of the Lord, and did observe to keep his commandments and his statutes. Yea, and they did keep the law of Moses, for it was expedient that they should keep the law of Moses as yet, for it was not all fulfilled. But, notwithstanding the law of Moses, they did look forward to the coming of Christ, considering that the law of Moses was a type of his coming, and believing that they must keep those outward performances until the time that he should be revealed unto them. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses, 
but the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ. And thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy, which spake of those things to come. And now behold, Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and Himni, and their brethren did rejoice exceedingly for the success which they had had among the Lamanites, seeing that the Lord had granted unto them according to their prayers, and that he had also verified his word unto them in every particular. Alma chapter 26 And now these are the words of Ammon to his brethren, which say thus, My brothers and my brethren, behold, I say unto you, how great reason we have to rejoice, for could we have supposed when we started from the land of Zarahemla that God would have granted unto us such great blessings? And now I ask, what great blessings has he bestowed upon us? Can you tell? Behold, I answer for you. For our brethren, the Lamanites, were in darkness, yea, even in the darkest abyss. But behold, how many of them are brought to behold the marvelous light of God. And this is the blessing which hath been bestowed upon us that we have been made instruments in the hands of God to bring about this great work. Behold, thousands of them do rejoice, and have been brought into the fold of God. Behold, the field was ripe, and blessed are ye, for ye did thrust in the sickle, and did reap with your might. Yea, all the day long did ye labor, and behold the number of your sheaves, and they shall be gathered into the garners, that they are not wasted. Yea, they shall not be beaten down by the storm at the last day. Yea, neither shall they be harrowed up by the whirlwinds. But when the storm cometh, they shall be gathered together in their place, that the storm cannot penetrate to them. Yea, neither shall they be driven with fierce winds, whithersoever the enemy listeth to carry them. But behold, they are in the hands of the Lord of the harvest, and they are his. And he will raise them up at the last day. Blessed be the name of our God. Let us sing to his praise. Yea, let us give thanks to his holy name. For he doth work righteousness forever. For if we had not come up out of the land of Zarahemla, these our dearly beloved brethren, who have so dearly beloved us, would still have been racked with hatred against us. Yea, and they would also have been strangers to God. And it came to pass that when Ammon said these words, his brother Aaron rebuked him, saying, Ammon, I fear that thy joy doth carry thee away unto boasting. But Ammon said unto him, I do not boast in my own strength, nor in my own wisdom. But behold, my joy is full. Yea, my heart is brim with joy, and I will rejoice in my God. Yea, I know that I am nothing. As to my strength, I am weak. Therefore I will not boast of myself, but I will boast of my God. For in his strength... I can do all things. Yea, behold, many mighty miracles we have wrought in this land, for which we will praise his name forever. Behold, how many thousands of our brethren has he loosed from the pains of hell, and they are brought to sing redeeming love, and this because of the power of his word which is in us. Therefore have we not great reason to rejoice? Yea, we have reason to praise him forever, for he is the Most High God and has loosed our brethren from the chains of hell. Yea, they were encircled about with everlasting darkness and destruction. But behold, he has brought them into his everlasting light, yea, into everlasting salvation, and they are encircled about with the matchless bounty of his love. Yea, and we have been instruments in his hands of doing this great and marvelous work. Therefore let us glory. Yea, we will glory in the Lord. Yea, we will rejoice, for our joy is full. Yea, we will praise our God forever. Behold, who can glory too much in the Lord? Yea, who can say too much of his great power, and of his mercy, and of his long suffering towards the children of men? Behold, I say unto you, I cannot say the smallest part which I feel. Who could have supposed that our God would have been so merciful? as to have snatched us from our awful, sinful, and polluted state. Behold, we went forth, even in wrath, with mighty threatenings to destroy his church. Oh, then, why did he not consign us to an awful destruction? Yea, why did he not let the sword of his justice fall upon us and doom us to eternal despair? Oh, my soul almost as it were fleeth at the thought. 
behold, he did not exercise his justice upon us, but in his great mercy hath brought us over that everlasting gulf of death and misery, even to the salvation of our souls. And now behold, my brethren, what natural man is there that knoweth these things? I say unto you, there is none that knoweth these things, save it be the penitent. Yea, he that repenteth, and exerciseth faith, and bringeth forth good works, and prayeth continually without ceasing. Unto such it is given to know the mysteries of God. Yea, unto such it shall be given to reveal things which never have been revealed. Yea, and it shall be given unto such to bring thousands of souls to repentance even as it has been given unto us to bring these our brethren to repentance. Now do you remember, my brethren, that we said unto our brethren in the land of Zarahemla, We go up to the land of Nephi, to preach unto our brethren the Lamanites. And they laughed us to scorn. For they said unto us, Do ye suppose that ye can bring the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth? Do ye suppose that ye can convince the Lamanites of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers? as stiff-necked a people as they are, whose hearts delight in the shedding of blood, whose days have been spent in the grossest iniquity, whose ways have been the ways of a transgressor from the beginning? Now, my brethren, you remember that this was their language. And moreover they did say, Let us take up arms against them, that we destroy them and their iniquity out of the land, lest they overrun us and destroy us. But behold, my beloved brethren, we came into the wilderness not with the intent to destroy our brethren, but with the intent that perhaps we might save some few of their souls. Now when our hearts were depressed, and we were about to turn back, behold, the Lord comforted us, and said, Go amongst thy brethren the Lamanites, and bear with patience thine afflictions, and I will give unto you success. And now, behold, we have come, and been forth amongst them, and we have been patient in our sufferings, and we have suffered every privation. Yea, we have traveled from house to house, relying upon the mercies of the world, not upon the mercies of the world alone, but upon the mercies of God. And we have entered into their houses and taught them, and we have taught them in their streets. Yea, and we have taught them upon their hills, and we have also entered into their temples and their synagogues and taught them, and we have been cast out, and mocked, and spit upon, and smote upon our cheeks, and we have been stoned, and taken, and bound with strong cords, and cast into prison, and through the power and wisdom of God we have been delivered again. And we have suffered all manner of afflictions, and all this that perhaps we might be the means of saving some soul. And we suppose that our joy would be full if perhaps we could be the means of saving some. But behold, we can look forth and see the fruits of our labors. And are they few? I say unto you, Nay, they are many. Yea, and we can witness of their sincerity, because of their love towards their brethren, and also towards us. For behold, they had rather sacrificed their lives than even to take the life of their enemy. And they have buried their weapons of war deep in the earth because of their love towards their brethren. And now, behold, I say unto you, has there been so great love in all the land? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, there has not, even among the Nephites. For behold, they would take up arms against their brethren. They would not suffer themselves to be slain. But behold, how many of these have laid down their lives, and we know that they have gone to their God, because of their love and of their hatred to sin. Now have we not reason to rejoice? Yea, I say unto you, there never were men that had so great reason to rejoice as we since the world began. Yea, and my joy is carried away even unto boasting in my God, for he has all power, all wisdom, and all understanding. He comprehendeth all things, and he is a merciful being, even unto salvation to those who will repent and believe on his name. Now if this is boasting, even so will I boast, for this is my life and my light, my joy and my salvation and my redemption from everlasting woe. Yea, blessed is the name of God, who has been mindful of this people, who are a branch of the tree of Israel, and has been lost from its body in a strange land. Yea, I say, blessed be the name of my God, who has been mindful of us, wanderers in a strange land. Now, my brethren, we see that God is mindful of every people, whatsoever land they may be in, 
Yea, he numbereth his people, and his bowels of mercy are over all the earth. Now this is my joy, and my great thanksgiving. Yea, and I will give thanks unto my God forever. Amen. Alma chapter 27 now it came to pass that when those Lamanites who had gone to war against the Nephites had found after their many struggles to destroy them that it was in vain to seek their destruction, they returned again to the land of Nephi. And it came to pass that the Amalekites, because of their loss, were exceedingly angry. And when they saw that they could not seek revenge from the Nephites, they began to stir up the people in anger against their brethren, the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. Therefore they began again to destroy them. Now this people again refused to take their arms, and they suffered themselves to be slain according to the desires of their enemies. Now when Ammon and his brethren saw this work of destruction among those whom they so dearly beloved, and among those who had so dearly beloved them, for they were treated as though they were angels sent from God to save them from everlasting destruction, Therefore, when Ammon and his brethren saw this great work of destruction, they were moved with compassion, and they said unto the king, Let us gather together this people of the Lord, and let us go down to the land of Zarahemla to our brethren the Nephites, and flee out of the hands of our enemies, that we be not destroyed. But the king said unto them, Behold, the Nephites will destroy us, because of the many murders and sins we have committed against them. And Ammon said, I will go and inquire of the Lord. And if he say unto us, Go down unto our brethren, will ye go? And the king said unto him, Yea, if the Lord saith unto us, Go, we will go down unto our brethren, and we will be their slaves, until we repair unto them the many murders and sins which we have committed against them. But Ammon said unto him, It is against the law of our brethren, which was established by my father, that there should be any slaves among them, Therefore let us go down and rely upon the mercies of our brethren. But the king said unto him, Inquire of the Lord. And if he saith unto us, Go, we will go. Otherwise we will perish in the land. And it came to pass that Ammon went and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Get this people out of this land, that they perish not. For Satan has great hold on the hearts of the Amalekites, who do stir up the Lamanites to anger against their brethren to slay them. Therefore get thee out of this land, and blessed are this people in this generation, for I will preserve them. And now it came to pass that Ammon went and told the king all the words which the Lord had said unto him. And they gathered together all their people, yea, all the people of the Lord, and did gather together all their flocks and herds, and departed out of the land, and came into the wilderness, which divided the land of Nephi from the land of Zarahemla, and came over near the borders of the land. And it came to pass that Ammon said unto them, Behold, I and my brethren will go forth into the land of Zarahemla, and ye shall remain here until we return, and we will try the hearts of our brethren, whether they will that we shall come into their land. And it came to pass that as Ammon was going forth into the land, that he and his brethren met Alma, over in the place of which has been spoken. And behold, this was a joyful meeting. Now the joy of Ammon was so great, even that he was full, yea, he was swallowed up in the joy of his God, even to the exhausting of his strength, and he fell again to the earth. Now was not this exceeding joy? Behold, this is joy which none receiveth, save it be the truly penitent and humble seeker of happiness. Now the joy of Alma in meeting his brethren was truly great, and also the joy of Aaron, of Omner, and Himni. But behold, their joy was not that to exceed their strength. And now it came to pass that Alma conducted his brethren back to the land of Zarahemla, even to his own house. And they went and told the chief judge all the things that had happened unto them in the land of Nephi, among their brethren the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the chief judge sent a proclamation throughout all the land, desiring the voice of the people concerning the admitting their brethren who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came, saying, Behold, we will give up the land of Jershon, which is on the east by the sea, which joins the land Bountiful, which is on the south of the land Bountiful, 
and this land Jershon is the land which we will give unto our brethren for an inheritance. And behold, we will set our armies between the land Jershon and the land Nephi, that we may protect our brethren in the land Jershon. And this we do for our brethren, on account of their fear to take up arms against their brethren, lest they should commit sin. And this their great fear came because of their sore repentance which they had, on account of their many murders and their awful wickedness. And now behold, this will we do unto our brethren, that they may inherit the land Jershon, and we will guard them from their enemies with our armies, on condition that they will give us a portion of their substance to assist us, that we may maintain our armies. Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he returned to the people of Antinephi-Lehi, and also Alma with him, into the wilderness where they had pitched their tents, and made known unto them all these things. And Alma also related unto them his conversion with Ammon and Aaron and his brethren. And it came to pass that it did cause great joy among them. And they went down into the land of Jershon and took possession of the land of Jershon. And they were called by the Nephites the people of Ammon. Therefore they were distinguished by that name ever after. And they were among the people of Nephi and also numbered among the people who were of the church of God. And they were also distinguished for their zeal towards God and also towards men, for they were perfectly honest and upright in all things, and they were firm in the faith of Christ, even unto the end. And they did look upon shedding the blood of their brethren with the greatest abhorrence, and they never could be prevailed upon to take up arms against their brethren, and they never did look upon death with any degree of terror for their hope and views of Christ and the resurrection. Therefore death was swallowed up to them by the victory of Christ over it. Therefore they would suffer death in the most aggravating and distressing manner which could be inflicted by their brethren, before they would take the sword or scimitar to smite them. And thus they were a zealous and a beloved people, a highly favored people of the Lord. Alma chapter 28 and now it came to pass that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershon, and a church also established in the land of Jershon, and the armies of the Nephites were set round about the land of Jershon, yea, in all the borders round about the land of Zarahemla, behold, the armies of the Lamanites had followed their brethren into the wilderness. And thus there was a tremendous battle. Yea, even such an one as never had been known among all the people in the land from the time Lehi left Jerusalem. Yea, and tens of thousands of the Lamanites were slain and scattered abroad. Yea, and also there was a tremendous slaughter among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, the Lamanites were driven and scattered, and the people of Nephi returned again to their land. And now this was a time that there was a great mourning and lamentation heard throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. Yea, the cry of widows mourning for their husbands, and also of fathers mourning for their sons, and the daughter for the brother. Yea, the brother for the father. And thus the cry of mourning was heard among all of them, mourning for their kindred who had been slain. And now surely this was a sorrowful day, yea, a time of solemnity, and a time of much fasting and prayer. And thus ended the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And this is the account of Ammon and his brethren, their journeyings in the land of Nephi, their sufferings in the land, their sorrows, and their afflictions, and their incomprehensible joy, and the reception and safety of the brethren in the land of Jershon. And now may the Lord, the Redeemer of all men, bless their souls forever. And this is the account of the wars and contentions among the Nephites, and also the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. And the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges is ended. And from the first year to the fifteenth has brought to pass the destruction of many thousand lives. Yea, it has brought to pass an awful scene of bloodshed. And the bodies of many thousands are laid low in the earth, while the bodies of many thousands are moldering in heaps upon the face of the earth, Yea, and many thousands are mourning for the loss of their kindred, because they have reason to fear, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are consigned to a state of endless woe. 
while many thousands of others truly mourn for the loss of their kindred yet they rejoice and exult in the hope and even know according to the promises of the lord that they are raised to dwell at the right hand of god in a state of never-ending happiness and thus we see how great the inequality of man is because of sin and transgression and the power of the devil which comes by the cunning plans which he hath devised to ensnare the hearts of men and thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyards of the lord and thus we see the great reason of sorrow and also of rejoicing sorrow because of death and destruction among men and joy because of the light of christ unto life and velma chapters twenty five through twenty eight recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com The Book of Alma, chapters 29 through 32 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Corey Osborne. The Book of Mormon translated by joseph smith alma chapters twenty nine through thirty two chapter twenty nine oh that i were an angel and could have the wish of mine heart that i might go forth and speak with the trump of god with a voice to shake the earth and cry repentance unto every people yea i would declare unto every soul as with the voice of thunder repentance and the plan of redemption that they should repent and come unto our God, that there might not be more sorrow upon all the face of the earth. But, behold, I am a man, and do sin in my wish, for I ought to be content with the things which the Lord hath allotted unto me. I ought not to harrow up in my desires the firm decree of a just God, for I know that he granteth unto men according to their desire, whether it be unto death or unto life. Yea, I know that he allotteth unto men yea decreeth unto them decrees which are unalterable according to their wills whether they be unto salvation or unto destruction yea and i know that good and evil hath come before all men he that knoweth not good from evil is blameless but he that knoweth good and evil to him it is given according to his desires whether he desireth good or evil life or death joy or remorse of conscience now seeing that i know these things why should I desire more than to perform the work to which I have been called? Why should I desire that I were an angel, that I could speak unto all the ends of the earth? For behold, the Lord doth grant unto all nations, of their own nation and tongue, to teach his word, yea, in wisdom all that he seeth fit that they should have. Therefore we see that the Lord doth counsel in wisdom, according to that which is just and true. I know that which the Lord hath commanded me, and I glory in it. I do not glory of myself, but I glory in that which the Lord hath commanded me. Yea, and this is my glory, that perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance, and this is my joy. And behold, when I see many of my brethren truly penitent and coming to the Lord their God, then is my soul filled with joy. Then do I remember what the Lord has done for me, yea, even that he hath heard my prayer. Yea, then do I remember his merciful arm, which he extended towards me. Yea, and I also remember the captivity of my fathers. For I surely do know that the Lord did deliver them out of bondage, and by this did establish his church. Yea, the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, did deliver them out of bondage. Yea, I have always remembered the captivity of my fathers, and that same God who delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians did deliver them out of bondage. Yea, and that same God did establish his church among them. Yea, and that same God hath called me by a holy calling to preach the word unto this people, and hath given me much success, in the which my joy is full. But I do not joy in my own success alone, but my joy is more full because of the success of my brethren, who have been up to the land of Nephi. Behold, they have labored exceedingly, and have brought forth much fruit, and how great shall be their reward! 
now when i think of the success of these my brethren my soul is carried away even to the separation of it from the body as it were so great is my joy and now may god grant unto these my brethren that they may sit down in the kingdom of god yea and also all those who are the fruit of their labors that they may go no more out but that they may praise him for ever and may god grant that it may be done according to my words even as i have spoken amen alma chapter thirty behold now it came to pass that after the people of ammon were established in the land of jershon yea and also after the lamanites were driven out of the land and their dead were buried by the people of the land now their dead were not numbered because of the greatness of their numbers neither were the dead of the nephites numbered but it came to pass after they had buried their dead and also after the days of fasting and mourning and prayer and it was in the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi there began to be continual peace throughout all the land yea and the people did observe to keep the commandments of the lord and they were strict in observing the ordinances of god according to the law of moses for they were taught to keep the law of moses until it should be fulfilled and thus the people did have no disturbance in all the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and it came to pass in the commencement of the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges there was continual peace but it came to pass in the latter end of the seventeenth year there came a man into the land of zarahemla and he was antichrist for he began to preach unto the people against the prophecies which had been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of christ now there was no law against a man's belief for it was strictly contrary to the commands of god that there should be a law which should bring men on to unequal grounds for thus saith the scripture choose ye this day whom ye will serve now if a man desired to serve god it was his privilege or rather if he believed in god it was his privilege to serve him but if he did not believe in him there was no law to punish him but if he murdered he was punished unto death and if he robbed he was also punished and if he stole he was also punished and if he committed adultery he was also punished yea for all this wickedness they were punished for there was a law that men should be judged according to their crimes nevertheless there was no law against a man's belief therefore a man was punished only for the crimes which he had done therefore all men were on equal grounds and this antichrist whose name was korihor and the law could have no hold upon him began to preach unto the people that there should be no christ and after this manner did he preach saying o ye that are bound down under a foolish and a vain hope why do ye yoke yourselves with such foolish things why do ye look for a christ for no man can know of anything which is to come behold these things which ye call prophecies which ye say are handed down by holy prophets behold they are foolish traditions of your fathers how do ye know of their surety behold ye cannot know of things which ye do not see therefore ye cannot know that there shall be a christ ye look forward and say that ye see a remission of your sins but behold it is the effect of a frenzied mind and this derangement of your minds comes because of the traditions of your fathers which lead you away into a belief of things which are not so and many more such things did he say unto them telling them that there could be no atonement made for the sins of men but every man fared in this life according to the management of the creature therefore every man prospered according to his genius and that every man conquered according to his strength and whatsoever a man did was no crime and thus he did preach unto them leading away the hearts of many causing them to lift up their heads in their wickedness yea leading away many women and also men to commit whoredoms telling them that when a man was dead that was the end thereof now this man went over to the land of jershon also to preach these things among the people of ammon who were once the people of the lamanites but behold they were more wise than many of the nephites for they took him and bound him and carried him before ammon who was a high priest over that people and it came to pass that he caused that he should be carried out of the land and he came over into the land of gideon and began to preach unto them also 
and here he did not have much success for he was taken and bound and carried before the high priest and also the chief judge over the land and it came to pass that the high priest said unto him why do ye go about perverting the ways of the lord why do ye teach this people that there shall be no christ to interrupt their rejoicings why do ye speak against all the prophecies of the holy prophets now the high priest's name was gedona and korihor said unto him because i do not teach the foolish traditions of your fathers and because i do not teach this people to bind themselves down under the foolish ordinances and performances which are laid down by ancient priests to usurp power and authority over them to keep them in ignorance that they may not lift up their heads but be brought down according to thy words ye say this people is a free people behold i say they are in bondage ye say that these ancient prophecies are true behold i say that ye do not know that they are true ye say that this people is a guilty and a fallen people because of the transgression of a parent behold i say that a child is not guilty because of its parents and ye also say that christ shall come but behold i say that ye do not know that there shall be a christ and ye say also that he shall be slain for the sins of the world and thus ye lead away this people after the foolish traditions of your fathers and according to your own desires and ye keep them down even as it were in bondage that ye may glut yourselves with the labours of their hands that they durst not look up with boldness that they durst not enjoy their rights and privileges yea they durst not make use of that which is their own lest they should offend their priests who do yoke them according to their desires and have brought them to believe by their traditions and their dreams and their whims and their visions and their pretended mysteries that they should if they did not according to their words offend some unknown being who they say is god a being who has never been seen or known who never was nor ever will be now when the high priest and the chief judge saw the hardness of his heart yea when they saw that he would revile even against god they would not make any reply to his words but they caused that he should be bound and they delivered him up into the hands of the officers and sent him to the land of zarahemla that he might be brought before alma and the chief judge who was governor over all the land and it came to pass that when he was brought before alma and the chief judge he did go on in the same manner as he did in the land of gideon yea he went on to blaspheme and he did rise up in great swelling words before alma and did revile against the priests and teachers accusing them of leading away the people after the silly traditions of their fathers for the sake of glutting on the labours of the people now alma said unto him thou knowest that we do not glut ourselves upon the labours of this people for behold i have laboured even from the commencement of the reign of the judges until now with mine own hands for my support notwithstanding my many travels round about the land to declare the word of god unto my people and notwithstanding the many labours which i have performed in the church i have never received so much as even one senine for my labour neither has any of my brethren save it were in the judgment seat and then we have received only according to law for our time and now if we do not receive anything for our labours in the church what doth it profit us to labour in the church save it were to declare the truth that we may have rejoicings in the joy of our brethren then why sayest thou that we preach unto this people to get gain when thou of thyself knowest that we receive no gain and now believest thou that we deceive this people that causes such joy in their hearts and korihor answered him yea and then alma said unto him believest thou that there is a god and he answered nay now alma said unto him will ye deny again that there is a god and also deny the christ for behold i say unto you i know there is a god and also that christ shall come and now what evidence have ye that there is no god or that christ cometh not i say unto you that ye have none save it be your word only but behold i have all things as a testimony that these things are true and ye also have all things as a testimony unto you that they are true and will ye deny them believest thou that these things are true 
behold i know that thou believest but thou art possessed with a lying spirit and ye have put off the spirit of god that it may have no place in you but the devil has power over you and he doth carry you about working devices that he may destroy the children of god and now korihor said unto alma if thou wilt show unto me a sign that i may be convinced that there is a god yea show unto me that he hath power then will i be convinced of the truth of thy words but alma said unto him thou hast had signs enough will ye tempt your god will ye say show unto me a sign when ye have the testimony of all these thy brethren and also all the holy prophets the scriptures are laid before thee yea and all things denote that there is a god yea even the earth and all things that are upon the face of it yea and its motion yea and also the planets which move in their regular form do witness that there is a supreme creator and yet do ye go about leading away the hearts of this people testifying unto them that there is no god and yet will ye deny against all these witnesses and he said yea i will deny except ye show me a sign and now it came to pass that alma said unto him behold i am grieved because of the hardness of your heart yea that ye will still resist the spirit of the truth that thy soul may be destroyed but behold it is better that thy soul should be lost than thou shouldst be the means of bringing many souls down to destruction by thy lying and by thy flattering words therefore if thou shalt deny again behold god shall smite thee that thou shalt become dumb that thou shalt never open thy mouth any more that thou shalt not deceive this people any more now korihor said unto him i do not deny the existence of a god but i do not believe that there is a god and i say also that ye do not know that there is a god and except ye show me a sign i will not believe now alma said unto him this will i give unto thee for a sign thou shalt be struck dumb according to my words and i say that in the name of god ye shall be struck dumb that ye shall have no more utterance now when alma had said these words korihor was struck dumb that he could not have utterance according to the words of alma and now when the chief judge saw this he put forth his hand and wrote unto korihor saying art thou convinced of the power of god and whom did ye desire that alma should show forth his sign would ye that he should afflict others to show unto thee a sign behold he has showed unto you a sign and now will ye dispute more and korihor put forth his hand and wrote saying i know that i am dumb for i cannot speak and i know that nothing save it were the power of god could bring this upon me yea and i always knew that there was a god but behold the devil hath deceived me for he appeared unto me in the form of an angel and said unto me go and reclaim this people for they have all gone astray after an unknown god and he said unto me there is no god yea and he taught me that which i should say and i have taught his words and i taught them because they were pleasing unto the carnal mind and i taught them even until i had much success insomuch that i verily believed that they were true and for this cause i withstood the truth even until i have brought this great curse upon me and now when he had said this he besought that alma should pray unto god that the curse might be taken from him but alma said unto him if this curse should be taken from thee thou wouldst again lead away the hearts of this people therefore it shall be unto thee even as the lord will and it came to pass that the curse was not taken off of korihor but he was cast out and he went about from house to house begging for his food now the knowledge of what had happened unto korihor was immediately published throughout all the land yea the proclamation was sent forth by the chief judge to all the people in the land declaring unto those who had believed in the words of korihor that they must speedily repent lest the same judgments should come upon them and it came to pass that they were all convinced of the wickedness of korihor therefore they were all converted again unto the lord and this put an end to the iniquity after the manner of korihor and korihor did go about from house to house begging food for his support and it came to pass that as he went forth among the people 
yea, among a people who had separated themselves from the Nephites, and called themselves Zoramites, being led by a man whose name was Zoram, and as he went forth amongst them, behold, he was run upon, and trodden down, even until he was dead. And thus we see the end of him who perverteth the ways of the Lord. And thus we see that the devil will not support his children at the last day, but doth speedily drag them down to hell. Alma chapter 31 Now it came to pass that after the end of Korihor, Alma, having received tidings that the Zoramites were perverting the ways of the Lord, and that Zoram, who was their leader, was leading the hearts of the people to bow down to dumb idols, his heart again began to sicken because of the iniquity of the people. For it was the cause of great sorrow to Alma to know of iniquity among his people. Therefore his heart was exceedingly sorrowful because of the separation of the Zoramites from the Nephites. Now the Zoramites had gathered themselves together in a land which they called Antionum, which was east of the land of Zarahemla, which lay nearly bordering upon the seashore, which was south of the land of Jershon, which also bordered upon the wilderness south, which wilderness was full of the Lamanites. Now the Nephites greatly feared that the Zoramites would enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, and that it would be the means of great loss on the part of the Nephites. And now, as the preaching of the word had a great tendency to lead the people to do that which was just, yea, it had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword, or anything else which had happened unto them. Therefore Alma thought it was expedient that they should try the virtue of the word of God. Therefore he took Ammon and Aaron and Omner, and him nigh he did leave in the church in Zarahemla, but the former three he took with him, and also Amulek and Zeezrom, who were at Melech, and he also took two of his sons. Now the eldest of his sons he took not with him, and his name was Helaman. But the names of those he took with him were Shiblon and Coriantin, and these are the names of those who went with him among the Zoramites, to preach unto them the word. Now the Zoramites were dissenters from the Nephites. Therefore they had had the word of God preached unto them, but they had fallen into great errors, for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God, and his statutes, according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church, to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily, that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, and fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them, now when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment, they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and that they did gather themselves together on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord, and they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing, which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person, Therefore whosoever desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and that thou wast a spirit, and that thou art a spirit, and that thou wilt be a spirit for ever. Holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers. But we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also that thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and for ever, and thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast by thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank thee, and we also thank thee that thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from thee, our God. And again we thank thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. 
Now the place was called by them Ramiumtum, which, being interpreted, is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up, every man, the selfsame prayer unto God, thanking their God that they were chosen of him, and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come, which they knew nothing about. Now after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand, to offer up thanks after their manner. Now when Alma saw this, his heart was grieved, for he saw that they were a wicked and a perverse people, yea, he saw that their hearts were set upon gold, and upon silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. Yea, and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting, in their pride. And he lifted up his voice to heaven, and cried, saying, O oh, how long, O Lord, wilt thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh, to behold such gross wickedness among the children of men? Behold, O God, they cry unto thee, and yet their hearts are swallowed up in their pride. Behold, O God, they cry unto thee with their mouths, while they are puffed up, even to greatness, with the vain things of the world. Behold, O my God, their costly apparel and their ringlets and their bracelets and their ornaments of gold and all their precious things which they are ornamented with. And behold, their hearts are set upon them, and yet they cry unto thee and say, We thank thee, O God, for we are a chosen people unto thee, while others shall perish. Yea, and they say that thou hast made it known unto them that there shall be no Christ. O Lord God, how long wilt thou suffer that such wickedness and infidelity shall be among this people? O Lord, wilt thou give me strength, that I may bear with mine infirmities? For I am infirm, and such wickedness among this people doth pain my soul. O Lord, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful, wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me because of the iniquity of this people? O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul, and give unto me success, and also my fellow laborers who are with me, yea, Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and also Amulek, and Zeezrom, and also my two sons, yea, even all these wilt thou comfort, O Lord? Yea, wilt thou comfort their souls in Christ? Wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength, that they may bear their afflictions which shall come upon them because of the iniquities of this people? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in Christ? Behold, O Lord, their souls are precious, and many of them are our brethren. Therefore give unto us, O Lord, power and wisdom, that we may bring these, our brethren, again unto thee. Now it came to pass that when Alma had said these words, that he clapped his hands upon all them who were with him. And behold, as he clapped his hands upon them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And after that they did separate themselves one from another, taking no thought for themselves what they should eat, or what they should drink, or what they should put on. And the Lord provided for them that they should hunger not, neither should they thirst. Yea, and he also gave unto them strength, that they should suffer no manner of afflictions, save it were swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Now this was according to the prayer of Alma, and this because he prayed in faith. Alma chapter 32 And it came to pass that they did go forth, and began to preach the word of God unto the people, entering into their synagogues, and into their houses, yea, and even they did preach the word in their streets. And it came to pass that after much labor among them they began to have success among the poor class of the people, for behold they were cast out of the synagogues because of the coarseness of their apparel. Therefore they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship God, being esteemed as filthiness. Therefore they were poor, yea, they were esteemed by their brethren as dross. Therefore they were poor as to the things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. Now as Alma was teaching and speaking unto the people upon the hill Oneida, there came a great multitude unto him, who are those of whom we have been speaking, of whom were poor in heart, because of their poverty as to the things of the world. And they came unto Alma, and the one who was foremost among them said unto him, 
behold what shall these my brethren do for they are despised of all men because of their poverty yea and more especially by our priests for they have cast us out of our synagogues which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands and they have cast us out because of our exceeding poverty and we have no place to worship our god and behold what shall we do and now when alma heard this he turned him about his face immediately towards him and he beheld with great joy for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them and that they were in a preparation to hear the word therefore he did say no more to the other multitude but he stretched forth his hand and cried unto those whom he beheld who were truly penitent and said unto them i behold that ye are lowly in heart and if so blessed are ye behold thy brother hath said what shall we do for we are cast out of our synagogues that we cannot worship our god behold i say unto you do ye suppose that ye cannot worship god save it be in your synagogues only moreover i would ask do ye suppose that ye must not worship god only once in a week i say unto you it is well that ye are cast out of your synagogues that ye may be humble and that ye may learn wisdom for it is necessary that ye should learn wisdom for it is because that ye are cast out that ye are despised of your brethren because of your exceeding poverty that ye are brought to a lowliness of heart for ye are necessarily brought to be humble and now because ye are compelled to be humble blessed are ye for a man sometimes if he is compelled to be humble seeketh repentance and now surely whosoever repenteth shall find mercy and he that findeth mercy and endureth to the end the same shall be saved and now as i said unto you that because you are compelled to be humble you are blessed do you not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word yea he that humbleth himself and repenteth of his sins and endureth to the end the same shall be blessed yea much more blessed than they who are compelled to be humble because of their exceeding poverty therefore blessed are they who humble themselves without being compelled to be humble or rather in other words blessed is he that believeth in the word of god and is baptized without stubbornness of heart yea without being brought to know the word or even compelled to know before they will believe yea there are many who do say if thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven then we shall know of a surety then we shall believe now i ask is this faith behold i say unto you nay for if a man knoweth a thing he hath no cause to believe for he knoweth it and now how much more cursed is he that knoweth the will of god and doeth it not than he that only believeth or only hath cause to believe and falleth into transgression now of this thing ye must judge behold i say unto you that it is on the one hand even as it is on the other and it shall be unto every man according to his work and now as i said concerning faith faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things therefore if ye have faith ye hope for things which are not seen which are true and now behold i say unto you and i would that ye should remember that god is merciful unto all who believe on his name therefore he desireth in the first place that ye should believe yea even on his word and now he imparteth his word by angels unto men yea not only men but women also now this is not all little children do have words given unto them many times which confound the wise and the learned and now my beloved brethren as ye have desired to know of me what ye shall do because ye are afflicted and cast out now i do not desire that ye should suppose that i mean to judge you only according to that which is true for i do not mean that ye all of you have been compelled to humble yourselves for i verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might now as i said concerning faith that it was not a perfect knowledge even so it is with my words ye cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge but behold if you will awake and arouse your faculties even to an experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith yea even if you can no more than desire to believe let this desire work in you even until you believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words 
now we will compare the word unto a seed now if ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart behold if it be a true seed or a good seed if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief that ye will resist the spirit of the lord behold it will begin to swell within your breasts and when you feel these swelling motions you will begin to say within yourselves it must needs be that this is a good seed or that the word is good for it beginneth to enlarge my soul yea it beginneth to enlighten my understanding yea it beginneth to be delicious to me and behold would not this increase your faith i say unto you yea nevertheless it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge but behold as the seed swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow then you must needs say that the seed is good for behold it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow and now behold will not this strengthen your faith yea it will strengthen your faith for ye will say i know that this is a good seed for behold it sprouteth and beginneth to grow and now behold are ye sure that this is a good seed i say unto you yea for every seed bringeth forth after its own likeness therefore if a seed groweth it is good but if it groweth not behold it is not good therefore it is cast away and now behold because ye have tried the experiment and planted the seed and it swelleth and sprouteth and beginneth to grow ye must needs know that the seed is good and now behold is your knowledge perfect yea your knowledge is perfect in that thing and your faith is dormant and this because ye know for ye know that the word hath swelled your souls and ye also know that it hath sprouted up that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened and your mind doth begin to expand oh then is not this real i say unto you yea because it is light and whatsoever is light is good because it is discernible therefore ye must know that it is good and now behold after ye have tasted this light is your knowledge perfect behold i say unto you nay neither must ye lay aside your faith for ye have only exercised your faith to plant the seed that ye may try the experiment to know if the seed was good and behold as a tree beginneth to grow ye will say let us nourish it with great care that it may get root that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us and now if ye nourish it with much care it will get root and grow up and bring forth fruit but if ye neglect the tree and take no thought for its nourishment behold it will not get any root and when the heat of the sun cometh and scorcheth it because it hath no root it withers away and ye pluck it up and cast it out now this is not because the seed was not good neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable but it is because your ground is barren and you will not nourish the tree therefore ye cannot have the fruit thereof and thus if you will not nourish the word looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof ye can never pluck the fruit of the tree of life but if you will nourish the word yea nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow by your faith with great diligence and with patience looking forward to the fruit thereof it shall take root and behold it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life and because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it that it may take root in you behold by and by ye shall pluck the fruit thereof which is most precious which is sweet above all that is sweet and which is white above all that is white yea and pure above all that is pure and ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled that ye hunger not neither shall ye thirst then my brethren ye shall reap the rewards of your faith and your diligence and patience and long suffering waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you End of the Book of Alma, chapters 29 through 32.